don't know. I kind of don't feel like fucking around with this issue. I could so, do so that, that's, Andrew that's Richardson. That's the nature of the I could panel do that. Uh, this week. But yeah, thanks everybody for being here. Um, how are no, you doing, Spicy having, Chat? Thanks for having us, Irene. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Glad to, glad to have you. This is important stuff. I've uh, been meaning to address this issue for the past. Uh, I, I thought about addressing it last yeah, week, great. but I just felt like too much was in the air. And I hadn't even had a chance to. I'm still catching up on like I'm ten days ago, basically. So, uh, Mavis, Mavis, hey, were you on? Oh, yeah. I asked somebody. Just <laughs> I have the worst timing. Uh, um, who here we're was in on Andre's panel? Selective lockdown. Ago? I know Mavis was sure. right, and and Senpai, you were too. This is uh, concerning the destiny coming in. Yes, and so destiny coming in. Yeah, I've yeah, Andrew Richardson. Watched, in my area, um, it's um, you know, selective lockdown. Uh, I, I um, think I watched, like, you know, past the point where uh, Nina left. Technically, we can get haircuts, and, uh, but um, God, you're, like, encouraged not to panel. if you don't really need it. But so much has happened in the meantime. So much has happened in the meantime. That, and I that, don't, that part's so. almost like, yeah, who's to me? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I might be, like, uh, tempting fate by uh, putting that in the title. Like, right? You know that you don't say like the name you like you don't actually say like beetlejuice like three times destiny destiny know? destiny or else you, you're gonna have beetlejuice on your hands um uh, maybe i don't know like maybe that's me just like overestimating my importance and being like yeah beetlejuice would totally drop in on us maybe beetlejuice doesn't even know who i am listen i'm not oh, gonna oh, speak you don't you don't want a bunch of weirdos in your mentions for five days um not unless they're gonna give me some good memes and copy pasta and shit like that. I don't know. Mad, I can tell mad. you that the Destiny that crew is good. Is good publicity. I can no, tell you that Destiny sure. crew is enabled I'm, of good yeah, memes. Yeah, yeah. Just, okay, all, all, that I'm, all that I'm concerned about, I'm still I'm still looking for DGG to uh, provide me some citations as to why it was okay for Destiny to send a burning cross picture to a black chick. Whoa! Account. What? Yeah, good luck on that one, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> someone's gonna throw someone's gonna explain that one to me. Hey. Fair Mama enough, Andrew Richardson. I've heard, you, I've heard you privilege. Mama say, I, I've heard you before, and your mic does not sound that bad. Oh shit. Yeah. You know what? Maybe happened. something so, happened. I'm gonna guess. Giga. Okay, so I'm gonna guess. Just know, being a whereby expert like I am now, hmm. I'm gonna guess that maybe what happened is that your mic is somehow set up to be your webcam mic. If your webcam's like my mic webcam, it has a mic on it for some unknown reason, right? It's a terrible mic. You'd never want to use the mic, but you you know it can accidentally get turned on. It can, yeah. Um, it's 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 bad news. So so check that. See if it's uh grabbing the wrong mic because sometimes whereby does that to me. Yeah, it could I've, also I've had be that um... before where they're like. I oh, yeah, it might be doubling up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I I... No. Oh, that's better. Oh, yeah, you're 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 coming in clear. No, but... Wait, no this is wrong. But we're doing no, I yeah, audio better. on Discord, though, right? Yeah, we're the audio is on Discord. Um, oh, yeah, you're right. Discord you're right. still gets confused. Okay, so go to yeah, your audio. Everybody's thing. muted in here. Okay, so it's not. Yeah, hey, under the thunder, point. good it's to see you. Disc, it's not whereby doing the audio uh, cringe. It's. Maybe I saw your uh, your message from Discord earlier. Is... Try to remind me if you can remind Discord me in the post Discord. chat. Discord I'd like to go over. Discord me if I want to do my settings over every time I plug in my 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 controller. Me too. Me too. Oh my god. Yeah. No. It's oh, I hate super that. annoying. I'm trying to see like because I'm in this call here. When I look, drop do my drop down, all I can see are sources for. Uh, it sounds like it might be game oh, that's it's... gone up. Is it possible that maybe the um the the Discord uh like gain auto adjust is on or, or something like that? Or maybe if your hmm. gain knob got knocked up, it sounds what it sounds it sounds very gainy, like it's a uh, base boosted almost. Mm. If you go to voice and video in the app settings, it should be at the very top. Your input and output hey, device selections. Much luck under the thunder. Hell yeah. Yeah, uh, I I see them now. It sounds good now. Like oh, whatever, whatever you're doing right now, better. whatever you're doing right now, that's working. Okay. Yeah. All right. I guess. I don't know. I guess maybe Discord is adding some digital games. Thank you, Rev. Making oh, oh that was. I thought you were tagging. Yeah. It might be. We're no, clipping. Fried. Discord's weird, True, especially if you've got other stuff. If you've got other stuff that messes Aww. with your audio, or like people on Discord to, can be dumb to um attach audio to it if you got other stuff in the background that can mess with discord discord's just weird like that but yeah and but, uh, uh, I... chat how's our audio otherwise is the music uh, level everything's okay nothing's i'm not i'm not posting any cringe 
it's one thing if, if you know guests have trouble getting their audio to work but it's another thing if i'm uh if it's in my on brain because that screws it up thank for you everyone. thank you revan Oh, we got the snugs in chat. I love to see snugs. You have no idea. Snug, you... snug, snug, snug. I mean, snugs are my fave. I mean, Irene, you, you, you always sound bad, but because no. I'm evil. No, that's, no. that's right. I mean, have you have no. you listened to you know, <laughs> the, spicy. the discourse? Too I'm, I'm spicy. yeah. I'm straight no, up. I, I I love you to I love you to death, Irene. I'm you the sound dark, great. I'm the dark mother of Twitch. Yeah, no, basically, I like I I I'm I got some uh, free rent in in people's head at this moment. Like, there's Trans people that I've been heart. talking to that yes. just like seriously <laughs> like trying to talk to them about like a social justice issue, and they're like putting Peter Coffin language in my mouth. Like, right? No, I didn't I, say I social capital. I said social hierarchy. I said social pressure. I de you definitely did not hear social freaking capital coming out of this mouth okay but yeah, i can't like, i can't be on a I, I can't be on okay, an irene victoria, panel without victoria your teeth that's shit. why we do these panels so you everyone. get to know, you know and meet like, new people getting it from you know you need to feel bad on, on that's Twitter the whole already. reason we so do the panels i appreciate getting a, a different variety of, of shit on my on yeah my but now you got now you all get to know new people and um I've been on. I've been on with Mabasai before. With our, with our I've been on and our with. Chats and, uh, just, that's actually just kicking yeah. it. So how? Yeah, a lot of these people. I usually do like I a know little bit of vibe check. We we like to dip our toes in the water True. and feel that water. Be like, it's a little bit chilly. We can kind of like you know take our time getting into because like this is some serious shit that we're talking about today on on several oh, different sure. fronts. Some really concerning shit. Some really scary shit. And and I got some spicy takes on this. Um, on this sort of uh, destiny thing, actually, <laughs> geez, I'm, I'm inviting my Don't own ruin. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, Beetlejuice. I'm oh, oh, yeah. We can um, say Beetlejuice all Oh my god, you literally summon Beetlejuice. You'll, like, I should say. Me or something. Wait, if you say his name, do. You I'm less worried about Beetlejuice than I am about Destiny. Seriously, I could summon Beetlejuice, Voldemort. Who else do you summon by saying their name? Like Bloody Mary. Oh wait, do we, hold on. Do we sound any yeah. better here or no? Ooh, you sound beautiful. Yes. Oh yeah, you sound great. Yeah. You, something. You, you, mm -hmm. yeah, you did something there. Um, yeah. Like, Again, whatever you're doing, stick with it. Keep doing working. that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, you're in the center square uh, right now, Mabase. So you know that that's appropriate. You're 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 coming. Beetlejuice. Through, like, a star. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Um, yeah. Like I would <sighs> rather have to deal with Beetlejuice, Bloody Mary, Freddy Krueger, fucking. Who candy man? Uh, candy Edward Scissor one, right? Edward Scissorhands. Um. I don't. I do not fear Destiny. So if Destiny wants to come in and shout, uh, bring it. As well, Will you I protect us? Yes. Even I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm Can scared we please too. not turn this into like the ten days ago? Yeah. Hey, listen. This is going to be a repeat, and Senpai, then we're like, going to be I, talking I, about I, it for another next no, ten no, 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 days, no, no, and no, just like, going to be this yeah, I know. We're, endless we're, we're cycle. Try not to do that. Hey, like I don't know if you heard me earlier, but like I, I, I do have some lines that I draw as far as platforming. Like people think I don't because I talk to people like Dario uh, from time to time. It's it's kind of easier to argue with somebody if they have a, a different take than you. But when it comes to issues like this, which are they are for, really really good, you know for certain communities End existential in nature where we're talking about like people's yeah. lives being at stake uh i don't fuck around um just just well, let's, I mean, like, let's roll forward let's roll forward yeah yeah we're gonna yeah. roll forward and um yeah we're trying not to repeat any any uh panels uh any panels that have already been but honestly um senpai like that's where i'm at as far as catching up to all the drama like obviously i've seen the destiny clip uh beetlejuice clip i've seen the beetlejuice clip the clip from Beetlejuice, yeah, where Beetlejuice is like, what, what are they going to have to do? Mow down the... Anyway. Um, and But, like, I haven't seen... Like, I haven't watched VODs. I haven't... Uh, you know, there, there's kind of a lot that I'm missing. Good uh, the, taste, all Victoria. The Dario stuff, I'm kind of unfamiliar. I know that Dario uh, weighed in the, in the past uh, few days, and, uh, you know, that's a take that's gotten some controversy, too. I know that there's all kinds of shit uh, blowing up on Twitter, right, Pax? Like, Twitter, uh, Twitter's pretty... yeah. Twitter's a battleground right now. And <laughs> well, I was myself and another were trying to reason with a friend about sticking up for somebody who is sticking up for Destiny and and the shooter and Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah. And they basically blocked both of us in the, in in the in the private means of communication. And I posted that picture on on Twitch with no comment, and it blew up. 
yeah, 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 yeah. All and I was then, trying to do was get somebody to 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 get to see it. So, so this picture that you're talking about is the meme that, oh. like, with the like on it. Is that right? This is gonna yeah. be spicy. Okay, yeah, yeah. There's like a, uh -oh. there's like a, and I haven't, to be fair, I, I don't think I've uh, familiarized myself with the situation or the meme or any of this enough to like have a super uh, strong take on it. But yeah, I, I do know that shit's uh, blowing up on on Twitter and as tempting as it was to have uh, Pax versus Dario today, I think I resisted that temptation just because oh, I feel you. like I want to have uh, people that I, that, I, you know, like I said, I have a certain baseline when it comes to issues like this. And like, I mean, this is never going to like, there's a certain uh -oh. crowd out there in Twitch. That's never going to, I didn't this. know it was going to be always spicy. Gonna think that like, I stand Dario's worst takes that like, you know, uh, that, that like me and him are, are, are like this, but the, the d reality is if, that if me and him were like, a lot this, of it's we wouldn't sincere be nearly as useful loss, to each other as, um, debating, um, you know, adversaries. But there's still but, yeah, cowards this, at the end is, of the day. They're still posting on Twitter. This is not really a week for debate. This subject is something, you know, kind of different. Anyway, we got really heavy, uh, really fast. Um, it's all from mentioning Twitter. I don't know. There's something about I was like, going to hey, say, up, if you've, good to see you. If you've missed 10 days of, of the Twitter cycles, that's like, that's like, I don't know. That's like going into like being like deep frozen and, and waking up in a new century. Okay. It's like, so <laughs> we, we went on, a, we want to do introductions real quick. We're going to do an introduction, but remember, um, after, after that, I am in Sino woman. So you got to explain this, like, you know, like you would to like a, a paleo person. Good that movie. Just been unfrozen from, uh, I, have I actually seen it or do I just know the reference that that's a frozen? I think I have. That's the one with <laughs> oh, Polly if you Shore, haven't right? seen it, you got to see it. it it's it's, it's good. Buddy Weasel, that guy. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I've seen it. I, I feel like you're thinking of uh, uh, Stepson, wh whatever that movie is with Polly Shore. But wait, doesn't he do the buddy stuff in there? Like in the, and then scene. I think that was just his thing do? in the eighties. That yeah. might be his thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's just how he is. He's like, oh, calls everybody weasel and says buddy. Anyway, um, it must've been an interesting time to be alive. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Twitter so words. Let's go around, like somebody said earlier, somebody suggested we go around and do introductions. Kenny, what is your introduction? Uh, what are you up to? Uh, and uh, you know, who are you for people that don't already know? Uh, yeah, so I'm Kenny, Kentucky Fried Comrade. Um, I exist. I have a Twitter account. Mostly shit posts. Sometimes I get serious about stuff. Uh, you never know. Um, I am working on a streaming project with uh, some good friends over at Post Post Revolution. Um, that's our new stream. It's me, Jeff from Georgia, and uh, Brobra. And we're just having fun with it. Uh, we're just kind of experimenting with it a little bit and i am having a lot of fun over there and we're we're doing that so check out post post revolution nice uh let's go with senpai chow hey i'm senpai chow i stream on twitch maple storing and politics i have a background in political science and international relations i like to talk about philosophy theory and the science behind all of the <sighs> politics very hard. Uh, I don't know if you can. I, I might be the closest thing to a debate bro on this panel. Uh, after hearing what Irene has said, I'm even considering myself if I should even be here. Oh, Demon Mama has something to say. My apologies for not acknowledging you. You're good. You're all everybody here <laughs> has some level of contestation or debate. Um, me, I don't know. Yeah, I'm the debate bro here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're hoping it's going to be a responsible um, debate, though, that's like not going to put anybody's lives at risk. Um, uh, Demon Mama. Yeah, uh, my name is Demon Mama. You can find me here on Twitch at Demon Mama Live, and you can find me on uh, Twitter at Your Demon Mama. On Twitter, I meme, I cream, I uh, scream sometimes. Um, it's Ooh. it's a uh, it's a fun time. I I have been I've been I feel like I've been on my game on Twitter recently and on Twitch too. But um, yeah, uh, as far as what I do on Twitch, uh, I do pretty even variety content i do um pol political variety mind you uh i do panels i do debates got a one-on-one -on -one debate coming on uh coming up soon um and then i do a bunch of news and react content um pretty fun time my community is amazing i gotta say so if you want a cool community and want to come have some fun join my chat join my stream yeah and uh, just a little note, Demon Mom is definitely a fave of uh, spicy chat in terms of in terms of your takes. So it's always Thank good you. to talk to you. Appreciate uh, that. By the, by the way, Demon Mama, I just want to say I really appreciate that alliteration. I love oh, it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> it was beautiful. Yeah, it was like a 
flow. Trying that's, to bring a little bit of poetry out. to the morning. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Mama Say, whose name I was always, Mama Say, I gotta admit, like for the longest time, for the first, like, I don't know, few months that I knew you, I would always say your name, pronounce it as if it was Japanese. I think I would call you Mama Say, but it's Mama Say. Am I am I getting it right finally? Because I'm I'm notoriously bad with names. You you did it, okay? You made oh, it. Oh good. Oh god. Finally. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm so sorry about posting cringe all those months. Mama, say um, tell us a little bit about uh, you, what you're doing on, here on Twitch. What else you got going on as far as other platforms, True. and uh, you know what you, what you got in the works. Okay. So so far, we've been doing a whole lot of gaming, a little bit, a little bit of uh, React content sometimes, gaming. you know, just as a treat. Uh, yeah. I actually I do plan on going over the uh, the most recent All Black panel on Prime and Kai's channel on on my channel. I I want to kind of comb through there and kind of pick out some stuff that I definitely take contention with from some of the panelists there. And uh, yeah, just have a, a general, um, a, ge a general, I don't know, I, I guess a, a, a powwow. What's of of blackness, uh, a blackly black discussion. So if you're if you're down for that and not going to post cringe in chat, you know, come come hang out. Yeah, we need more of that on Twitch for real. Cringe for real. Um, forbidden. Orb lady. Hi. Um, I'm Orb lady. Uh. And I do political, leftist political politics stuff. Um, I do some labor history stuff on Sundays, like we're reading through this a is book the called no Strike. Zone. It's about the American labor history, which uh, I'm learning a lot of stuff about. My chat's learning a lot of stuff about. Oh so, God. yeah, it's super fun. Chow came in, popped in on us last Sunday, and it was really oh. cool to hang out and like talk about stuff. Um, also do some news, uh, aggregation and just like political digestion of stuff that's going on in the world. Um, I try to help people get politically activated within their community, um, and get in touch with, uh, resources in their local area as well to really go out and, uh, you know, do some good in their community. And cause politics shouldn't just be at the ballot box, you know, once every four years or once every primary or anything, you need to participate in politics True. in your workplace, in, um, your like apartment, anywhere, everywhere in the world. Um, but I would also like to say, uh, I, Kenny is one of the first people who like brought me over to the left. So I wanted to say thank you to Kenny cause Kenny's one of my oldest well, lefties from way back. No, and, and I was kind of joking about it in the in the chat, but like you know, you and I are kind of blood in in a little respect there. But yeah. like you're you're a you're a southern socialist, and you're kind of you know you got that southern you got that southernness to you, and you're trying to help hey. people who are in the south who you know might feel a little bit lost, and I think that's kind of cool. Thank you. Yeah, and we talked. We've had a lot of long conversations, and I'm really glad. Like, I kind of selfishly just wanted to join this panel to hang out with all y'all, but also Kenny, because I love Kenny, Kentucky. Yeah, no, absolutely. But hey, you're you're, you're erasing my uh, Southern heritage, Kenny. Uh, you know, like, do, do I not like? I, do I not read as a Southerner? No, do you know? this no. Is, this is a joke. This is a joke that like I'm technically <laughs> from the South, but like it's just like there's like nothing. Hey, thanks for the follow, Jacko. Really Good to have you here. Welcome over. to you the gotta, you gotta you gotta do the accent, Irene. You gotta do the I accent. I think that when right? I say okay, so like I've been told that when I would say the word lawyer which is how I pronounce mm. it now. But when I would say it in grade school, after having just moved to Indiana from, you know, being a little kid in the South, I would say lawyer. So that's mm -hmm. the only tell that I've ever noticed oh, that I have. Cute. I also though, I pronounce sorry, like that's sorry. That's a cute emo. So apparently I have a Canadian mm. pronunciation for my so so sorry. And I have Nobody a, knows like what a, my like accent a, is because it's the weirdest mix of an accent like you can even imagine. I thought so too. I thought so too. But there's another streamer who is Canadian that famously, cute um, uh, yeah. you know, pronounces uh, sor sor sorry like sorry. And that's cute. and I was uh, there was a there was a uh, theory going on for a while that uh, we were the same person, but mm -hmm. it got it's proven by the fact that we had a big blow up. So now people, I think people know that we're not we're not actually the same person. We just pronounce sorry the same. Well, um, I love I love all of our southern comrades. I think they're <laughs> fantastic and I think they're, you know, a necessary part of the movement. 
I always try to play up my my southern thing, but it's it's kind of ridiculous. Like you know, my like reference for southern for country music is like uh, Graham Parsons or like you know just like stuff that stuff that's like tangentially related to country, but not really related to to modern uh, country, <laughs> more more like alt country or something like that. But yeah, it's it's kind of a meme uh, with us. But yeah, no, it's good to um, to have you both uh, on here, Orb Lady and uh, Kenny. And I'm gonna look forward. Hey, I love what you're do talking about doing on Sunday, Orb Lady. That is like that is close to my heart. Like the stories uh, from Union, the Union movement. That's what. Oh, kinda, that's Irene. Like, that, She's that, the that, host. That's a lot of what brought me into yeah, this. Yeah, I like, think right, she, uh, the songs. She the loves to do and, like, the uh, more dramatic there. hair and, colors and the way that and I think that that's accessible cool to me. most people in the way that maybe you know something like a pure theoretical approach might not. There might is some country I really off, love, so. but not yeah, pop narrative, country. So. I and I love the way you read news too. Uh, Carby Pax, we Hello. have not had you on yet. That is a mistake. I think we've raided into each other a whole bunch, but I've never really it intersected on on stream. So it's good to it's good to finally talk to you. Good to be here. Hello, I'm Carpe Pax. I live out in California. I'm a, maybe one of the older people on Twitch. I just turned 50 this year. I've been voting since 1992. And I'm trying to find a way to channel my, uh, my disappointment and rage at our system into some sort of uh, some kind of praxis. <clears throat> and since I found my, and That's since I got onto Twitch late last year, I've just been finding myself moving further and further left as I learn more about the, uh, I guess the ways to formulate how to talk about the things I believe and the things I'd like to see happen in this, in this country and in this world. Uh, and, if you don't, if you don't mind me asking, Carpe, like, what what part of uh, California are you from? Uh, do you know the Central Coast? Oh, I I know the Central Coast, buddy. Yeah, I'm really close to Pismo Beach. Okay, okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, true, so, Revan. Yep. Channeling, uh, channeling. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of weird, actually. It's, it's like I I've lived in Los Angeles. Victory. I've. I've lived outside of Cal outside of California. I spent high school my high school years in Missouri, where it was extremely rural, extremely uh, conservative. It's I'm in like a mixed area right now. I live in probably one of the most diverse areas of the 15th richest county, and so I well it has a median income of thirty thousand for being the 15th richest county in California, and um. It's it's just because of income inequality. Yep. No, and, uh, it's it's uh, yep. yeah. That, that that's the thing that like these numbers like like um, median you know income shows it, but like you know like the way that they portray economy usually is in like GDP, and it's like mm -hmm. the assumption being that we're all sharing that, and we're absolutely not. It's it's you know I mean like this is no this is no news to anybody, but um, yeah, we're, we're we're nowhere close to even. <laughs> So my I, arguments usually stem from economic, uh, economic equality and, and populism, because I think that that social justice flows from economic justice. You know, I feel like it's a it's a conversation for maybe another stream or something. Sure. But I feel like me and Carpe could have a lot of fun talking about like the image of California as being com uh, like California, and mm -hmm. it's just this <laughs> it's this utopia here, and actually, it's, like, kind of sucks. It's hyper capitalist. Like, there's a lot of stuff to actually talk about. And yeah, and the way that they portray, like, everybody in California is, like, this rich movie star or something. It's, like, like most yeah. people there, like, that, their lives are very different. And the fact that everything's so expensive out here is, like, you know, kind of makes it even uh, even worse. But um, what are you going to do? Uh, move to... Uh move to the south the, the actual south i don't know right. the south is always like more fun for me in terms of like just a, as a cerebral exercise as a you know like cultural reference yeah, but then I when i see like the real that, south but of, like, i don't what's going i don't on now like my that, sister uh, lives there and oh my god it is, or or state it is I will... i'm lucky that my family didn't go like my family actually nobody in my immediate family is like a big trump supporter and that's kind of amazing considering where they're living <laughs> i will say california you know, for a certain style of leftist is like a good training exercise in not letting your leftism like get lost in the sauce per right. se. Like you see certain stuff where it's like, 
oh yeah, we got all the stuff that theoretically makes sense, and then it doesn't. And right. like, like it's a it's a train it's a training exercise. In my opinion, uh, all of my experiences, uh, you know, I I, I was uh, I was born in California, lived in California uh, for quite a while, and and no longer live there. Um, I live up in the Pacific Northwest, but mm-hmm. um, California is the the hub of American neoliberalism in my mind. And uh, I think for that, yeah. it can be a, a genuinely enlightening um, and genuinely enlightening experience. You know, a state that is, um, by all measures, relatively, especially by the uh, by comparison to other American states, um, you know, um, socially progressive and completely, completely derailed by free market um <laughs> like hyper free market ideology this like idea that like competition and privatization is good like literally privatization is why the state's on fire right now like, well, it's the like fiscally I won't, conservative I'll, I'll, uh socially I'll, I'll liberal leave it, i'll leave it here because i i don't want to get too lost in this but somebody tweeted out something the other day um well one, if you one ever of have any questions left, victoria like Drop them Twitter and I'll answer them afterwards. But it was something Seriously, along the lines of like California could be a social democracy with like whole all kinds of rights, mm-hmm. health care, all kinds of stuff for all different <laughs> kinds of people. And then it just doesn't it doesn't do that. And yep. they just like ban like menthol cigarettes. And it's like, that's it. It's like, OK, well, that's California for you. Yep. No, absolutely. It's definitely. And even though like California has got a lot more maybe. Me- mechanisms of direct democracy like you know when you're talking about the um the ballot um you know provisions and, and you know like the proposition the, system yeah propositions it's like uh the, but you know half of the time uh like the, people don't realize that putting something on the ballot actually costs a lot of money it's, it doesn't just it doesn't ju- we don't just like get the like things that are the most popular the things that are of interest to most people we get the things that have you know some money uh behind them uh you know more often than not so yeah, it's uh, it's it's definitely a, a mess. And um, in terms of uh, in terms of like, I've never thought of California. I always think of like East Coast, like New York, Boston, New England, you know, area as being like the center of, of neoliberalism. But, uh, you know, you bring up a good point. I don't know. Maybe California is uh, giving them a run for their money. And uh, as far as California 100%. becoming a Sockdom state, holy shit. Yes, absolutely. That could. Uh, theoretically happen and i don't really see the 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 money here like it's a good example of the differentiation between like money wealth and resources that exist versus like the political potential to do something with it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well i mean yeah i mean and we can see like it's no joke it's no you know it's no news to anybody that like our democracy is more for show it's more for theater it's more of a fig leaf um, over capitalism's like you know an accountability than it is uh, any any sort of actual mechanism for even what like uh, Chris Hedges would call like the um, <laughs> what Chris Chris Hedges would call the um, the the liberal class uh, being an outlet for the frustration of the of the poor and disenfranchised. <sighs> All right, so uh, yeah, let's get going. Um, Let's get going on uh, the issue of um, God. We have so many, so many to pick from. Does anybody want to start us out on uh, you know in terms of you know just kind of orienting us as far as you know what's been uh, going on? Like I'm more familiar uh, with the, with the Portland uh, situation, but the Kenosha situation and just kind of everything that's all the all the fallout that's. Uh, yeah, I mean, if uh, if if you want like a, a quick Twitter roundup as a, a terminally online person, nice. I can give you the rundown of the discourse cycles we've been on. So we've been on the uh, there was within the last 10 days, approximately, there was Kyle Rittenhouse in Kenosha, um, which followed up briefly a couple of days before that with Jacob Blake. I assume that we all know about the Jacob Blake situation that led to the protests in Kenosha. Yeah. So then yeah. there was Kyle Rittenhouse's self-defense shooting. 
um, which it turns out that is not uh, so clear cut of a thing as some media sources would like to say. I um, speculate he was breaking curfew at 17 years old. Yeah, there was a there was a lot of things. With. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of a Just lot of questions there. going on there. And um, so then we have that. Then there was um, continue. Of course, P- Portland has been having protests um, and uh, and severe uh, police response for some time. Um, and in the last couple of days, there's been a sort of um, like breakneck uh, chain of events, which started with um, a very low. There's like a, not a whole lot of video information um, available. There was some mace deployed and then somebody shot um, someone else. Uh, the person who was who ended up being killed was a um, a Patriot prayer member who was originally misidentified and then later correctly identified. Um, the suspect in that um, shooting was uh, somebody who was last night um, killed um, after a what what the New York Times reported as a scuffle but was later um, revealed to be a massive sh- a massive shooting by the police uh, 30 rounds discharge ter- 30 to 40 rounds discharged by the police um, to uh, to to kill somebody they were trying to apprehend. Can- um, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but can we differentiate those two things? Because uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin, obviously that's that's its own situation versus what's happening in Portland. Like uh, what happened in Portland is a, is a separate issue, and I don't want to confuse those two things together. Like those are very separate things. Yeah, yeah. My apologies right, right. if uh, if that summary no, that didn't make it clear. That was in Portland or... um, that this other one occurred. Um, I, I tried to I tried to make that clear, but. Yeah, thank you. Um, so there was that, um, and then of course there was uh, numerous um, politics people's responses to those um, to, to those various things, which have been uh, varying levels of appropriateness, varying levels of sensitivity, and varying levels of depth. Um, we have the ongoing saga of the USPS, which has. Um, been getting uh, looking worse and worse as time goes on, despite the fact that um, at least some of uh, Postmaster Louis DeJoy's efforts have been stopped or or paused. Um, a significant amount of, it, of of damage was done, um, and then there was, of course, discussion of what is uh, come to be known as the Red Mirage. Um, as I understand it, the concept of Red Mirage is that uh, because of the delays currently um, currently being predicted in the mail-in ballot system, if uh, mail-in ballots are shifted to, which they should be by all public health intent, uh, you know, purposes for all public health purposes, if that's the case, then um, ballots in areas that were heavily affected by the changes to the USPS, which is predominantly um, urban Democratic voting areas, may have their ballots delayed, which would lead to in-person ballots, which in this case are going to largely be um, Republican, um, showing up on the night of the election night as a sort of landslide victory for Donald Trump, um, only to have in the following weeks as all of the delayed mail-in ballots come in, um, show that Donald Trump actually did not win by a landslide, which sets it up for this idea that, ah, they're stealing the election from me. So, so the red mirage is the idea that there will be a mirage that the, that there was a red, a sweeping red victory on the night of the election, but because of the, de- only because of the delays in the USPS system right. and that it will be much closer or even a complete opposite experience once the mail-in votes arrive. So those right. are the, that's the summary of all of these yeah, different yeah, things that have you. been going I was going to stop you at the, you know, at the, you know, Kenosha and Portland stuff, but like I, I like you uh, setting up the USPS uh, stuff too, and um, you know the the um, in terms of that uh, red mirage thing, like my like looking back at the 2000 thing, what I could see happening is something like you know the results come in. Most of the media are like, all right, these are the results. It's like, you know, Trump's winning by huge amounts in states that are definitely blue states. Like, right. It looks like a huge landslide. But the Thank media you, keeps Evan. saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. We still got to have the mail-in votes. We could still like they're re- they're doing the responsible thing. They're trying to underplay it, but they're still reporting the facts. Fox I'll take that note News down, Victoria. Goes ahead and calls the election for Donald Trump. And then maybe some other news source that is feeling the pressure is like, we don't want to be late to the party let's call it for donald trump too so now you've got like you know you've got right-wing media and a little bit of left or left-wing media i'm not gonna play into their narrative it's not left-wing media it's fucking liberal media it's not even liberal it's like you know centrist uh 
media, but like, you know, you've got like, you've got some controversy now in terms of like, is the election over? Can we call it? And people saying, look, if like if there was like 80% or not 80%, but if it was whatever percent, you know, Joe Biden, you'd be calling the election that way, you know, like trying to assert a double standard. And then you get like the series of legal challenges, like what happened in 2000, that maybe even frustrate and stop the, uh, the, the count from even taking place. But we'll get to that later. That's, that's the... That's the uh, dessert. That's a cherry on top, uh, basically for for later on. Let's let's start off with um, you know what, what's been happening in the streets. Well, uh, kind of going through that, I think it's worth kind of slicing things down one at a time. Um, in terms of what's going on in in Kenosha and Portland. Um, I was kind of talking about this with Jeff and Brobra over on Post Post Revolution, but like my general take on it is that we are in a situation where uh, this was actually kind of in reaction to the Joy Ann Reed stuff, which I don't know how many people here know about it or saw it, but Joy Ann Reed basically compared the radicalization of Republicans or the right wing to the mosaic. Uh, what she called see you here. radical Islamic terrorism. And my That's not very nice kind of knee jerk reaction to that was like, he seems nice so far. No, the difference here is that like you, you can't compare the United States to other countries around the United uh, around the world. Um, and in this specific situation, you have a, Nice. Uh, context where that's a good emote the I, radical right I will wing say, I'm not a however you want to like frame it however you want to call it the radical right wing is being given ideological cover by uh the presidency by yeah, police Lumi on the ground emotes. we had people uh what, what's his name rittenhouse or, or kyle whatever house yeah kyle rittenhouse uh you have video of you know a handful of minutes before he shot several people where the police were saying, "We're glad you're here. We're, we're thankful that you're here." Yeah, throwing him, a, throwing him a bottle of water, if I'm not mistaken. Like, right? That, this is what the police do. They like they pretend like that they're like, "Yo, we got to be hard on everyone. We got to be tough. We're we're neutral. We're unbiased." But you'll see time and time again, they're really happy to see some of the really even extreme right wing groups uh, show up. They see these, you know, right wing extremists, and they see their own. They see something they can relate to. They see something they can trust. They look at they look at a, a crowd with more black faces in it, and they see something alien. They see something dangerous. This is the problem that we've been having, and this is why, like I and a lot of other people, I think on this panel have said that, like you know, uh, defunding is a good start, but it's not enough. You you got to change this institution if you really want to have um, significant uh, you know change on this issue because it's just uh, you know that this is how the culture is. Yep, I saw that, Mariner. Yeah, it uh, seems to not... be. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, what's that? Sorry, I didn't know who was starting. There's a little bit of a delay on video, but um, uh, yeah. Um, I feel like there's just this this constant uphill battle where um, not only do you have the sort of um anti-protest propaganda be just pr presenting a completely completely slanted image of the protests in on multiple like axes, but but then you also have the uh like a a, a two-part propaganda machine um firing up and and downplaying the explicit violent um intent of a lot of these a lot of these militia groups that are quite literally um they're 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 heavily armed their goal is to go into areas where there is protest and essentially just pick a spot and set up and wait for problems to happen and in my mind like there is a there's a you know it's, it's incredibly hard to try and parse out um like the truth but not only to then but but then to also make a statement about it that's that's in, in the end like dealing with like a three front war of of of, uh, of of propaganda and it's incredibly hard to deal with it's something that like uh, has been incredibly frustrating about the most recent um news cycles is just how much raw disinfo there is and how many statements are being blown up by major new news institutions with almost no actual like research being done into them and it, it's it's really frustrating to me Definitely, definitely. It's, uh, yeah, it's, and especially well, for those of us who have been, oh, for, go ahead. 
Demon Baba, you mentioned research that these news networks aren't doing any research. Can you elaborate on that? Oh, I mean, certainly some of them are, but um, when you have uh, when you have um, places like, I mean, of course, the most egregious example is like. Uh, is like a you know Fox News. Um, you know, immediately, anytime they can find w any anything that seems even like tangentially bad for their political opponents, they'll just blow it up. Um, you know, like a, an exact example uh, um, with regard to like um, you know like the 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 Kenosha situation is a, a little bit. I mean, the the best example of that in my mind is like this uh, this rumor. Uh, that starts all the way back with Jacob Blake, where it's like, oh, he had a weapon in his car. And it's like, is there any truth to that? How would you even verify that? And you have that being widely reported by um, Fox News and, and even non-Fox News without any actual, like, evidence being done with the very, very, very um, light, um, like, it, hard evidence that could be referred it's to. A, it's a knee-jerk reaction to dehumanize him. Well, well, yes, absolutely. I agree with the with the motivation of this this like sort of thing where any time there's a um you know the, a police killing, there's just an attempt to try and dig up any possible justifying dirt and like and it doesn't justify it even by their own logic. Not even one bit. But yeah, it and doesn't then, at all. But it's common, yeah. I was gonna say, and then there's a reverse justification for people who have been attributing like for this seventeen year old Kyle who shot people shot and murdered people allegedly because it's not officially gone through the court sentences but it's like they like i've seen posts like oh he was a lifeguard so that means he couldn't kill people or oh he was like training it's cleaning like, graffiti. So, yeah cleaning graffiti that means that he couldn't kill people i don't understand like like that yeah, all of a sudden ultra boy. don't you understand yeah no like Didn't i love you see his boy scout uniform or... yeah and i think there's another um there's like another like sort of angle of that, which is that like in in addition to um, in addition to like like constantly focusing this media camera on details that are totally irrelevant to the question at hand or to the situation or the morals at hand, there's also a a complete turning of the camera away from ones that are relevant. Like I would say that it's pretty relevant. Um, that if you, if your like entire social media presence, for example, is devoted to backing the blue and, and, and posting, uh, thin blue line Punisher logos, the Punisher being a character who's known for extreme viol ex extreme vigilante violence, like these sorts of things mm -hmm. that you will, that you will see completely and utterly ignored while other details are fixated on. Um, and, and you start to see how it's just a joke. It's yeah, just a joke. Exactly. And jokes keep being funny, even if people have committed murder and can continue to propagate those jokes while they're going through murder trials like it's it's so funny and we keep propagating this which further justifies the violence sorry i didn't mean, I mean to cut you off. i just wanted no, to you're good that you're well. good i i mean to steal a joke from chapo trap house uh he basically found a way to be a school shooter that was justified by the right-wing press that's that's what he did holy shit dude What's that? Oh so, shit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I, had, I had not heard that before. Yeah, I mean I mean I think there is some truth with it. Um you know, to that statement. And and like again, and then you see like in the case of the um of the, the Portland shooter, another situation where there's an there's an, there's even more ambiguity um than Can uh, can I say something about the Portland shooter yeah, as yeah. somebody who doesn't live in Portland? Um so I, I was reading a CNN article and the CNN article was at pains to describe how disturbed he was, that he was posting various like violent ideations and, and all that type of stuff. And look, I like I can't speak for that. I can't and I won't support it, but I do wish to remember him at his best. And him at his best was getting rid of a patriot prayer, uh, prayer uh, activist. And I think that was, you know, worth it. I mean, I, I don't necessarily like I mean, I, I feel you. I feel the sentiment, but I, I don't necessarily agree um, with that assessment personally. Um, but like I, I do. uh 
the whole thing that, that that has been hitting me about the media approach to it is that again there doesn't seem to be any desire for for truth out of the situation the video that exists is incredibly hard to tell what's actually happening i don't um, think anybody cares i mean yeah i think there's truth i think there's truth to that statement that people are looking for confirmation of their bias in one way or another but um i don't know like in my mind people, people have baked in narratives that they want to tell about it and you know, I, I'm one of them personally. I think it's just one of those situations where it's like, okay, one less patriot prayer protester. What the okay, fuck? Big deal. Big deal? I I was incredibly confused. So the best thing that this guy has ever done was killing a patriot prayer. I don't care if it was a patriot prayer or not. A murder is a murder is a murder. Like, this guy's dead. And you just justified that? You're okay. You think that's the best? That's a shining light. We should be praising this person. News media. Here the comes headline the should be, oh, a good day for America. One less Patriot Prayer person on this planet. Yes. Seriously? Yeah. I can't even comprehend well, I mean, that. Does nobody know, else is having this yeah, reaction yeah. except for me? I feel I feel alone on this. No, I I mean, I, I, I tend I, to think, uh, you know, as someone who... Uh, tries to um oppose uh murder as much as possible um i mean again i can understand why a lot of people um have that sort of reaction um i mean the patriot prayer is an is a organization that has caused a lot of pain and a lot of danger for a lot of people um but i don't tend to uh i don't tend to think that people uh, deserve to die just because of their association um, with a political group or or whatever. Um, I mean, I'm not I'm not like particular per, you know, like personally emotionally sad about the death of somebody, but I don't necessarily think that means it's justified or should be celebrated. Um, for the, for the record, for the record, Irene, I'm just getting I'm just getting wiggly with it. Let's have some fun because like we could share the same takes back and forth, but. Let's get yeah, wild. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, I, I feel that. Um, also, wait, 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 no, 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 Irene, in the beginning of this very, I'm so sorry, Irene, because this is just so absurd so early on. Yeah, the yeah. very beginning, we go. you said that you right. wanted to have an environment that focuses on people not dying in the streets. Like, that's the line. This is the line. And here is a person who I've never talked to before, so for, forgive me, I'm not usually like this. Can that's just so absurd. Identified themselves as a leader at the beginning Hold of this on. conversation. Hold on, wait. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. I would like to uh, to point out that that's a misquote of Irene's. Irene said actually that she wouldn't want, doesn't want to fuck around with issues that regard marginalized people dying in the street, right? Like the guy he yeah. shot is a marginalized person. I mean, do we know about Patriots? So just because, I, no, 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 just because this person know, isn't marginalized, we can justify really his death? Research. Hey, you're really good on research. No, it's not. How much do you know about Patriot Prayer? I know very little, and I honestly don't really care. Okay. This guy's alive. I believe that everybody has a right to life. They were there to pick fights. I don't fights care whatever his and, beliefs and were. This is the same. This is the same exact logic that we use when trying to defend people who, against like people who are bringing up, oh, like this person had a criminal record. This was his ideology. He was a white nationalist. Like what? Also, we're flopping here. We're all you know. I, I we're all. a question of the quote. You're not wrong. We're also doing the thing again where we are coming to our own conclusions where the person who could they could have been defending themselves, they could have just killed him in cold blood, but we don't know because that person was never allowed to get their day in court. That's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing that I'm, I'm kind of like being then this is why I haven't really given a real firm take on this yet. Um, Chow is that like I uh, like I'm still missing a lot of facts on, on the situation and just knowing what I know about Patriot Prayer. And the Proud Boys and what organizations like that have done on the West Coast, what their tactics are and the way they, they, they try to uh, get, you know, like people like you and me, Chow, we, we have empathy, right? Like, I, I don't like the idea of somebody going up and shooting somebody because their political beliefs, right? If, if that's what happened, like, I, I'm not, you know, in support of that. I don't think we know. What I don't advocate that either, yet. by the way. And, and given and given that, that, that we're talking about Patriot prayer, I, I would somewhat doubt that. But yeah, like like I mean, I'm I'm sort of still you know feeling out the the lay of the land here, and and like uh, Mava said, like Mava said, like Mava say said, um, not pronouncing it in the Japanese way this time. Um, I, uh, I I I'm more concerned about like marginalized people and you know who are 
sort of pushed to the edge by capitalism anyway. And now are the deaths of them are being justified in a way that I don't think that I think that like compassion for like a white person, even if they're a right winger, yeah, even if they're um, one of these members of a, you know, what you could call like a racist group. Right. I think that I'm most people do have compassion bit. about that. I think most people do watch out for that person. Mm. But when it's a black person getting gunned down, that's when we go to this like, yeah, but what about their criminal record? Let's look at their. Oh, my God, this person shoplifted. What the fuck? This well, is a criminal. I, I mean, I so think can, I, can, I, can I toss I think, something in here? I yeah, just I just wanted to say, like, before we add any more to this, I think it's very possible for us to um, roundly condemn with great disgust the way that the police um, and the government handled uh, the apprehension of the of the suspected, mind you, shooter. Um, there, this has not been confirmed. Him. Yeah, they completely gunned him down. Like, they I mean, this is like a, like a like a like a. Godfather style, you know, pop out of the toll booth and and just shoot the hell out of somebody with a Tommy. I mean, the thirty to forty shots is yeah. what witnesses of the event called. We can absolutely roundly, um, we can absolutely roundly, um, uh, like you know, denounce this behavior. We can say that this is a, okay. Exactly, so can I, mean, I toss something in here? Well, I mean, um, I'm gonna try and finish. I, so like, because yeah, I don't, I don't yeah, think you've been, you've been talking, you've been talking. Okay, yeah, me. but but just because um, I just because I'm making my 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 point clear doesn't mean you can just cut in and talk over me. Because at the same time that um that like we can denounce this sort of thing, I think it's also possible for us to say, hey, um maybe this wasn't a good example of like the use of violent force as 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 a uh you know from a position of self defense and i don't think we have the information on the ground to say that it was like this is like a victory that this person was killed like i don't think that that's necessarily the case like i don't think we have okay. the evidence of that even if we roundly disagree with a group like the patriot prayer like um like i mean i don't personally think that we should i mean the way that you framed it by saying the best thing that this person um, did in their life was to take out a member of the Patriot Prayer. I mean, to me, that sounds like by that logic, that you could justify crazy. sort of the extermination of the Patriot Prayer. And I do not agree with that. I don't think that extrajudicial. Oh, I agree. I definitely agree with that. I think they should yeah. be exterminated. And, and wait, wait, so you, just, wait, 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 hold on. No, no, no. Like, that's a huge claim to make. So you believe you believe that 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 the members of the Patriot Prayer should be exterminated. I'm out. Uh, yes. Water. Um oh geez. Oh. So uh Yeah, okay. okay. I mean, like, so. uh, uh, Kenny, I don't I don't know if we can talk about like extermination on this uh panel. Yeah, like, I think I this think. is about this, to get this stream to genocide. TLS, but... This is this is genocide on somebody's political beliefs. This is uh, something that is that is illegal under international under the Rome statute. People get sent to the ICC for this I, I international like, criminal court. Okay, well, uh, you can send me to the international criminal court. Here's what I'm going to say about it. Um, one, I think it's all well and good to say all kinds of things on on Twitch, on Twitter, and all that type of stuff. Like nobody's you're doing right actually, now. Like you're doing right now. Uh, nobody's actually on the ground, and so. All this wait, like wait, wait, wait a second. Hold on, hold on all a this second. hemming and hawing is like wait, wait, wait. Uh, we're talking about somebody who was actually killed we're talking about a real person who was killed and you're saying oh we're just on twitch so are you like openly admitting to just being you know like that you're just acting in bad faith saying things that you don't believe is true just for the shock value no i think it's a good thing so you you but, think you you think um, you think generally speaking i think all this hemming and hawing is just a waste of time i think the fact that people are willing to stand up and do things is a good thing. And yes, we should put the fear of God in some of these people. Yeah, I think it's worthwhile to do that. Yeah, I don't think uh, that's a tactic that's going to be successful. Uh, I think that if we come out with an open tactic of like, hey, you know, fucking up against the wall, all you that are members of this group. And I'll, like, this is the first time I've ever found myself on this side of this. I never really thought I'd be saying that maybe yeah. I am moving to the right. I mean, no. I, I didn't expect to come <laughs> like, onto this lefty panel and have people argue for the extrajudicial ex ex execution of people. Who, well, I'm, for glad, the I'm glad we're finally getting wiggly with it and having some fun. I mean, that's like, a way to, that's a way to call it. It's like, I mean, wait, that's, wait, 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 that's a way to, that's a way to call it. That's a way to call it when you're sitting in your fucking gaming chair on Twitch and, and saying, oh, yeah, we're 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 getting wiggly with it. You're talking about humans dying like this is such a, a trite way of, yeah, of, of approaching do, it. They die every day, buddy. Guess I mean, what? Wait, 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 
Wait, that is that is the dumbest hand wave I've ever heard in my entire life. Oh, people die every day. Guess what? Do you want to know? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Do you want to know who suffers the most from the from the fucking kickback of this type of stuff? When 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 uh when we're careless and we make when we make mistakes that allow the uh that allow the right wing media to run free propaganda for weeks over a completely sense like from what it seems. Let me to tell be you a secret, buddy. They're gonna run that propaganda anyway. Uh, I mean, anyway. to a degree, but, guess what? but guess what? It guess gives them, what? They're calling Joe it gives Biden them a whole a, lot. It gives they're them calling a whole Joe lot Biden more. an anarchist and a socialist. Guess who pays the price? Not you. Not you. You're not the one who pays this price. It's it's people like myself, trans people. It's people with dark skin who live in America who pay the price for 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 your LARPing on the internet, which is what you are doing right now, admittedly. What Getting wiggly with it from your gamer chair talking about how we should exterminate extrajudicially. What state do you live in? What state do I live in? Yeah, what state? I'm not you telling in? you that. You're you're a fucking psycho. Holy shit. To, right. to, to come well, in here and argue I'm for extermination. It's a blue state. It doesn't matter. So Yeah, wait, what like, do you mean you that can, doesn't matter? Wait, wait, you do you think me do about you think, that all night? Wait, wait, wait. Do you really think care. that just because I live in a blue state that this isn't a state that's seen extreme violence? In fact, many of the shootings that have been a result of this have been in my fucking state. So I'd appreciate your your uh, okay. embarrassing attempt at like talking down at me. I would appreciate th that if you'd keep that in because you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And let's understand also that uh, states like uh, California, uh, Seattle, uh, what is it with the Seattle and Washington uh, and Oregon? Like uh, you know, I mean, like these may be blue states, heavily blue states, but they have huge contingents of like right wingers, like just outside some of these. Yeah, I've got states, people you know? who like literally wave nazi flags down my neighborhood yeah i know what it's yeah, like me in california too. yeah uh, i know what it's like in these fucking states i don't really do well with this kind of lecturing of like nothingness it's essentially a fart in the wind i mean uh, excellent right, 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 comeback okay. my dude right, but, like, so the, the real reason why like i don't i don't think that anybody I, th I think the only people that are prepared for a fucking civil war are the goddamn boogaloo boys we're gonna get slaughtered out there kenny what the fuck so the real reason why we don't ever condone violence on either side, the real reason why is because when Dip we justify LARPing. it, that also means the other side could justify it. So when we say that it's okay to kill Nazis, now Nazis are now, they're able to say, okay, because they're going to be killing us and we have that right to life because of self-defense, all these things, we could just go back to all the fucking theory and human behavior. We could go ever since the fucking Stone Age when we were fucking monkeys. OK, we're always going to be wanting to fight for that survival. Now they have a justification to kill us. And as Irene says, who are the ones that are most prepared for our fucking civil war? It is or, or those right wingers. Yeah, not so, only hey, that, I, but I, by I, your I, own I, argument, I do disagree with you. Here's where, here's oh, where, see. Society. Here's where oh. I disagree with you. They don't need a justification for that. Like you're thinking, like oh, they need a logical justification for that. I but, don't think they need one. They are no, going but they to do definitely it. And, and absolutely and objectively do no, take advantage I don't of care escalation. If they have a logical. I don't care if they have a logical or if they're going to do it or not. But the thing is, is that when we start saying, when we start saying that their tactics are now okay, it is going to be going down into history. It is going to be affecting other communities. It's going to be affecting other countries. They're going to be starting. I can guarantee what you, we're we are doing. not going down in history. Yes, buddy. yes, this is. If you have any understanding of how geopolitics works, how much influence the United States has, when the United States is going to be falling into a similar civil war because we have decided that it is okay to kill our op political opponents, then other then this is going to reflect. This is going to it's, this is going to be a spider web. You really just yeah the God, I, the I idea can't, that I like can't. that that somebody who was just killed and got an incredible amount of news coverage is not going to go down in history is is just silly no they're not yeah i mean you're wrong they already are so, so kenny like i'm not gonna push back on you maybe as forcefully as some of the other people but like in terms of uh, what you just said about they don't need an excuse look at charlottesville that's an example of what happens when these people get uh, too far on their what is it called too far over on their skis i don't ski so i don't know what the actual metaphor is too but like you're you're, you're, you're gone you're too good. far on their, i don't know you know what i mean but like, right when when they do that like right they they get some pushback they get a major like pr setback for their movement where this thing called the alt-right which they had half of america and convinced this isn't like racist at all this is just conservative americans finally stand up for themselves they now have the, the like the slime of being like yeah no you're kkk basically right like so so they do have an example of why 
they don't have like justification to just run you know rampant the way they did you know hitting people in the head in garages with crowbars in uh was there a crowbar about i don't know it was something uh in uh in charlottesville but um you know, like, like, so, so they, 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 they do use justifications. In fact, this is the tactic used by Patriot Prayer and the Proud Boys is to provoke people, is to go into cities and and try to just like get somebody to start something, and then they'll be like, play sure. stupid games, win stupid prizes, and they'll bust out their their weapons, and they'll bust out their you know brass knuckles, and they'll they'll well, they they're, they're, they they want this to become a fight because right they're, now they're fight, violent. I control. think the frustration the is. Oh, go ahead, Orb Lady. You haven't talked. Yeah, I think the frustration is thinking that they need any justification whatsoever because in Charlottesville, they didn't have any justification to drive a car into a crowd of women. Rally like, what, what in response to anything? Like, huh? The, the 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 rally that they did in Charlottesville that wasn't in response to anything. They just. Set it was in up. response to the city. Oh, it's it's a fun oh, state's rights yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, it was right. a response. Let's to let her talk. City. Okay. Yeah. It was a response to the city. I lived in Charlottesville during this time. By the way, not bragging, obviously. Um, That's not true. But the city destroyer. voted That's unanimously you know to um, remove a Confederate statue that uh, and or like the Confederate statues in town, and um, like there was some organization like right wing organizations had to pull from like half the country to get 20 fascistic ideological people there for the first rally, which I was at and the town had 2000 people come out in response. And it's not like those 20 people had any justification, but then that got news coverage. And then the second rally happened. And that's where a lot of people came from around Virginia, from around further parts of the country and came and their justification was, I don't know what, like, I don't, are we trying to have justifications? Are we trying to oh. rationalize this behavior? Like, I don't understand. Well, the justification for the, the further people who showed up was the fact that that 2000 met them right that they met resistance so they yes. you know, we got to call well, them for backup like, like, these probably, aren't gonna let us. yeah right like you know like these these people they're not going to let us just do this demonstration thing like we need backup we need to get together we need to unite because just what? like 20 of us showing up to defend the statue isn't enough yeah and i'd like to say that the show like i mean I, my whole life has been progress but the like me physically going into that space was the first time that I really started to question my own personal politics. I was further to the center or apolitical before this time. I was even defending the statues at some point, but then my friends were like, not defending, but just passively being like, I'm indifferent because I didn't know. Like, you know, and then I heard the histories of them, the installations of them were done, you know, and like, I don't know. It's it's just it's just weird to me to try and like try to bargain with oneself about like rationalizing, oh, if we're passive enough, if we like, you know, don't do things, it's like I, I, I don't I don't I don't know. I, I feel like I... That, and, I, and I actually agree with you, uh, Orb Lady, on that. I, I think what I was trying to point out was that the more of the results from Charlottesville. So you said that you were radicalized to the left because of Charlottesville. A lot of people who weren't really involved, who didn't really know what the issues were, who didn't really know, are they all right, really racist, made up their mind at that point. That was a huge PR debacle for the, you know, the, for the hard right, um, the Charlottesville was. And that's what happens when they do things without the proper justification. Now, if they had a bunch of video of like, I don't know, like people, you know, black clad, you know, beating down a, you know. Can I bridge this a conversation a little bit? Like they, they, they might have, you know, been able to do better like PR wise. But like, you know, that that's what I'm talking about is that they, they do now know what happens when they go into things without a justification. If they, you know, Holy announce shit. it's boogaloo time, all right, we're going to start killing people. They're not going to have people on their sides. But if they it can like, justify it with, like, destroyer. look at we'll this, talk about that, that happened after to this person. And look at what this it literally is I mean, they are trying to collect this, like, a uh, portfolio but, of information yeah. that justifies can I, the genocide they want to do, right? A bag of can I bridge this conversation a little yeah, bit? Bridge. I, I, like, I've got a, I've got a bridge for this conversation here a little bit. Um, okay. Why do I feel is, this isn't going to be a bridge? One, I get for the follow that people man. are heated about it, and I get that I come at it with a very hot take. Um, I 
don't particularly care that much. But where the bridge comes true, from me, true. where the bridge actually comes from me is where we start talking about the red mirage theory, where Trump is, you know, just by if you look at the demographics, if you look at the polling data, uh, Trump is likely going to be declared victorious on Election Day. And then you're going to see mail in ballots pull, uh, uh, fall in and get counted. And those are going to be counted over time. And that basically bridges the question of how do we stop that from happening? How do you stop someone like Trump uh, just declaring victory and that being the end of the story? Do you know who determines the presidency? Yes, it's not I Trump. Do. It's not the media. Who? Who? The states. Uh, the Supreme Court, buddy. No, yeah. it's not the Supreme Court. Okay, look at 2000. It doesn't matter if Trump is yes, going to be declared victory. It actually victory. matters. It doesn't in matter. No, it doesn't. It actually it doesn't mattered matter in 2000 when they declared Bush matter. the victor. I mean, I don't feel that, like this actually bridges <laughs> anything. Like, I feel like you failed to complete to construct a bridge. You want to know something about the mirage? Is that the the poli sci term, which has existed yeah, for he's fucking decades, Holy is shit. called the blue wave because we know that historically mail-in ballots as well as absentee ballots as well as ballots overseas have for the most part been done has been given trump the cares. majority of it are, are democrats trump okay so this is so this and the election is not decided on election day not after election day a month after it and although so when we it can goes bring up we could also we could like also be did, talking about florida in 2000 can you stop like interrupting in you've been interrupting irene and it's handed you, over you because there's a bunch of trump appointees what the fuck is true wrong? why do you keep on interrupting why do you keep on doing yep. this Bullshit. why do you want to keep on bridging the gap between irene and orb lady no no i'm calling this out because it's been happening over and over again. I've been fucking pissed off. And then he tries to do something like let the orb lady talk. I respect the orb lady talking too. But you have no right to do that, you fucking hypocrite. Damn. Who are you yelling at right now? I'm yelling at you. Oh, you're yelling the first at me? Time, the first time you were like, oh, Dina Mama, you've been talking. You've been talking for so long. Like, shut the fuck up. Holy shit. How pretentious okay, do you think well, you are? So let me teach you a history lesson. So there's a year. It was called the year 2000. Uh, there were two people running for president. All he uh, has Gore is condescension. Bush. What a condescending and asshole. In that you know, there election, was a third person the running for Supreme president? Court. Oh, wow. What a nice history lesson. The Supreme Court handed yeah, that election had like a lame to George W. Ago. Bush. Even though Gore won the vote. There are you, three. You know right, the, elect the electoral college is trash. We know this. Do you know why? Do you know why this does not build a bridge back way? to you advocating for the extermination of people based on a political affiliation. I don't care. Uh, that's, I, mean, that's, I mean, that's I mean, very clear. Yeah, it's that's very clear, clear that you don't know. care. Why it seems like you came to this way. conversation. It's the Equal Protections Clause. And did you know that the three Supreme Court justices and the and it was the Florida Supreme Court that did this? Okay, they were voted in. They were they were appointed by yeah. not a Republican candidate. So even. Even Man, liberal who, buddy, judges, buddy, even liberal who, judges who, said who that this Supreme is unconstitutional under her. equal protections because we cannot count differently certain counties differently than others. This is why it wasn't recounted, you fool. Buddy, buddy, who? Nice history lesson. Court, who put two hey, Supreme Court capitalism. We're dealing with a, a LARPer of, of the utmost you, order. Donald Trump, it's a 5-4 court. Okay, so you failed to build a bridge here. You've come here with nothing but condescension and empty LARPing, and you advocate for the extermination of people from the comfort of your of your fucking streaming room. And to me, I think that this is like a, a, a absolutely categorical, like like per, a perfect poster example of, of of exactly the type of of thoughtless nonsense which fuels directly into 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 legitimate fascist tactics. Fascists rely on a constant sense of persecution. They rely on a constant sense of increasing tension. They need to be able to sell that the apocalypse is here and the time is now for civil for civil war. And with you coming on a public platform to advocate for the extermination of people when we just had a conversation about how the media obscures the actual truth of a situation and that maybe we shouldn't just blanketly like celebrate like 
death and violence without knowing the actual facts, you are doing damage. You are doing active pu public damage to your own supposed cause. And it's funny that the thing that you've said most in this conversation is how, who cares? Who cares? It's very clear that you don't care and that it's very nice for you to, from your position of comfort, to play as the accelerationist while marginalized people bear the cost of your, of your so-called uh, stoke, you know, your stoking of the flames. I would like to. I would like to, as a marginalized person, to. Uh, I would like to say, fuck the fuck off with that. Uh, America's anti-black and white supremacist. Period. I was gonna die anyway. Don't put that on Kenny. I don't. I don't like this kind of rhetoric. I wait, don't like that kind wait. of rhetoric. Uh, I mean, that's fine. You can disagree with that type of rhetoric, but like, again, I am also a marginalized person. Uh, I am a, you know, a, a public trans woman who de deals with this sort of hate every single day and just openly a advocating for the extermination of people is, is not a good way to win favor to your cause. In fact, it literally gives ammunition to, uh, to the other side. Now, now, do, does that mean I think that you should just lay down or anything like that, uh, which I'm sure I'll be mischaracterized as? No, absolutely not. But there are smart and strategic ways to fight and there are dumb fuck You're idiot ways smart. to do it. And you have chosen the dumb fuck way. path. What are the smart and strategic ways to do things? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's there's tons. We can talk about the number of what successes. Are are wait, 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 right wait, now. All, wait, wait, hold on. You're asking me what is every possible strategy we can use to fight I'm against fascism? Like, let's one. have no, 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 no. I think demon. Mo no, all you have to do is name the the things that we don't want to do, right? Like, like, wait, like, wait. That's what yeah, absolutely. About. Advocating for the yeah, ex 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 advocating for the extrajudicial ex uh, extermination of a political group, even one that you disagree fervently with, is one of the things you don't want to do that's one of the things you absolutely don't that's want to do that is literally what you argued check the vod anybody who doesn't believe this liar go check the no, vod i said I don't yeah, you literally that did that all of this is because like what this person is doing on all the vods where everybody who's streaming is actually reporting no he hasn't is advocating for violence and the no no yes, the, not just the violence. extermination of a group yeah extra extrajudicial extra extermination murder, a fucking crime Spicy chat, let us know. Do we need to delete the VOD? I've never deleted a bird, bird brain spot before, but like uh, you were you're in the audience. What what do you think, audience? Can we get a poll? Delete the VOD or not? Am I in trouble? I mean it sure will be convenient. I, I if know you... Twitch I know I know Twitch rules well enough. You're you're fine. Yeah, okay. I mean, it. whatever. Like, I mean, I don't know if I'd trust this guy on anything. He can't build a bridge, he can't he can't advocate for leftism effectively, so So my, my whole deal about this, right, is that like, you know, and I'm, I'm sort of, I guess, agreeing with Demon Mama here, is that like, you know, okay, let's say that like, does anybody remember the Jets and the Sharks, right, was the West Side Story gangs? I, I know this is terrible for me to, like, I don't even know West Side Story. I'm, I don't know why I'm using boomer references that I'm not even familiar with, but like, does anybody remember who was the good guys? Was it the Jets, the, the, the Jets are the good guys and the Sharks are the bad guys or... Well, let, like, let's say that, you know, you're, you're up against a rival gang, you know, they're super evil, you know, you got to take them out, right? You know that they're bad news and they want bad things for, for everybody, right? But like, people just view you as two rival gangs, okay? If you're going into that situation where there's a bar that you're going into with a bunch of these people, you don't go in there saying, we're going to kill, you know, you don't say, say like that. You say, hey, I don't want any trouble. I don't want any trouble. Even if you kind of do want some oh my god i sound so bad here this is uh i don't know what i'm i'm trying what i'm trying to say is that like even from an optics perspective which it's you know it sounds like might be something that you know like i'm assuming kenny kenny you want to win right like, uh sorry what was that? he doesn't you, care you, you want to win right we don't want to just like fight the good fight and get like you know like and, and end up losing um, anyway right we, we want to win that's yeah, the ends justify yeah. the means. Like, the less of them, the more of us we win. No, no, so, no. Therefore, can we kill them. Like, can I actually can speak I... without being interrupted by two yeah, people who ahead. have okay. nothing to say? Um, nice try. No, I actually do believe, like, yeah, there's various ways to win. I think there's strategic ways to do things. Um, at the end of the day, am I that worried that some guy died somewhere? No, I'm not. Uh, I don't it back. think it's that worth I don't think it's worth that much time walking, uh, it back. especially like trying to refound ourselves on like some moral grounding. I just think that's a waste of time. Back no, pedaling. Like, 
Why backpedaling is that real bad? bold statement you Why opened it with? Backpedaling bad. Wait, it's backpedaling when you when you opinion bad. Oh, it absolutely. It absolutely is. I'm just saying. Wait, wait, of I'm course it is. If you're going to come out here and you're going to make a statement that's as bold as something like, oh, people should be exterminated extrajudicially, and then you're going to try and replay, you don't admit that you're wrong. Hold on a second. You don't admit that you're wrong. You don't admit that you're wrong. You then condescend to, to the other people who disagree with you on the panel really fucking massively. And then third, and then you go and try and re reframe your opinion as if you said something that wasn't stupid as shit which you did say, which was stupid as shit, and you never fucking took that back. Now you're backpedaling? Yeah, that's called trying to save face after you look like an idiot. Okay. Uh, no, yes, I'm glad that face. the guy who died in Portland died. Um, that hey, being there you said, go. I don't really thanks care. For the, thanks for the, thanks for the, thanks for the confirmation. Matter. Like, this is... All right, then, then I, I could like, talk about a little bit about, like, these violent tactics, these insurgents, and why they don't work ever. The reason is because only a few of them, a LARPer only is a few is, amount of people will actually subscribe to those taxes. All the other people, bystanders, he's not out there. He lives in fucking like, dumb fuck oh, nowhere. I agree with the sentiment. I I agree with the motives and all these things. But will they actually go Sucking out there and do the things that you're willing to do, Kenny? No, absolutely not. So, like, if you really wanted to win, so, okay, this is I'm not gonna, the way. I actually this am going like... to talk over you because I'm actually getting a little bit annoyed at this point. Good. Um, no, fascists don't need the kind of justifications that you all think they do. They don't need logical justification. They are going to do things. They are going to murder people of color. I, I never made the claim that they murder. need logical justification. They are going to murder trans people. They are going to murder women. They are going to do that regardless of the logical justification of the fact of the matter. Yeah, it does not matter. So you can you can lecture me okay, all day and night and long. I don't right care. Now? Why wait, are wait, they wait. doing it right now? They clearly want they they're doing, doing it right now. Wait, hold on so a why second. Why are they doing it on fucking mass? They have guns. They have people. Why aren't they, you know, boogalooing or whatever? Like, why aren't they doing it right now? What do they need? What are they? You gonna... wake up every day and you see a story about this. Trickle, they are trickle, doing trickle. it yeah, every yeah. day. It, it, yeah, I don't really yes, appreciate it, being it, like it's... being like again talked down to again as a trans person by uh, yourself. Um, like I don't appreciate that. I, I genuinely don't because the thing that you're what you're advocating is that the 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 right wing the right wing which currently controls the mechanism of the state an overwhelming power that could at a moment's notice if they so decided it could snap their fingers and and make camps if they wanted to the idea that you're trying to to say that we can be frivolous and careless in our response to that in how we address that is is hilarious and it's hilariously characteristic of someone who's going to sit in their streaming room hilarious. extreme excuse me hilarious. who's who's going like, to sit in their streaming hilarious. room and clap at things on the tv as if as while well, while other people pay the price for it i think that's ridiculous and i think it's reprehensible and i think it's embarrassing and bad for our cause we have we don't have the luxury to 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 not play smart we are facing a power that is overwhelming we are facing the fa the power of the state. We are facing the power of of fascists. You can't be careless. You can't just hand wave and say, "Oh, people die every day," like you literally just did. That's phenomenally foolish. We can, we don't have the ability to just uh, play play ridiculous games and play vigilante violence when we have an entire media, uh, like literally multiple e media apparatuses, which will dis not only disgustingly characterize, but will take any facts which we cannot refute and use that against us. We have to play smart and you are playing motherfucking dumb right now. Okay. You done? Yeah. Uh, is that your rebuttal? Because I would like to continue to lecture you to you, Kenny. <laughs> all right, I'm here for it. Okay, all right. So we could actually look at it's some cases the, historically. Uh, any why he sucks. You like open this conversation by advocating for the extrajudicial ex extermination of people that you disagree with. I'm sorry, but you, you asked for this. I know you have a lot of syllables. Can you calm down? So Good one. we could really be looking at actual fascist regimes in history as well as around the world currently what a mother what fucking idiot happens when insurgents try to fight against them let's look at libya let's look at syria and any sort of google search about what's happened for the past decade or so is not a good look i know okay Fascism, sorry, it's really it's it's I, all i'm saying all i'm saying though he, is his that, argument like, is fighting against fascism right. with I'll violence try to do that in a second. is 
is also not very good. It's it he's could a smuggling be like the idiot. Only way, the only thing that you could ever do because you are stuck in between a hard place and a rock. I can see that. But then all of a sudden going down towards the route of a civil war, that's not a, that's not good either. And the chances of winning and getting what you want is also very very low. I could tell you the entire history of what it's like to be in a civil war in an African country. Those wars, they last for 20 years. And it's just insurgencies trying to get arms. They're just trying to get more money. You know what that does? It increases drug trafficking. It increases human trafficking. They're terrorizing other can, populations who don't even want them. Like, Can the, we hear it, from it's, somebody who's not... Uh, the we, two people. Yeah, yelling. we do have uh, we do have some people that do. Do, do you want to get in, uh, Carpe? So did or... you uh, did you not take anything else just because it was no, my I character? Just it. because Seriously. you didn't take anything no, in. I He's getting owned too That's... hard. He doesn't want to hear any more of us because it's embarrassing him in public. Like this is this is the kind of knowledge that I'm sharing that I've learned for the past four years. You're welcome. No nothing. I've studied. You can have it, this wars. one for free. I've this guy's a larping regimes. brainlet. I've studied. The air yes, I know boycott is the like, stupidest argument I've ever terrible. heard. And this is the exact logic that they've taken into these civil wars. The same thing that you're yeah, doing because he's smug. is this belief that, oh my god, we can't do anything. Therefore, we have to resort to violence. Therefore, we have to be killing these people who disagree with us because there's no way we could win. So fascists in America are... You know, we I want to let you know that fascists in America, fascists you're, in America we are so fucking they are, lucky. They, this is a mischaracterization of they the are the situation. softest of boys, and we should protect all of our fascists in America, no matter what they do. They're they're good people, and I'm glad that I've got both of you saying that we should do that. Oh, totally. Reason, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Reason, no, no, no. Hold on a second. We respect Mod, life. Like we all know, the life of a fascist wait, is the same as the life senpai, of a fascist. Senpai, give me just one second on this. Give me just one second, because that is one of the most ridiculous and childish and bad faith interpretations of anything that either of us have said in this entire time and i'm i am quite sure that if we asked every single person's chat chat in here uh whether we'll whether that was a good a good characterization in this chat to talk <laughs> wait wait excuse me just because this is a panel like we respond you have have said really ridiculous things i've chosen to speak up that's how a panel works if somebody else wants to speak up they can speak up there's nothing stopping them just because i have a lot to say to you because Back. you say or lady mabase how do you feel about things I mean, wait. Don't, don't catch him in a bite. I'm almost starting to chew. Um, we can we can go to uh, Pat. Yeah. But wait a minute. Wait, wait. Why does why does this guy get to play like smug as if he's the moderator? Is he the moderator? And secondly, like uh, no, the idea that he can just grossly <laughs> lie about our positions is ridiculous. No, Kenny um, has completely <laughs> shut me out. I tried to I try to bring this is so that dumb. Was a lot more educational. These case studies they make the points themselves. And his response was, I didn't take any of it in because it's me. At this point, question. this panelist yeah, has lady, lost lady, all faith. I have a question for Chow. What is like, okay, so you studied, you keep saying you studied fascist regimes. And I'm, I'm just confused, like the logic you're attributing to them to having because like there are varying degrees of resistance that fascist regimes have been met with, but usually they all have similar um, sort of logic that justifies violence regardless of resistance. I'm agreeing with Kenny on this, is that it doesn't matter what the logic or rationale is that they're going to be using, they're still going to continue this behavior. What I'm trying to say Good, so we should time. put them in no resistance. Yes, yes. Wait no. a second. No, oh no, no, my no, no, god. No, no, no. Are you guys incapable of engaging in good faith? Them. No one, that, literally that no a, one here has advocated. The conclusion of my point. Wait, wait, wait. wait. very disingenuous. You, you, you haven't been listening either. And so I'll repeat it again. Okay, so even though Unbelievable. their logic is still going to be the same. I'm sorry, I'm listening. The logic... That we're that Kenny is taking, and perhaps that you're even taking, is that it's going to be leading to bloodshed. It's going to lead to a civil war. It's going to lead to a fragile state, 
And this is an even worse outcome. And this is an outcome that insurgents tend to not win because there's not a lot of popular support. One, there's not a lot of popular support. And two, the likelihood of actually winning against a militarized regime that has aircraft, tanks, navy, and an organized military is incredibly slim. We're this not is talking about fighting for... the government. We're talking about fighting other... Like, They're ta other when we started to talk about fascist regimes and fascism and people who are fascist, are just the government being fascist, then yes, the, our, this conversation has derailed to something new. And it's the same logic that insurgents will use against people who stupid. have different ideologies in that we can't win. We, there's no faith in reforming. Therefore, what, what we have to do is resort to the tactics of decreasing their numbers and bolstering ours. And that's through any sort of act of violence. I would just like to say that your assumption is assuming there isn't already blood in the streets. And as I feel like we have kind of glossed over a little bit, the reason for the protests initially is because people were already being killed. Mm -hmm. Cool. And, I, so, and, and I, so because I, there's blood I, in the streets, I, should we then start killing people who are anti-protest? Should we start killing I policemen? I in a while, and I've had a lot of people say all kinds of things about uh, what like I Ma think. Like, can we go to, uh, so we'll come right back to you, Kenny. Uh, oh, it's Mama a mess, Sai, Aviator, Ben. At all. Uh, you're and I mispronounced your name again. Damn it. It happens, okay? Um I don't know. Okay. So I can like I like I don't I don't know if, if Kenny literally means what he means or whatever he means. I don't I don't hmm. fucking know at this point. But for me personally, I'm a big I'm a big advocate for shoot the fuck back, right? If these people are gonna come in and they're gonna be brandishing weapons, I feel like it should be a project for the left to have whoever the fuck is willing to arm themselves, train themselves to be to be an armed defense against these people, right? Like, should they be like, you know, attacking them? I'm not sure. We're not at that point where we can where we can do that. But those people should be there. Yeah, right? no, and, I, that, I, and I and I will always advocate for that. And I, and and one thing that I'll always advocate for is yes, if you are some kind of marginalized, particularly black people, I can't really speak to any to anyone else's community, is that you should pick up the gun. You should get a gun. You should learn how to use a gun. Figure out how you can acquire a gun and do it legally because you know for a fact that people who look like us are also always under the radar, right? So for me, I, I, it, it seems kind of weird that there's like this, like almost like complete marriage to to pacifism that I'm kind of hearing here. And I don't like, I, I don't know nope. at, at this nope. point in time, it doesn't seem like that's reasonable. I uh, so, I'm definitely not there. Okay. Uh, sorry, Kenny. I said you'd get to speak next. Let me give it over to you. So my my thing is is like we wake up every single day you know those of us in america uh speaking strictly strictly for americans we wake up every single day of a, a person of color is murdered a trans person is colored uh, uh is murdered a like every single day we fucking wake up to those stories so yeah, I'm sorry if I'm a little jaded and I'm a little like stupid on the side of self defense. That's not self defense. No, I don't think there's gonna be like some logical like thing for the right where people defend themselves because they're already doing it. We're waking up to those stories every day. Those people are being murdered. Those people are being subjugated. Those people are being ground down into the ground. And like, what are we supposed to do? Just be nice about it like i don't know i don't i don't take that path I, i'm not that guy yeah Sorry. i mean, well, I mean I, i'm not sure i'm not sure if people understand the path that, that i'm trying to tread here but like it's definitely not one of standing down and letting people intimidate us it's definitely one of defense but like that's this that's the key word for me there is defense and the reason even above all you know like what, what you think of in terms of like what fascists deserve and who's a fascist and who's not above all the defensive posture the reticence to fight is going to help us win hearts and minds it's going to make us distinct from the actual bad guys because guess what america thinks in terms of movies and if you act like a bad guy you're going to be treated like a bad guy even if that's not right even if the people that you're fighting are like way worse than you we've got to kind of maintain that posture of like hey 
I don't want any trouble and at the same time be ready for that trouble. So I'm, I'm kind of in between the two sides here. I, I hope people understand, you know, where I'm coming from. Let, let me just ask for a like, quick way, but before we, stuff, before we get like, any further into weird more weird speculation and broad sweeps and smearing things stuff. together. I, mean, I actually like, like, I, no, I actually don't sit here and go, how do we murder all the conservatives? I, I mean, no, you literally that's actually just, not like, you literally position. in this VOD advocated a, for extrajudicial exterminations. Like you did, you did that, and 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 the fact that you can't defend that position is is very telling. But I would I have a quick question because this was something that came up, and I have this question is for the orb lady because um I feel like you did a real real um bad job trying to characterize both me and Senpai's argument here. So I would be interested. Can you do you think that you can give me like a like a steel man version of our argument? Just real quick, can you try that because I would like to see wh whether you're Wait, capable. You had one? Ha ha ha, good one. I mean, you could give it better than I could. I mm. still am not insinuating. I don't understand. I ask Senpai, like, what's going on? Seem to be oblivious to the deaths that currently happen in the United States. So I don't know. That's no, what I was. It's not. Of. I'm no, a little. It's not. Regardless, if I mean, wait a minute. So wait, wait. Regardless of what social like unrest is occurring like within this people. country, regardless of that, taking up arms and advocating for the the breakdown of civil Thank society you. in which elections don't matter and what really <laughs> matters is taking power through violence. That is the dangerous thing that's going on in this conversation. That is what I'm advocating against, and I do recognize that currently. What Kenny is saying and what you are saying every day where we wake up and I'm afraid that that's being normalized that that is going to lead us to say it's okay for people to die because then at that point then it's okay for people not have health care then it's okay for people to not be able to get the prescription then they need it yeah. it's okay I mean, for and, people and, to no, just I, start no, shooting just wanna... other people because they disagree on I their political beliefs this is a breakdown of civil society just... this is a breakdown I... of a liberal democracy this Can is a I... breakdown Wait, have... of a country into a state for based on the assumption that this was not self defense in the point of the person who was Gun down in the street. Yes, and can no longer. but Please you, your, you and Kenny, Kenny not bring up. Hold, hold on, hold on a second. Wait a second. Wait, wait a second. Let me just let me just lay something out real simple here, because neither of you are able to engage in. Way. Neither of you were able to engage or even try to make a, a fair analysis of what our argument is. So you really are not. You are acting in like basically the pinnacle of bad faith, which is attempting to just literally lie about our positions. And, and, like secondly, and secondly, and secondly, like, you also ignore the fact that I, at least personally, and also I believe Senpai, I can't really speak for him, but but that, that we literally opened this, bringing attention, focusing on the deaths that happen every single day. And I think it's a really, really shame, like, like shameful attempt to try and say that we don't care about or that we are, that we are ignoring the fact that there are deaths every single day. Literally, that was the approach from this conversation that we entered into. It was you two who made the assumptions, um, both about our arguments and honest like dishonest presentation of our arguments but also that you made the assumption that this was an okay thing we have no idea what happened with the guy in in portland we barely even know what his affiliations then why, are and why are we putting so much of our discussion on the guy who died in portland aside from the marginalized people who are dying every day why is the majority if 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 say proportionately we have one person conservative person who's died compared to thousands of people of color and minority why are we not focusing the conversation on this and when kenny asked you what is practical for people to do you did not list like i'm actually i wasn't I able to answer that first of all because i was i was interrupted by the mod which is fine but also secondly the reason that we're having this conversation, it's really interesting because it highlights my point exactly. The reason why we're talking more about the the meta discussion about this is because your uh, your comrade, Kenny over there, was the one who opened this by advocating for the extrajudicial extermination, his words, of, 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 a, uh, of, of, of people who disagree politically with him. So I'm sorry, yeah, but that is sorry. why. If you're wondering, if you're wondering why, if you're wondering why the narrative gets hijacked, if you're wondering why 
there Thanks. is a VOD. Excuse you me. can go back and look please. and see yes. whether those please are Please watch it. Words. Go back and watch what, what, what was advocated for. So also, secondly, if you if you have any question as to why this, this conversation has been hijacked from talking about the re real victims of this violence, it's because of embarrassing, em genuinely embarrassing posturing LARPers like this guy Kenny over here who's going to come into a conversation and take a conversation about how we actually practically save lives and deal with a rising fascist threat which I genuinely believe in and my entire pro my entire platform on here is devoted to calling out and detailing this only to have someone come on here on a platform as a quote-unquote leftist and advocate for the extrajudicial murder of, of people associated with a group whether or not you disagree with that group which I do strongly wrongly but i would never in my right mind come onto a public platform and advocate for the extrajudicial killing of those people that's why the conversation isn't about the victims it's because of kenny those are those are God things it, those are things that i i'm so sorry that i totally said you know i'm 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 so so regretful what are you saying right now I'm are you so just regret. being like are you just posturing you again and being sarcastic moment, so i can even just land a joke i'm so regretful oh, nice. you're, a video about recording you're joking about people... listen listen to this more more posturing using jokes using your your jokes and your sarcasm to say absolutely nothing while simultaneously attempting to morally posture yourself and position yourself uh over us for being like, oh why aren't you focusing on the victims let me just waste time on a panel making dumb jokes that say absolutely nothing I how feel exactly how embarrassing the same. Oh, no, wait wait i would i would what the fuck is I gonna say now? I don't even remember it. No, I do. Okay, so I take issue with this thing that Chow said about like how this death is like normalized and how this is a breakdown of like civil society. I would submit to you uh, the uh, a, a Afro pessimist uh, reading that blacks are dead already socially. So our physical death, the death of the body, is just a logical conclusion, right? This is a big thing that our whole entire civil society is built on, right? You wouldn't have the society that you did if we didn't, if we weren't okay hey, with dude, like good to see an entire class of people being socially dead oh, in terms it's of being a slave gone cast, wild, Cordell. And of course, them being the by ten Kenny advocated for the uh, extrajudicial like, killing in of people involved with this. Patriot Park. And then the same thing sort of, you know, continued for for like ever. It seems weird to choose this moment right now. Like, oh, this is a breakdown. Like, no, dude, this is this is business as usual. We just have fucking smartphones to record it. Absolutely. So, uh. Send me, can you repeat the reading and like who's it by? Uh, it's an Afro pessimist. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's more so like a just an can entire you... school of thought. Yeah, really, yeah, really useful. And, uh, school who is it by? Encountered. Uh, one that one that I that I tend to uh, author that I like a lot is uh is Sexton. Wait, so there are multiple authors that have like different interpretations of this work. No, no, there. It's a it's a critical framework of that goes about describing like particularly society or whatever, but uh, more so black people in how we are, how we fit into the socio political landscape, right? Oh, okay. So it's a theory. Um, then who was the the person who you recommended that or read works from? Oh God. Well, some people some people disagree with this or not, but my first. My first one I would say would be would be Fanon. I would go with uh, Black Skin, White Mass, All right? And then we and then one that is that's specifically a particularly that touches on the specific thing that I said is um, Orlando Patterson's uh, Slavery and Social Death, a con a comparative study. Yeah, it's pathetic. Which, to be fair, I have I, I haven't How finished. How embarrassing! Uh, I haven't finished or Patterson's. Okay, hopefully I could get them. Uh, when I'm bringing up civil society, though, uh, we could even just do a comparative look between the United States, other Western countries, as well as Syria, Libya. And I think it's, it's pretty clear that when that happens, when people do start resorting to violence and believe that violence is the answer, that's when the breakdown of civil society. So. Like the government that is oppressing its people, yes, fascism, that's not the breakdown of civil society. Civil society is when the populations start mistrusting each other, when we start cutting our own throats and going at each other, civil war, insurgencies, yeah, et cetera, et cetera.
But I'll so, definitely take the I'll look at the works that you mentioned. Thank you. So I'm I'm gonna check out for the night. Uh, it was a pleasure, mostly a pleasure, uh, <laughs> talking to all of you. Um, thanks, Irene, for having me. Um, check out Post Post Revolution if you want to see some more of my hot takes and uh, me joking around with friends. Um, I, you know, I, I know I slung some hot takes here. I don't think they were completely accurately represented, but I appreciate the conversation nonetheless. It was coward, fun. coward thanks for you know having fun together. Hey, thanks for coming by uh, with that hand grenade. Like, the... <laughs> apparently, was, what we needed. It was apparently, what we needed. Um, yeah, everybody, uh, uh, check thank out. You, thank you, Irene. Thank you. Yeah, it was a lot of... check out check out Kenny and um, you know. Nah, he's a he's a larp. Uh, check out the Twitter, uh, like you said. Uh, check out the podcast for sure. And uh, yeah, thanks for um, coming uh, by here with those takes and Bye. making me realize that we had more to disagree about than than I thought. So. Uh... God, I, I, I was I mean? Was I mean? Rip. I I was. No, Let's I was mean. No, actually, actually, here's no, the No, Irene, I think you're I, too I nice. I would just I, like I, to I say tag. So tag, I'm it. Um, oh yeah, Danabo, I'm gonna bring you in. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's uh, BTF uh, ode. I don't even know what I was gonna say, Danabo. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us uh, today. Uh, we're having a completely normal one here, and uh, you know everything's just kind of chill. Uh, how are you doing? I'm good. I've been listening. Uh, Oh, yes, that one brought you in a little earlier. So just so everybody knows, Kenny did mention that he might have to check out early. So I don't, I don't think this is like a, you know, this is a, don't anybody characterize this as a rage quit. Because, you know, I know there's going to be a lot of a lot of speculation. But Kenny did mention, Kenny does have the alibi of having mentioned to me earlier that he might not be here the whole time. So I yeah. get it. I get it. Yeah, It was a really calm rage quit if it was. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty calm. Yeah, it seemed <clears throat> <laughs> planned. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's. Uh, Wow! Wow! Um, it, so, uh, Danabo, do you uh, do you want to get in on this? Uh, let's first let's do your intro because we haven't done that yet. Uh, I'm Danabo, um, the legitimate debate bro on the panel now. Uh, there we go. Um, I don't need an introduction. I'm coming here with some questions for Demon Mama and Senpai Chow. Okay. Okay. Do you agree with the goals of Antifa to be violent resistance against fascists? Wait, but that's not the goals of, of of Antifa. That's not the only goals of Antifa. Not the and, only goal. It no, is the goal no. of Antifa, right? It's it, in fact it, that's that's hardly character characterization of, of Antifa. Antifa as a creed no, and as an ideology. No, actually, no, no, and, no, 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 no. Excuse me. Are, you asked me a question. Are you going to let me finish, or are you just going to continue immediately interrupting oh, me after the question you asked? Let's just define Antifa. Is it? Yeah, a hey, violent group against talking, fascism, right? Are you talking about Antifa? No, that's not true at all. Right? That's that is a part of Antifa for sure. There we go. So when we say Antifa, Diana, but when you say Antifa, you mean anti-fascist in general, right? Because there's not like an organization, there's not like a membership card. George Soros isn't like out there, you know, cutting checks, right? So you mean you you're I talking mean, about anti-fascism writ large, right? I mean, historically, the the groups described as themselves as Antifa are violent opposition to. Fascism. Yeah, yeah, but it's not. It's a like as a like, that's like saying civil rights. Do you believe in what civil rights is doing? And it's like you know, there's a whole bunch of different people fighting for civil rights, right? No, Antifa no, no. Is like a cause or anti-fascism is a cause, not a not not a group. There are a bunch of groups that identify with this cause. There's a bunch of groups that have very different strategies for achieving that cause. But um, it's not like uh, just so people you know understand because sometimes like it gets reduced down with the way that like you know Trump and people like that will talk about it. So so we're, we are talking about like anti-fascism writ large, right? Not like one specific. You're not because if you were said like my phrase, city, centralized or decentralized city. as a group, Antifa are violent opposition to fascism. No, that's not true. Really. You are patently wrong there because if the history of anti-fascism. Well, then you need to look up Antifa. You're wrong about you. Stuff. I like don't don't fucking. You're doing the condescending thing already. It's it's really funny. Like this is all that you guys have is like this this like this like pathetic condescension anti-fascist antifa refers to anti-fascist action there are yeah. literally many many and schools I, excuse me excuse me oh okay violent. i see i see your angle here so you ask a question and immediately interrupt the answer and then just say whatever the fuck you want over it it's right no historically no no, no. wait a minute there are wait a second there are both violent and non-violent and anti-fascist action. In fact, there are many okay. schools of anti-fascist thought. Some of which, violence, some of which are are wholly, um, are wholly non-violent. Now, if you want to ask me now, whether, I, excuse me, wait, uh, 
like is this like is this your idea of like some kind of a like gotcha this is like hilariously embarrassing can the, you answer the question wait wait are you gonna let me answer it or are you just gonna keep interrupting and saying the same you thing agree over again? with the violent side of antifa is it i mean yes no? broadly i can't say i can't say there are some absolutely there are some forms of, of violent anti-fascism that i 100 percent agree with for example okay. uh the type of um like violent anti-fascist action that i that i believe is like you know fighting the nazis that was a great type of anti-fascist action that was there very violent on. for sure there are some forms that i agree but that doesn't mean that i canonically agree with every single school of anti-fascism that's like such an a, like a ridiculous framing of the question the idea that i have to like blanketly agree with every single violent anti-fascist that's ever existed no i think no, that there you are people boil it down to its simplest terms so what no no you really do not say. that's no no you Anyone don't say it, you absolutely you do not you do not have to turn you do not have to turn you do not have to turn nuanced political discussion into dummy brain spectacle for whatever you gotcha did. that you want to get you absolutely do not you can you literally in fact that's a historical it's a historical you are representing so a historical, historical by saying anti for aren't violent wait no violent. i absolutely i absolutely am not i am literally there is an ant there is a literally, non uh, excuse me excuse to. me you're you are you are antifa, patently, violent opposition to fashion no it is That's, not that is yeah. not what antifa is you are just lying to your own audience if you you don't know shit about the history of antifa if you don't know that there are enormous non-violent non-violent anti-fascist action hey, hey. Uh, this is so dumb like this is embarrassing being condescending Whatever you just said, both of you, uh, whatever you what that went on, I muted, and I just let everybody know that what we're going to do from now on is when we're talking about the movement writ large of anti-fascism, we're going to say anti-fascism. When we're talking about an individual group, like for instance, Rose City Antifa, if you want to say something about a you know a group, identify the group, just so that we know who we're talking about, and we're not just kind of like you know like we got to get deeper than like bumper stickers here, right? Um. Yeah. I mean, am I unmuted or? You're you're all unmuted. I'm so okay. sorry. I had to. Do that. I no, just no. To like, I mean, it's just, that, it's that just. I I just feel like it's really, really, um, like like embarrassing and bad faith to come in and be like, hey, give me an answer. And then when I say, hey, that's not representative of like what you're claiming, what you're baking into the question that you're asking, the bias that you're baking into it is not actually accurate. And then I give you an answer and you don't like it to say that I didn't give you an answer. I gave you a very straightforward answer. And also the idea that there isn't nonviolent Antifa is just patently false. You are just simply wrong about that. In fact, many, many- I would like you to replay the bit of the VOD where I said there wasn't. I'm wait, wait, no, no, no. For a violent opposition to Fascism, no, yes that, no, but that's yes, not no. true. That's like saying, it wait, wait a minute. True. That's like saying it's actually that, true. No, that's not Where true. Oh my God. <laughs> you can't just, you're, you're literally just changing the framing and saying this is true because okay. wait, wait. So wait, would you say, would you say that if any group has ever done violence that you could say historically, they're a violent yeah, group. anti fascist action start where 1920s, 1930s, KPD, Germany, uh, where's the historical use of Antifa? Do you agree? Wait, I'm sorry, what? Can you repeat that? I have no idea what you were saying. You have no idea what Antifa is or where it started. Wait, yes, no, yes, no, I no, literally do. That's fine, that's fine. So do you agree? Wait, 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 me asking for you to repeat the question? Look at this. This is so hilariously bad faith. You're so mad that I don't know if it's like your boy got blown out on here by me, but you can't even let me like, like if I ask, hey, sorry, I didn't my hear boy. the question. I don't think they're together. I don't think they're, they're my boy, very different. I don't ideologies. agree with Antifa. No, yeah, yeah, I, I have yeah, no yeah. agreement with Antifa. I don't agree oh, with Antifa. No, 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 we're talking about K Kenny. We're talking, uh, yeah. Demon Mama's thinking that Kenny and you are like, you know. I don't know this guy is i just think you're, you're being ridiculous wait wait, wait, actually that, put, wait what's ridiculous come on Nazi. let's be real here you what's ridiculous asking me a question a and I then can absolutely 100 percent justified punching a nazi if you say it doesn't look good or it looks bad and you're not being politically savvy fuck him i'll punch a nazi fuck it Wait, okay, I don't know what any of that has to do with what we were talking about. There are, anti-fascism yeah. is an enormous movement. There have been sections, there have been groups of anti-fascists in the past who have been violent. There are and currently are and have been historically many groups of anti-fascists who are specifically anti uh, uh, non-violent. And that, and saying that, oh, historically Antifa is like, a, is a violent group literally plays into Trump-esque like uh, uh, propaganda about trying to completely, to take an entire polit political philosophy and say historically it's this when that isn't actually true and it's patently false in fact literally there are anti-fascist groups operating in this 
city that I'm that I'm here that are in their entire purpose is just delivering food because they believe that pro providing for the material conditions of those in needs prevents them from falling into radicalization and helps communities um, be more resistant to uh, the violence of fascists. I also happen to believe in that idea. But that, but I also believe that there are times where violent anti-fascist resistance is required and important. That doesn't mean that the entirety of 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 Antifa is it can be uh, ahistorically revisionist, like like uh, just <laughs> historical revisionism. You can just say whatever you want okay, about it. So you agree with Kenny then? Okay. No, I do. wait, wait, <laughs> do, wait. Come on, this is so unbelievably, this is so unbelievably silly, right? Like to make that claim. Like, can you even? Can you even like? Can you even steel man my position at all here? You're okay sometimes with violence against fascist groups. Okay, yeah. Well, no? yeah, yeah. And yeah, there's and there's Kenny a thing said, called right? wait, wait. There's this. No, that's not what Kenny said. Did you watch this at all, or are you just yeah, coming here I was to watching wait, wait, thing. wait? I know quick he question. Was being a bit hyperbolic. But wait, wait. Quick question. Justification is there was a fascist, and that's justification. Wait, that but that but that is very different. What you're saying right now is is the like the bad faith like crater brain version of like saying sometimes there is a time and place where violence is necessary and justified and then you go well I guess then violence then whenever Kenny's you place. want is justified. That was Kenny's place. That, that was, was not Kenny's, Kenny's point. That was different. not Kenny's point. And again, uh, like. I mean I think it was. You I think, think Kenny's point was anytime, anywhere, right? Is that right, Demon Mama? Is that what you um, got? Uh, listen, Kenny's I can try like... and, and steal man Kenny's point, which is, yes, that it does not matter. I mean, he literally multiple times says that people die every day in response to whether I asked him if people dying is a bad thing or a good thing. His response was that. If I'm going to steal man and be as charitable as I can to Kenny's position, his argument was that Perhaps. that violence, violence on be that, like, anti-fascists doing violence or not even necessarily an anti-fascist because we don't yet know about the portland guy um but anybody who does violence against a right wing person is okay because uh because they do violence anyway that is the that is the argument that he was making that is not the argument that i would make at all that is like not even uh, in the realm so in order for you to come to that con condition from words that i have said on here not just making up your imaginary opponent that you want to debate with like you just made an imaginary one with Kenny. Wait, it's, I just said I'm going to do my best to charitably you, approach his argument know, based on I what he like said. Him, as far as Kenny's wait, concerned, no, I did no, not. No, wait, no, wait, wait, no, wait a minute. Go watch the VOD. People was, watch the VOD. On. This is so. This is like. This like is the, like insanity. I would. I would hold on. I think. I think that. Okay, so I think that. Is this real? What Danimo is saying is like the like the only thing there is like there's a. There's just different context or matter of degrees, right? Where you would be okay with with like punching an individual Nazi. Kenny it seemed to be okay, say like, hey, let's just hit it right at the source. Let's just get rid of these groups, like by any means necessary. And to him, as a person who's generally just kind of opposed to violence in a political realm, like in general, he's like, it, to him, he, he feels like there's like that like that degree there is they're so close together that it makes no sense for you guys to quibble. Is that is that what is what is happening, Annabelle? Yep. Yep. Wait. So you think you think that my position of saying that there are circumstances where violent resistance to fascists is important is the same thing as saying that Patriot Prayer should be targeted and extrajudicially killed, which is what, which is, mind you, it literally, uh, I have literal clips in my chat right now of. Do you believe they're a of, fascist group? Wait, do I believe that they're a fascist group? I mean, I believe they have fascist leanings for sure. Do I think they're dangerous? For sure. That doesn't mean I believe they should be exterminated. So at what point would you believe they'd be exterminated? At what point? I mean, do I don't tend to argue for extermination. Like, I would argue that if there's, like, if they attack, like, you fight, you defend yourself. I think that um, that should some of them who are planning attacks be, like, imprisoned in this case? I mean, given our current justice system, sure. If we're talking about a future where we have a reformed justice system, do I think that they should um, be, uh, be like, for example, given acts, like, like perhaps arrested and given access so you, to, like, like, what are you asking here? So you're here? completely against are you completely against violent action? No, as, uh, no. Means... I've literally said this. How many times do I have to say that? No, absolutely not. No, I just don't you think. Just said... No. Wait a minute. Are you like like what is this? Like listen, this genuinely? This is again, genuinely. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Listen, this is Matt. No, wait, 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 wait. Calm it down Let and me. Listen. No. Calm it down and listen. No, no. Hold on a second. A Let me do this because okay, this has been this has been okay. an entire discussion where repeatedly in this discussion people have 
not actually either asked me for my opinion, then immediately contradicted the words that literally just came out of my mouth, or have completely invented something that I've said that, that apparently I hold, which I do not hold, and is not even close to a position that I've hold. You are doing okay, this right now. You'd imprison them. Wait, if in the case of... If they were planning an attack, yeah. If they were yeah, planning an attack. Or if yeah, attack, okay, sure. Could, yeah, then, absolutely. Then like, really sure, if you have Patriot okay, so Prayer... Then, wait, if you think Patriot... If Patriot so let Prayer... Me finish, okay. okay, all right, try. So let me finish, right? So you can imprison them if they're planning an attack, or you could violent resist it, violently resist if they were being violent. Is there any point that they weren't being violent that you would be violent uh, first? Is there any point that you would do the first attack? Um, Not that I can think of. Like, okay. no, I mean, yeah. no, I mean, if they were, if there was well, like, for some, for some people, there is, there's a point. Yeah. But, so but, but again, what different. you're doing right now is you're reframing the argument that I had with Kenny in a, in, and saying that Kenny said different things, because first of all, it's kind of funny that you won't actually take your position on this and instead trying to use like a puppet, um, and misrepresenting uh, what was actually, what no was violence. actually said, wait, position. I was, I was in the middle of explaining against all forms of violence. Okay. Well, so that's right now. I wouldn't take So that's fine. Wait, that's fine. Really like, dangerous. I, I think you said something really dangerous that we have to be careful about. So you said that to some people that. Uh, there is a line in which they have to defend themselves, even though there has been no acts committed by other people. No, this you're not. The same exact These people are ridiculous. Policemen are using when it comes to warrior training. The it's Mayo sex have like a hard on for me. You. This is why every single time, whenever there's going to be a person who is dealing with the cops, that they don't do anything. Just the the inkling that they, there's a possibility that they could ever do something like that is leading these cops to take the extraordinary actions of killing these people because it's kill or be killed. Correct. This is the same exact logic that insurgents would be using, like yeah. Kenny. We That's don't what people know. think. Yeah, if someone's going to reach for a gun, you're going to have to kill them before they get to their gun, right? That's the logic. So you are you. so so. So would you be defending uh, the the people who are committing to warrior training for the cops? I wouldn't make that logical leap. If someone's reaching for a gun, I'd let them shoot me. That's my position. If they're going to be violent, they're going to be violent. That's my personal position. But other people have different opinions and things. Okay. If someone's going to yeah, reach yeah. for a gun, they might shoot them. So I'm going to have to stop our uh, roll really quick right now. Uh, Orb, lady, Orb Lady's got to um, do some stuff. Uh, I wanted you to go ahead and uh, give your commercial. Tell us what you got on the um, burner and anything else you want to uh, talk about. Yeah, so um, still continuing ta talking about American labor history. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt that spicy chat. I just really kind of need to I go. You. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, ah, but um, yeah, so I, I, I do politics. I do um, leftism, leftist action. If anyone wants to ask me how to register to vote, how to get involved in local politics, um, get involved in community action, working with groups. Uh, I think to, he lives here in the U.S. Um, work with unhoused people to work with uh, other uh, other actions. Please hit me up. Come follow me. We have some fun, too. I like to hula hoop. I'm fun. A lot sometimes like irene i know irene's a lot more fun but you can settle for me sometime hey, i'm sure you got a so. hula hoop i got a trampoline i mean i think yeah. i think it's the same energy same energy i fucking love orb lady you, your energy <laughs> inspires me and i want to i'm going to try to catch one of those sunday uh, what time on sunday or is it um, does it vary it's 4 p.m i should be at 4 p.m i've been pretty good about keeping up with my sleep schedule so sometimes i'm late sometimes i'm like a little bit early i'm but never don't. late <laughs> right, uh, never never late yeah. but yeah no totally totally does that's, anybody uh, have that's any awesome. 4 PM gifted Eastern, sub you mean, right? bits donuts uh, anything central, anybody I'm who sorry, can spare it in, uh central so don't put yourself in danger but if you've got them shoot them my way because Eastern. i'm doing heavy work today holy shit oh, right now 4 p.m it's like 5 it's p.m five. Eastern. yeah yeah i was doing and the then, math before i got here that's why i was late too so and then 2 p.m pacific okay okay so that, that's mm -hmm. like and then the mountain obviously is a you care i was going to say one uh yeah me Irene's math is, is very sus. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us here at the last moment. Sorry to hit you up with a request at the last moment. I'm glad you could come here. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate your takes. Yeah. And um, Thank you very yeah. much for the gifted sub, Gina Ragnos. Thank blade, you so much. Already. What are you doing? Bye. 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 Everybody here knows that it's not just people picking up guns that are being that, that are leading to their deaths from policemen. It's them turning their backs not violent it's them just police not being able to see because it's dark because Dabs. they don't know it's pe it's people running away because they don't want to get caught these are non-violent acts and they're still getting shot this is what happens this is what happens thank you so much when for civil society sub, breaks Gina. down when we start don't trusting each other all of a sudden we're 
all of a sudden the Leviathan's gone. We're stuck in this Hobbesian reality in which it's eat or be eaten. It's live or die. You are all, everybody else, I can't trust because I don't have any perfect information. Therefore, the way for me to survive is to actually kill you all. This is the same exact logic that Kenny is taking in that we can't do anything against these groups. There's no way that we can change their minds. There's also also no way that we can even win against them hey, because Marcus they are Lennon, fascists, good to see you. because they are going to be using these tactics, whether they're using it oh, or that's not. that's cool, Victoria. The option, the result is their deaths for no Almost, it doesn't even matter what the reason is. This is what happens when civil society breaks down. This is what happens when insurgents try to motivate themselves as well as give themselves their logic. It's, it's this realist security dilemma that they're stuck in, that they have to protect themselves. You can't trust no one. And that's it. Death everywhere. Is that the society that you want to live in? I just believe this is a mischaracterization. It was specific. No, it's not. Against Patriot Prayer, far right white nationalist group. I don't know if you want to wait, characterize wait, that as all conservatives. Yeah, but... the day Quick that question, I Danibu. actually meet you, I'm going to go up to you. I'm going to say, I'm Patriot Prayer. I'm going to give you a gun in a game. And you have a choice to kill me, We're, even if I don't do anything, just because I said that I'm a part of Patriot Prayer. Does that any justification to the death of me? Um, from my immorality, no. I wouldn't kill anyone. Okay, so wait. This is the thing. This is a question I have for Danabo. Danabo, um, you're, you have stated here that you, you believe in a pacifistic solution. Like, you have stated here, and I'm going to take you that you actually do believe this. You might be... Oh, if we're going to go to my views, yeah. Violence well, yeah, okay, violence, so, but, but then yeah. why are you trying to argue and misrepresent what Kenny actually said? This is why when I started this conversation, I said your boy Kenny. Because what it sounded like is that you were trying to put on a Kenny mask and continue Kenny's arguments while not actually holding that position for yourself. I was trying to listen to him and see what he was saying. Wait, it's I tried to listen to him as well, and when I asked him direct questions, he gave me answers like i don't care because he was being it's a joke wait wait oh, so but then so he was being a dumb fuck so your argument is that he was being a dumb fuck. bad faith <clears throat> some people just aren't made for that kind of a line of attack and well then he like maybe he maybe if he's not he made his point listen if I, he's not prepared I, to 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 defend coming on a public platform on twitch coming onto no comment chick show and advocating for the extrajudicial extermination of a political group, maybe he shouldn't say that if he's not prepared to defend that position at all. And I don't understand why don't you would come in here and then put on the Kenny mask and then try to then also not only just play as a as like a Kenny role, but also misrepresent what he actually said in the beginning of the argument. Usually what happens because when there you, was a point you can't defend usually what happens when you can't defend your point, when you can't argue against the other side, and that your hey, argument thank you for the gift has of subs. Thank you so much. You, yield. you say you so much. I was wrong, I agree with you now, because your what you're saying is a lot more logical, is a lot more rational. I've been convinced. The thing this is the problem just with politics in general when it comes to opinion is that nobody has the ability to fucking change their mind and it's people like kenny that fucking unravel my fucking brain because demon mama and i have been giving him every single argument that unravels his logic but he's like i'm not going to listen to you i'm not going to listen to you oh oh do you ask me if I even yeah. listened to anything that you said no i didn't get a single thing Pompo's this the guy best is a thing. fucking lost cause Think. Yeah, I do find it pretty hard to engage with someone when I ask, "Hey, can you re um, can you reframe your argument?" And the response is, "Do you even have one?" And I'm just like, "Okay, so you're not engaging in good faith. Then I have no obligation to engage in good faith, and I will tell him exactly what I think about his absolutely dangerous, damaging, and moronic opinion in my uh, of of coming on a platform and advocating for the extermination of a group." In this political atmosphere, no less. Now, if you want to, if you want to, if we wanted to get back to this and actually talk about what actually happened in Portland, I think it's really hard to make any argument as to whether it was justified or not. Yes, there was a Trump rally going on, which is absolutely unjustified. A, a group of trucks drove through downtown Portland, terrorizing people, paintballing people. Numerous videos of people drive by bear macing innocent protesters, and then also the Patriot Prayer was on. On on um, on on site to provide.
outside intimidation factor. However, that doesn't mean that I think just because they're there being intimidated and armed that a guy deserves to be gunned down. We have the only video we have. It's really hard. It's it's I've watched a lot of this. I've actually done my best to see, hey, what the hell is actually going on here? And it's really hard to tell what actually happened. For all we know, the guy who killed this guy could have just been an, a personal enemy. And then you're going to come on here and have people like Kenny calling themselves leftists saying, yeah, the best thing this leftist did is to is to kill the Patriot prayer guy. A another quote that he did. So that to me, that's like, wait a minute. You don't even know the facts of this situation. How what who how dare you stand on the corpses of, of, of people who've been killed by right wing groups to make a stupid argument that we've just talked about how there's very, very little facts. And keep in mind, I literally and we would have gotten to this if there had been any attempt to engage in good faith. I literally agree that the status quo in our in our country right now is incredibly violent to marginalized people. Incredibly violent. In fact, again, I say this again for the third time this stream. That is what my platform is desert is devoted to. I spend my time passionately calling out the violence that the system enacts on marginalized people in this country. And it is a, it is like just offensive to me when someone comes on here from the comfort of their home and tries to advocate that we should escalate violence further or that we should blanketly um that we should blanketly support someone where the facts aren't even there for all you know literally for all we know out of this situation that guy could have been another right winger that just killed another right winger we don't even know right now and the guy was just executed by the police so we might never know so how stupid is it to come on a public platform and advocate in defense of a guy where there's no evidence you know jack shit about them in, a, in an environment where escal violence is constantly escalating and marginalized people such as myself are the ones who are on the line, are the ones who are most likely to be attacked at random? How dare you come on here and then follow that up with advocating for extermination? Come on, this is silly. I don't feel like I have any right to treat this with kindness or kitty gloves or anything. And if that if that puts me if that makes me a you know an angry SJW or whatever stupid bullshit people want to make me out to be, then so be it. The real victim of this kind of logic, as well as the arguments that Kenny was making, is the left. I'll check that because out after someone's going to click this and send this to Fox News and they're going to say this is what the left is saying. Yep. Every single time when there's an insurgency that comes from the left, even if their motives are whatever, even if you agree with them, blah, 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 I am blah, so blah, mad right now. What it's really affecting is 100 the ability mauled. for the entire movement, for the entire ideology. Oh, Marxist Leninist. Forward. Um because these yeah, there's the there's a link right here. Of events, this um, kind of Kenny said that he believed the Patriot Pair should be them. exterminated. This has been the history of the left movement. The grander take that I got from this, like from a macro view, is that, and I think despite what he said about the specific situation or the group that he, that he spoke of, despite any just you know non-specific to any of, the, of those justifications that uh that seem to have been made <clears throat> is that this has already been a one-sided war it's been waged in one direction for decades and it True. seems like it only becomes a problem it only becomes escalation when it is starts starts to ha happen in both directions when it becomes a two-way street is only when it becomes a problem that's not like that's not no, even... no, no, no 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 for the for the past like so many months that that um ever since ever since George Floyd was ruthlessly killed everybody on this okay most people on the left on this platform have been talking about like how this is an issue how there needs to be reform how we can't let this slide by okay there's nobody here is backpedaling nobody here is contradicting nobody here is saying this is now a problem because we're starting to do it now what we're doing is holding ourselves as well as the other side to the same standard because when we don't we become the hypocrites when we don't we become our own evil selves when we don't then we become the monsters okay you want to be the change that you want to see do it but i mean also there's this other thing which is is Again, and and I don't I'm, I don't think you're doing this intentionally, Carpe Pax. But the idea that like um, me that me saying like, hey, 
I don't think that advocating for extrajudicial killings is the right answer to this kind of um to this kind no, of. Oh, I don't think it is either. Well, I yeah, I, okay. I so then, but you can admit then that like like being me being framed as someone who's defending a right winger, I'm not defending a right winger. I'm simply saying that um maybe like an extrajudicial killing on the streets is not a good tactic for us to take if it can be avoided and we don't sure. even know like it is very possible that this was perfectly within self-defense i literally said that in my opening statement so it's possible it was self-defense but we don't know and we don't have that facts and what we should be focusing on in my opinion is not whether or not like it was a good thing that the patriot prayer guy got killed but why the fuck the police just executed the suspect who hasn't been tried in court why is yeah. that happening? Now, that is something that I would say there. That is the state. That is agents of the state enacting violence on a on a on a uh, somebody who's been rumored to be anti-fascist. That is what we should be focusing on. You can't like in my mind, it is really irresponsible to mush like all the factions and all of the groups together into one big cloud that just says the right wing. And that's how you and and. This is as somebody who spends my entire life criticizing the right wing. You can't just mush everyone into it because if you do that, you weaken your own arguments, you weaken your own uh, your own fight for justice. And keep in mind, again, I will repeat once again, I am not somebody who is, a, I am not a pacifist. I don't believe that we should lay down and be passive. But what I do believe is that if we are going to engage in violence because of the stakes, because we have an entire state and media apparatus against us, when we engage in violence, we need to do so very responsibly. We can't do so in a way where it will backfire and lead to, to the deaths of many people who all of us, and I will call myself, you know, that I will I will call myself in here out on here we're all just twitch streamers so who the fuck are any of us to sit back and be like oh this or that or the other thing when there's real human lives on the line I don't know like I mean I do believe it is possible that I could become the victim of violence I live in an area where there has been an incredible amount of random sporadic terroristic violence from right wingers I literally live in the city where Chaz Chop happened I live in Seattle like hello like but but let's be real here like we're not the ones who are going to have to pay the price for this so if if I'm going to make a claim like something like violence is it might be justified as a form of self defense as a form of community defense I'm going to make sure I actually have that argument and not just make stupid LARP statements so that's like you know not to tie it all around but that's that's the thing so i no, hate I, being characterized as some kind of pacifist in that way okay i i i i respect that and i agree um i think the thing that that bums me out about Thanks, this whole Marcus thing Leninist. is that this these events uh especially the retaliation from against the patriot prayer guy it gives the ammun ammunition to two groups that have been working against us for for forever the right and the center it gives ammunition to the to the people wielding the horseshoes yeah i mean you say gives, that we're just like the right it gives ammunition to the the, the i mean you, you look at kind of how this conflict would play out like I, I feel like some people assume that it would be like all right well if we if you know the left full-on engages the right and you know as has been pointed out the right's been killing us right like that has happened 100 um, percent. left you know full-on engages with that with with like meets that with equal force we're not just going to be fighting the right. We're going to be fighting the cops. They they have made no secret about what side that they come down on. That is not a battle that we can win. The only way that we can win is when we have the kind of unity that we did when these protests started, where, where there were people that didn't understand Black Lives Matter before, wouldn't ever say Black Lives Matter, who, who were like on board. Like we have to, like winning the public's uh, support through presenting ourselves as the unambiguous side of justice. Um, is crucial to any success. We we will we cannot take them in a physical battle without having like just like you know huge numbers on our side. Because yeah, they have the guns, they have the cops. Hell, they have the state. And so, they'll just like, accuse us of pushing the pendulum. They'll accuse us of pushing the pendulum. Yeah, just swinging it back. You know. Yeah, like yeah. Balance well, back and forth. You know, they, they don't have. They don't seem to need a justification. Like you know, when it comes to like killing, you know, anti people on the anti-fascist side. You know, that's that's a slam dunk. All they need is a little bit of, uh, you know, something to 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 I'm gonna read go that off on okay. us, right? It, it's it's and and you know, as bad as the violence has been against those of us in marginalized groups, um, each. We're talking about war at, the, at that point. And that's the thing that I don't think that anybody in this country is ready for, at least, if, and if anybody is, 
it's the hard right, right? If anybody's mobilized, if anybody's, you know, set up for that sort of thing, it's the cops and the hard right. Well, that's so, the meme. A fascist worked out today. Did you? Yeah, there yeah. you go. There you go. Uh, somebody in my chat uh, just said something that I found, um, you know, pretty uh, like that sums up this conversation pretty well, which is the optics, like the idea that the optics are inherently against us. So let's just forget entirely about optics or, or strategy in that case um, is just not a good argument and it will lead to failure. And if like like the, the a, 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 I genuinely believe that like. When we are approaching politics, we have to take this really seriously. We do not have, as people who are are on sort of the uh, the the side that has taken a lot of losses um, unjustly over many years, and and many many people have died in the name of 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 a more just society. We don't have the luxury to just be flippant. We don't have the luxury to just say fuck it and just be wild. And I just don't think that's going to lead to um like we're we're aiming like most. I don't know about everybody on here. I don't know everybody's per like exact um depth like like political ideology or whatever. But I can say that I'm I'm gonna guess it's probably a more complicated and more just society than the one that, that currently exists. You know, and if that's the case, if that's the case, like we can't afford to be to have no nuance. We can't afford to approach this with black and white thinking. We just can't. We we really cannot. And that doesn't mean that you can like uh outright um, you know, just say, ah, fuck it. I'm mad. That means I'm just going to, you know, go, I'm going to just jokerfy and do whatever, because then you end up with the joker situation. It's like, great. Sure. You just caused senseless chaos. Was it for a purpose? Did it do anything? Did you accomplish anything with it? Like you just I turned mean, thousands of people away from our cause. That yes, that's a that is a potential risk, and I don't believe that we need to play like I am. I am strictly not an assimilationist. I don't believe that like trans people or or marginalized people need to like blend in or whatever. But when we're talking about a moment of this intensity, where we're standing on the precipice of of who knows maybe four years of actual fascism, like who knows? We are in a wild state that we can't afford to take these questions lightly and just hand wave things and be frivolous and make stupid comments in public. It's incredibly damaging. And I would, and I levy this accusation at other people. I mean, I spend like a bunch of my time fucking accusing liberals of doing the same thing, of 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 downplaying the eviction crisis, of of being disgustingly cruel to homeless people. Like, I mean, there's all kinds of examples of this. But we on the left, like anybody who claims to be a leftist, anybody who's claiming to advocate for leftism, or even just for a more just world, cannot afford to just jokerfy and say fuck it. We can't afford to do that. It seems to be every single time there's a step forward for the left movement, it takes two steps back on its own. Of course, this has been heavily influenced by what has been the status quo that is capitalism. Demon, what Demon Mama says is right. We do have to be incredibly careful if you do want to move forward with your ideology, especially when you're playing the under God. Even though, even though you may believe that what you are saying is right, that doesn't mean that everybody else is going to suddenly adopt what you're thinking is. Like actual pragmatic change, social change throughout the world is a lot more difficult than anybody can claim to say. This has, what we are living in has been, is the culmination of thousands of years of human behavior and development. This is what we're going up against. Yep. I mean, um, and uh, Chow, to your point, like, you know, in terms of um, the the d d dissolution of uh, liberal democracy, in terms of the you know return to a, a Hobbesian state, like, I would say that that is to some degree like the natural course of events. That is going to happen. We do have to prepare for the eventuality. Of, of of liberal democracy, liberal capitalism, like disguised as democracy, collapsing, right? And no, I mean, no. Like, I, I don't think we can just hold it forever, like, right? Like, it, you know, that there there are times in which, especially when you it's set up on a system that's unsustainable, eventually that system is going to fall. I don't think that time has to be now, and I don't think that encouraging that to happen sooner is is smart. So, so like, I do agree with you. Like in terms of the action step, I mean, I but I also do uh, take this these events 
as a signal that we do need to get more organized. We do need to get more serious on the left. We do need to prepare for, you know, maybe having to take some kind of defensive violence. But the key to that being defensive, the key to that being not looking like, not acting like, not thinking like monsters. All right. Now, like, let, let's not get this. I'm not trying to make an equivalence here and saying that, like, you know, oh, we could easily become just as bad as there. I don't think that's true. I think they're the rhinoceros in this INESCO play. And, and that's, you know, th there, there's that's I'm unambiguous about that. But I feel like the easier it is for most people to pick us out from the rhinoceros. Anyway, if anybody doesn't know this reference, it's a play uh, where people were turning into rhinoceroses and it, a yeah, lot of people think it's too. a metaphor for fascism, from. right? Baby, that like they're turning into a rhino is like becoming, you know, uh, becoming fash. Like um, we, we've got to, we've got to make sure that we don't look like rhinos, right? Cause you know, then the, then the person like is going to, you know, it, it's, it's just going to become confusion and we will devolve into what you're talking about that Hobbesian state with, you know, no Leviathan with a monopoly of, of power and uh, if anything, the power is on the other side right now. This is not our time to like rush headlong into the fucking breaches, right? We we th this is not something that we can win right now. Yeah. We need to consolidate our troops. We need to consolidate people's hearts. We need to give people courage and strength. There's so much consciousness building that needs to be done before anything like a revolution can happen and end up with a positive result instead of just like plunging us headlong into a, a worse situation. So yeah, I mean, it, God, it's, it's, it is complex. It yeah. Is I think complex. these are, com I mean, again, we are, we're not just like, like people on the left aren't just struggling against and a, a political opponent you're not just having a debate on a stage with some random political opponent we're going against the 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 literal powers that control most of the wealth in the world most of the military power in the world this is a very real thing and if you look at the history of leftism especially especially in the united states there are a lot of people who have died just for stepping forward and speaking up and that is something we need to take very seriously now i'm not saying that that should lead you to be cowardly however it should mean that you need to be courageous and intelligent otherwise we lose and people continue to die and the status quo perpetuates itself. The fire is relinked and it goes on and on and on. Um, and I, I don't think, I don't want that to happen. I would like us to actually be able to succeed. I would like us to stop killings, to save lives and not to, uh, you know, and again, I just think, I just think, again, I, I think. That leads to a whole other question or host of questions and concerns. Like how do we use the, the, uh, the apparatuses made available to us by the system to organize without putting ourselves and each other at risk. Yeah. I mean, I think there's uh, a, you know, there's a, that's, that's a very tough question to answer. I think there's like, some of it is even beyond what I would be able to add, like be able to effectively advocate for, you know, something that, but again, there are all kinds of, uh, of, of solutions that we can advocate for responsibly um, on a platform here that don't involve, um, again, like, I mean, I don't want to keep going back, but this whole conversation has been predicated on this idea that started out with the idea that like, oh, like extermination, like, you know, like, come on, like, like one yeah, of the, one of the best things. One. Yeah. Like, For sure. um, yeah. Uh, uh, getting some background noise from somebody. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know who it is, but maybe just, if anybody mic. has background mu noise, you you can kind of like what I do is I just mute my mic, like you know, on the on the mic itself. Thank you for the subscription, Catherine. Um, yeah, I, I mean, if 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 it's on uh, your end, you can you can do that. Um, so but I don't think it is a guarantee that civil society is going to break down, and at this this is just speculation. The research that I've done. Just quickly go on Google Images, search up Syrian civil war. This is the this is the result. This well, is what this it's is certainly what not it's certainly like. not in the interest of capitalism for it to break down. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that, yeah. Are, are, you, are, you, are you really, are you really sure about that? Because all of the C because most of the CEOs in the S and P five hundred on this planet are in the United States. Because you don't. This this is what happens. No no. Calm down, calm down. Cap, there's, according to theory, li according to neoliberal theory, one of the conditions that allows <laughs> capitalism to flourish is actually peace, is stability. So like this idea, and 
this idea that like this is already happening within the United States, like sure, we've been taking steps towards the disintegration of civil society. I've been I've been looking at how polarizing we've been getting. We've had a civil war before. There's it's not an impossibility, but this this idea that it's inevitable, I think that's just way too pessimistic. So, so, like. Yeah. It, if you want to, hey, I'm, I'm on board. Like the, being able to defend ourselves, being able right. to have the means to actually go against the system, like that's a okay. But what scares me about that line of logic is that it gives fuel to the people who are actually accelerationists because they're like, oh, if you think it's inevitable, then why not just push it forward, just right. accelerate it, just 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 don't vote Biden. Like yeah, there's yeah. no other possibility. And then. Our end, result, our end result is something like the Syrian civil war. We're, and even though, even th no matter, no matter if you think you're justified or you're just, no matter how good your intentions are, whatever theory you have, the end result is the same. Everybody suffers. Families, children, refugees, migrant crisis, ordinary civilians. Yeah, I, I just think that we should take these sort of um, calculations very seriously and not be careless with them. I do believe that there is a time where sort of, you know, there are there can be times where revolutionary action is your only option, but those come at incredible costs. Yeah. And we need to measure those very, very carefully. We shouldn't be chasing after that kind of future. Like yeah. that's, that's an important thing to like, there may be a situation where we can't stop the dissolution. In fact, if the dissolution is going to happen, very likely there's not a lot that any of us can do to stop that. And we do need to be ready for that eventuality. And what I'm saying, um, Senpai is just in terms of the longer history of, you know, the, the world, the United States and its like dominance over the world, which I guess you could trace back to either World War One or World War Two is, is like where you can no, really end say. end of the Cold War, end of the Cold War. It's end of the Cold been, War? Okay. Yeah. Well, I would say it's definitely end of the Cold War. The upper hand against the Soviet Union, like most of, most of the time. I mean, there was a few years in the, you know, early on that it might have been dicey, but like for, for a lot of the, um you know, Cold War, the Soviet Union was just kind of falling apart and becoming isolated. Um, but what what I'm saying is that, like, you know, the the u s being this hegemon is somewhat of an anomaly. this This is not the, you know, this is not like a, a state that we can take for granted. and and that there, you know, at some point, I think that the day of the u s. will come. I don't think that the United States is going to be like lasting inter you know perpetuity, right? And because of that, mm -hmm. like it's it's all the more reason, like I said, to prepare for what happens if you know that bottom falls out and what we're gonna do if that happens. However, just like Demon Mama says, I am not chasing that future. I am, and just like you said, I don't want to be an. I don't. I want to feed the accelerationists who like want to are just gonna give up on everything and, and say that that's that's how things are gonna go. We'll think about this way. Know, at the same time, I feel like we do we do have to be ready um, for you know what is you know especially with climate change like yeah that crises, wasn't uh, like that wasn't change, edginess that was are the dumb things fuckery. that break down one hundred you know hegemonic stand powers and civil societies like 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 nothing <clears throat> else so like we we do sort of have to have our eye on like if we have to fill a power vacuum and the other option is the right wing filling that power vacuum. What are we going to do so that our efforts aren't seen as a huge failure and a justification to fight leftism for like, you know, hundreds of years? Like that, that, that you know, if, if the is. bottom does drop True, out and boycott. like, you know, somehow it, like some it, like because people think like, oh, well, that's great. You know, ca you know, the, the state falls apart. Uh, capitalism falls apart and the left takes over. Great. Awesome. We won. Right. No, we haven't won. The story is never over. And if we don't have good solutions and we're not ready to jump in there with something that, that can work, then we're going to just be, it, it's going to set the cost back long term. I mean, so yeah, I, mean, I think we do need to get more serious for sure. We're, we're kind of getting um, and, a preview of what happens when a, when a state uh, starts to fail thanks to coronavirus and the, the yeah. economic fallout, right? And you take a look at the statistics. Who is suffering the most? Objectively, it is, it is marginalized groups in this country, specifically when it comes to the disease. Black people in this country are the people who are bearing the brunt of this. 
So we have to take that serious that a collapse of a state does come with great costs, even if it's something that has to be done, even if it's something that is inevitable. We have to address the, the cost of that. And that means that we have to try and answer those downsides to save lives. You know, a, 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 a quote unquote revolution that people talk about isn't isn't just about picking up your Kalashnikov and putting on your Soviet Union Ushanka or whatever. A revolution involves changing the way that we live our lives. It, it involves finding a way to feed people who aren't being fed by the currently existent state. It involves finding a way to deal with the health the healthcare needs of people who are there. Are, 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 if, 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 the, uh, if the United States you know was to just collapse overnight right now and, and everything was to go into chaos, do you know how many trans people just would no longer have the medicine that they need. Do you know how many depress like people who have depression would no longer be able to get access to their medication? It would be a disaster. We have oh, to yeah. confront these things very realistically, and we need to have answers for those because Building otherwise we will fail. Dual power structures, right? Nice. Correct. Yeah. So has this topic gone from uh, fighting fascism to the overthrow of capitalism? To how to survive? Oh, we're not talking about overthrow. We're talking about like, the, the, the failure of an unsustainable system that doesn't have any solution for some of the greatest uh, crises of our times and has shown itself to be anything but durable in the face of those. So, yeah, no, I mean, like, and like I said, like, it's not a, a future that I'm, yep, cha I'm, I'm chasing. I'd much rather get um, where we want to go through not incrementalism yeah, exactly but yeah. um through 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 with with a that's bridge a that's not gonna drop you know disabled trans you know all kinds of people are just just getting dropped off in that in that collapse like right i'd, I'd rather see like a uh you know a, a foundation god i'm just like all about the sci-fi metaphors today i'd rather i'd rather like you know have a foundation in place for when the empire collapses in fact if better yet we could have two and have with with opposite uh focuses right anyway for all the asimov fa fans out there i think you just like may have uh may have just creamed yourselves so irene i was sort of thinking about this yesterday because a viewer of mine uh, proposed this question of like okay what is actually the best form of government what is the best form of political organization yeah we need some and uh, the answer some that we came up anarchist with, chemists uh, social democracy to make safe just looking at everything that's HRT. been tried before there's been smarter people than anybody from back then who kept on theorizing what is the best form of government. Uh, I remember referring to uh, Plato's Republic. Um, yeah, I I think going we could still achieve a social democracy with a revolutionary change in how we live and how we think, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I think the cases that we have right now Scandinavia and Europe, they prove that it will be incredibly difficult for the United States because the conditions here and there are very different when it comes to electoral systems, how the parties are organized, um, if it's proportional it's, it's or first produ producing post, the et cetera, compounds et cetera. These in a are, safe way. But like these are all the things that Dosage we would is, need to first know and understand before we can even think about changing it. Like with some uh, the, the first step to solving a problem with some steps is acknowledging is one acknowledging that there's one and two is understanding every single little detail about that problem and so my largest struggle when it comes to talking about politics on twitter on twitch etc cetera, etc cetera, is that there are so many people out there that one don't understand the the whole flesh about it and two have given up like kenny or like other people who are like i don't i don't fucking care anymore let's just it doesn't matter if they die. That's okay because it, it it's a benefit to my ideology. One more or less of them is a net plus for me. That that stuff scares me because then at that point, that's that's a loss for civil society. That's a loss for the entirety of society. We're going backwards at that time. It's, it becomes a recruitment tool. Yeah, yeah. It's and a it, sort it's, of uh, nihilism. This. this this is how terrorist organizations recruit people. They tell you that there's no other choice, that you have to do this in order to survive, and if you don't, you're going to die. Hey, that's awesome, Victoria. This is what on ISIS HRT. does to people Yay. who have lost their farms, who have lost their livelihoods. It's deranged. Yeah. I will say it's a, a very American position to say, let's wait a couple of years until we fight the Nazis. It's... I mean, <laughs> you're, 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 you're a pacifist, that's a aren't you? That's, that's a good you don't really one. believe in I fighting him, do you? Got him, boys. <laughs> 
but also uh, keep in mind that do uh, the right thing after we extinguished all the other options right i mean all all, all jokes yeah. aside uh all jokes aside i don't think anybody i don't even i don't think anybody on this panel has advocated anything even close to that like i don't believe that we should i believe literally again my platform is devoted to arguing with challenging debunking these these things that's what i can do that's the talent i can do and i think other people should use their talents to fight the rising fascism right now i mean i think it's kind of trite to try and characterize anybody on this panel as being like, oh we should just wait a few years i'm especially somebody who doesn't literally doesn't believe in fighting back against them but um just a joke and i would actually fight back if it came to it it's just morally okay. my position is no violence but okay. obviously um, there comes a point um, where you you have to disregard your morals and fight of course yeah no, definitely okay so so i gotta so so i gotta i gotta jump in okay i gotta jump in with the far left criticism of social democracy okay uh, th those countries you're speaking of get to benefit from like being a part of a block right that is in cahoots with imperialist countries right and they get to reap the benefits of that yeah. right and uh, i don't know if i want to do that right like okay now i got a health care or whatever the fuck and the third world's still fucked right at their expense right at least like i'm fucking them right but i'm fucked too just to a lesser extent we're both fucked to daring degrees but now i'm good and they're still fucked like i i don't i don't know why do you want to do that well, i i'm very confused okay so how is so what our social democracy is is very divorced from how globalization plays out in the inequalities of third of uh, developing countries and uh, developed countries. Uh, I don't want to say third world because it's an outdated third world term. Um, that's besides the point. So th the difference between how the United States approach globalization or the effects of globalization to our labor force than the countries in Europe is that they bolstered social programs. We can I can show you a chart in which um, there was an there was a proportional increase between the amount of exports. No, the amount of imports that they were receiving, meaning that they were conducting more foreign trade, and also the amount of money, taxes, that went into social programs because a lot of those jobs got outsourced to those countries. In, in the United States, we didn't do that because we don't have a lot of the same representation of labor as Europe because we are first past the post, because we are a two-party system. We don't have a only socialist uh, our only socialist left party in comparison to a lot of multi-party systems that are proportionally represented in Europe. And so, like, also this, again, like this critique that they're also capitalists, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and how there's inequality in the world between develop and developing, that's not a critique against social democracy. Um, I think what Mavisai is trying to say, though, is that traditionally um, the countries that were able to achieve that kind of social democracy did so um, and were able to do so by virtue of sort of being aligned with a colonial power, i.e. the United States, and that a lot of the way that capitalism works is by feeding on things and exploiting things. And when it runs out of things to exploit on the outside, in other words, like, you know, countries, uh, you know, other peoples to exploit, um, it sort of turns inward on itself. And then the people who were formerly benefiting from that, uh, that Im imperial project uh, end up becoming, you know, it, it's, it's victims on the same order that uh, those uh, you know, so in other words, by our, our um, standard of living in the United States, is so high, um, not just by accident, not just because we got the greatest form of government in the world has ever known, we're a shining city on the hill, but it's actually because we've taken so much from the rest of the world and we've leveraged our you know, power, we've used our corporate, um, we, we use our corporations almost as as like military units in order to, you know, to, to, to sort of um, enact this um, extraction really is what it is of uh, resources from the um, non-developed um, nations that you were talking about. Is that right, Mazasai? I hope I'm not mischaracterizing what you said. Yeah, of course, right? And, and inherently, in order to do things like keep prices affordable for your working class in your country, things must be must be manufactured and whatever, and, and extracted, whatever, for pennies on a dollar, et cetera, et cetera, right? So even your social democracy, even though this population is secured now, now you're like you're still fucking over the develop the developing world, right? Like they can't from that position, right? Begin doing things like uh, instituting very strict labor laws, et cetera, et cetera, because then those standards and things will 
will make will make it harder to manufacture or extract resources or whatever from those places, right? Like, I mean, like okay. we can't, uh, like, oh, we can't, so like, we can't live what we do if they get to live how we live. If I could say one thing, I for the record, I'm I'm not a social democrat. Like I don't. That's not the ideology I I pursue or, or anything like that. Just just so that that's clear. I don't know if anybody thought that. I would hope not. But um, but but I do um like I do think that there like, like there's some very very serious concerns with um using like scandinavian countries you know the nordic model as like the the the, the poster child for the ideal society um f exactly like what, what uh Mabasai, Mabasai said like uh Mabasai, sorry um but it but the um but but like th th there's this okay so this is these are these are huge issues but also we have to acknowledge the fact that in in the current like in in current america like um most of the benefits of of in the vast majority of the benefits of of imperialism and of extraction go to an incredibly small amount of people and if we can successfully if we can successfully knock out that class a class of 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 hyper capitalists who have so much money that they can have an a, a literal fleet of, of yachts that they own personally if we can get rid of that it will be much much easier for us to say hey wait a minute let's redistribute this outwards as well and and say we don't actually need to have massive extractive um exploitative systems if we simply make um these these this lifestyle of of gross of like i don't even want to say luxury it's not luxury it's hoarding it's mass hoarding it's wealth it's wealth accumulation and if you address that i believe it's much easier to build sustainable societies on a global level and so like again um that's why i don't really believe in using nordic models as the ideal um like society because i also those countries also have the same problem of having a hype a class of hyper rich people um who hold so much that literally not even all, all of the it's not even that the, the the beneficiaries are the citizens of the country the beneficiaries are the elitist class of that citizens of the country and and like i mean many americans live in absolutely abhorrent living conditions and and as a, and like so they're not benefiting very much if at all um from the the um the exploitative um extractive methods that the that like a lot of like capitalism employs it is corporations and the heads of those corporations that largely are the beneficiaries if we manage to address that i think that it would be like again there's multiple struggles that will be going on simultaneously as somebody who you know lives in the united states who lives in the imperial core i think a, a lot of people here live in, in countries that would be categorized as imperial core countries like um we just happen to be here and that means our fight might look a little different but it, i think a lot of that means like being able to uh, build a society that no longer has a class of hyper like hyper rich hyper patricians or whatever you want to call them these people who are sitting on literal mountains of gold like scrooge mcduck and i think um being able to redistribute that makes redistribution um even larger on uh, even easier on a bigger level because i believe and i think this is kind of a um this is a big discussion to have but i believe it is possible for nations to become sustainable and and have nice lives even luxurious lives without having to be extractive or um or exploitative um and there may be certain challenges that come up like for example i don't know if there's a country that's already been like stripped of all of its resources um like reparations may i don't know if that's the right word but reparations may need to be made to that nation you know or whatever and like again in if we're talking like way post-capitalist future you know i i believe very strongly in like anarcho and anarcho syndicalist structures that's my kind of like ideological predilection um but again i think that we're quite a ways away from that sort of solution but i think that we should keep that as a part of our calculation for sure okay i think that this might be the good time to do a little pivot here and talk about our other set of issues uh those being like you know what's being done to the u.s uh post office uh you know like one uh government institution Maybe. I that i think that, is often pointed like to incorrectly so by liberals like um sam cedar as as being a example of of government working in a really good way doing something cheaper than industry could do it doing something better than industry could do it you know if you look at the rates of the post office versus the rates of the private carriers um it, 
And, um, you know, the, the Republicans, I think in the, just to take us back in Demon Mama probably is who we need to go to to like really give us the background on this. But like, from what I understand in the mid 2000s, there was, there was a bill passed that caused the post mm -hmm. office to have to, uh, you know, sort of prove that it had the funding for its uh, pension plans in a way that no other uh, government um, agency like has to do, right? And so that gave the Republicans the ability to say, oh my God, look at how much money the post office is losing. Ooh, this is a really bad deal. They're fucking up. Jeez, like, should we really have a, a, a public post office? Or maybe this could be better handled by the private market, don't you think? They would love to get their hands on that shit. And, uh, you know, this is their long-term strategy. Uh, Demon Mama, do you want to do you want to jump in here? Um, yeah, I mean, I believe it was... I. I, I can't remember the numbers exactly. It's been a little while since I did my, my big stream on the US, my last big stream on the USPS, but um, I believe it was 75 years of pension, a guarantee that the uh, the US post office is required to um, to to keep in, in, like in the bank, which is extremely hard to manage from a, um, from a funding level. This is a deliberate tactic to, again, make the, the USPS look bad and make it harder for the USPS to continue to function. Yep. Um, and, you know, uh, like we've seen all kinds of things. I mean, in the recent weeks, we've seen a rapid, like a slew of changes brought on by Trump loyalist, uh, you know, uh, Louis DeJoy, um, who also, if I'm not mistaken, was an investor in a bunch of, um, private shipping companies in the, uh, in the past, or even possibly presently. I don't know everything about his profile, um, but I do remember re reading quite a bit about that. You can watch my stream on it if you want the exact details. Um, but uh, a, a, basically what we're looking at is that um, somebody who doesn't agree with the post office is sabotaging it from the inside. Um, we've seen a, a decommissioning of functioning um, mail sorting machines under the name of saving costs. Um, but those machines have been reported widely as sometimes being literally left in the parking lot of that distribution center to rust and be destroyed. They're not actually being recycled. There's no attempt at actual cost saving. It's just, they're just being destroyed. Um, we've also seen, um, Louis DeJoy did a sort of top-down effort to, um, reduce the number of mailboxes and simultaneously increase the postage cost specifically for ballot, uh, for, for ballot postage. Ballot postage is now three times as expensive as it was um, uh, earlier this year, which means that uh, not only does the USPS itself have huge issues with budget, but the states that were hoping to move to mail-in ballot are now going to have to expect three times the cost, which you can imagine in our austerity-obsessed society, um, making tripling the budget that you were originally going to have to allot for dealing with mail-in ballot is a pretty effective way to actually damage the ability to hold a mail-in vote. It's um, a de facto poll tax. Yeah, it is. It is, absolutely. Yep. Never thought of it that way, but yeah. Aw, right, thank you so much, Snowdrift. Um, oh, um, I'm sorry I quick, missed I it. I was sleeping. Say, uh, uh, I have to go. I have to go and trade my labor. Oh, yes. For, for, for ticket, tickets to, to then trade for things I need. Um, uh, so uh, have a good have a good stream and and, yeah. and yeah the postal accountability act is garbage and they've been okay, trying to uh, kill, and, and, oh sorry go ahead uh, just uh it's it's kind of a, a no I disagree with you thing Kinjikon. with a lot of these uh, I disagree with you strongly. Uh, politicians uh, X or Y thing is broken elect yeah, me and I'll investor and QPS yeah I think and uh, you want to give any uh, anything about your stream really quick uh, if if you have time do you, sure. you want to uh, promote anything before you uh, Jet uh, Carpe like, like in terms of, do you, we usually let people give a little commercial on their way out. Oh, so okay. if, you, if you want to do that, go ahead and sure. see an SO for Carpe. Aww, well, that's awesome. Yeah, it's just me, Carpe Pax. So um, not quite, Windleby. Uh, I'm still going to do a post-chat kind of discussion. A late you missed the early spice, morning, though, Windleby. Holy fucking shit. Some would call it shit. Doomer hours. A lot of times it is kind of, kind of Doomer. Uh, but Holy I am trying shit. to uh, lighten it's it okay. up. It's okay. The VOD will be up. It's um, wild. I had a week off to reflect on uh, my... Just, um, no, that is not the... Uh, that's my, not what I believe in My presentation. Because it uh, got me suspended, so <laughs> I'm going to start uh, try, trying to trying to bring it back around and be a little more of a positive force. I feel in, that uh, in this in this uh, chaotic environment. Yeah, well, we're glad to see you uh, getting getting unbanned, and uh, sorry you had to go through a week. Well, of we'll that. talk about uh, it in the friends, in the Q and A. You missed the major spice. Banned I was and, and, uh, screaming. Yeah, he's back now too. So yeah, if you this is going to be a hell of a highlight. Uh, Carpe Pax. Um, Thank you. Take care, everyone. It is wild ah, how bad it uh, got. Where was I?
KFC. Oh, yeah, this, yep. this was, yeah. Okay, Insane. this is weird for me because usually I'm against the privatization of uh, public utilities. Um, but I think in this case, a postal service may be redundant at this point and may be um, in the market for privatization. I think it may need to compete commercially now and it needs to become a parcel service. I think we've gone past the point of needing a postal service. That could just be me. Uh, in the UK, we had the British, uh, the Royal Mail, which was privatized um, because it was just no longer functional. It, it, it was Take your time, Gene. No um, hemorrhaging money. And since it's been privatized, uh, we didn't get much money for it, but it's now turning a profit and it is competitive. Well, that was a few years ago. I don't know if it's still doing good. Yeah. Um, yeah, there may be a case for privatization, uh, privatization of the postal service. Uh, so, so I hate to ask you questions about the, you know, your knowledge of the U.S. Uh, system that that I wouldn't have about the U.K. system. But um, like, I mean, do you do you, uh, Take the do you see Danibal. like structural problems in the in the U.S. Uh, postal system, or are you just kind of basing this on uh, you know sort of how things uh, shook out in uh, in the U.K. Both um, the. The logistics of uh, the U.S. Postal Service it is already not competitive with private markets. Um, it's got competitors that are delivering parcels uh, that are not regulated. Um, you could deregulate the U.S. Postal Service to let them compete, but they're, they're already every, heavily regulated. Um, what I would say is that they do serve rural communities, and that's a big difference where the U.K. Postal Service um, wasn't as effective Um uh, because the UK is just much smaller, uh, so there might be a case for keeping the no, that's not true, uh, public Kendrick service uh, for post in the US, um, at least until you get um, public internet. I think yeah. that could replace it. Well, I feel what you're saying about like you know time moves on and snail mail's less relative than, than, it, than it once was. So like you know I mean there's 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 stuff going on there. I just like the only like real arguments that I've seen uh, for the structural and unsoundness or the you know, unsustainability of the U.S. Uh, Postal Service have come from Republicans who are basically set up a bill to make it look bad and, uh, you know, are, are then using the data from that bill to uh, to make it look like it's a big loser when, uh, like some people in chat are posting, uh, pointing out, it uh, delivers, a, does a lot of services way cheaper than the private uh, carriers uh, would and, and like you uh, commented, serves a large rural um, clientele that, that wouldn't be... Uh, wouldn't be worthwhile for uh, the the private carriers to serve. Yeah, there's a number of um, issues with these the claims about the the postal service um, that Danabo is putting forward. The first off is that uh, like um, so first off, America is a very different country than uh, Britain, and and I don't know I don't know anything about Royal Mail, so like like I can't really speak to their individual issues. But the United States is an incredibly rural area. We have a number of of literally places the size of the UK um, that are completely completely population low density so the usps guarantees that every person no matter where you happen to live in this enormous country that we have you will be able to to get mail there's another th there's a couple of other things too the usps for example is the only um institution that has been willing to take on agricultural um deliveries they deliver live chicks they deliver live animals to farms largely in rural areas um which is not a profitable venture at all um we've already seen louis de joy's cuts have severely um damaged farmers in maine for example, 4,500 chicks have died since Louis DeJoy's um, cuts came through. Um, also, the USPS takes on a bulk, uh, the vast majority of medication shippings, which are also not very profitable um, because, you know, medication is really inconvenient. Sick people, damn, they're really not profitable, it turns out. Um, those people um, are largely serviced by um, the Postal Service um, because, as it turns out, having a public institution to deal with things that are good for society but not necessarily profitable can be very, very good. Um, and then, of course, um, the idea that, like, uh, the USPS is being outcompeted by FedEx and USPS, uh, or, or, sorry, UPS, is not true. Um, that's only true for very specific types of deliveries. In fact, Amazon has leaned incredibly heavily on the USPS, leading to an, an unbelievable um, pressure on a public system 
And as we know, Amazon has is notoriously good at avoiding paying taxes. So um, part of the reason why the USPS has become so expensive is because Amazon relies um, on the USPS for a number of its things. There is also another issue, which is that many laws in the United States, both on a state and a federal level, require things to be sent like legal notices, for example, um, court summons, jury duty, tax information. Um, these things um, are often required by the law to be um, delivered through the mail. It is not appropriate to be outsourcing that responsibility to a private company that has profit motive um, when you have it required in law that these be delivered by mail. So whether or not you personally feel like email has replaced things, um, it certainly has not. There are still many, many things that happen by, by quote unquote snail mail. Um, there are many, and part of this is because it's in the law. So maybe if you could maybe take 0.5 off if we reform every single state in the United States to lo no longer have mail requirements um, for delivering, like, for example, legal notices or, again, taxes, stuff like that. But until then, we absolutely need to have a robust public service to ensure that people are being done justice by their own government. Um, otherwise, it's entirely unjust for them to be subject to um, a service that's a for-profit service that does not have their interests in mind. Um, so there's quite a number of things that are just not true about what, the claims that you made about the USPS. Well, the last point you said is simply not true. Um, Europe sends uh, private documents by mail contracts um, quite often. Um, I worked at DHL for two years. Um, yeah, co private contracts are fine to be sent by mail. You've got to regulate the industry to make sure they're not actually interfering with it, but it's fine for them to send them. Right, but that's a bit um, of an if, right? We don't have that regulation right now. Right now, a uh, for-profit package can't just... make the regulation, does it? Well, I mean, but at that... but. But that doesn't necessarily. Well, wait, wait a minute. Market, but you're you're saying you that you need regulations for the we, we, wait. Right? You're saying we have an existing public service that does that job incredibly well, and not only not only does it do that job incredibly well, but it also has a a foundational responsibility to the people because it is a public institution. It's still and then we should then market. what you're saying is we should then destroy that institution, outsource it to 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 private agencies, no, and I'm then create further regulation. Like, to me, that's completely illogical. Like, no, the I'm idea that you should possible. destroy the existing you, thing. You still straw man in it. I'm saying wait, wait. it's still possible with a private market, and it absolutely is possible with a private market. Right. So that's right. Fine. But uh, in regards to Amazon using the post service, that's an argument for privatization, too, because Amazon should pay competitive prices instead of paying the, the public prices. They should pay more, and they should fund it themselves. They shouldn't be using the public service to deliver their mail. Amazon already make billions and billions. They should be building infrastructure themselves they shouldn't Wait, be relying on public that's not an argument no, it's not an argument totally, for... uh, we should have totally nationalized amazon yeah, Wait, that. but, but, but that's not you, you claim that's an argument that well, you, you, you claim that that's an argument for privatization. Holy but, shit! Uh, wait, wait, no, 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 no. We're, we're we're engaging in this fucking meme. Does that make would that make us like public employees like or public contractors for the government? Some good benefits from that. How about this? How about I, this? I'm all right with it. I'm all right with it. You get like, a free watch Twitch Prime. Yeah, watch my stream just drop out, like right after saying this. Yeah, we love so, you, Jeff. Uh, we love you, Jeff. A lot of issues. A lot of issues with delegating um, services or privatizing them to private companies. Uh, that's redundant. Privatizing to private companies. Bleh, uh, is the issue that we are unable to actually oversee the activities. So there won't be a a legislative committee that has subpoena power or investigations there won't be any reports they're also like kind of they have a lot of more flexibility to do what they want so as what demon mama was saying there's this issue of uh, moral hazard in that they will prioritize a certain strategy in order to accumulate the best profits so some areas that are not profitable they could get shafted uh, instead of sending out mail six days a week, they now are doing it every two days a week or something because of labor shortages and such things like that. Uh, when we are able to have services be publicized by the government, we are sort of able to guarantee universality because that's just something that the United States would we, we're able to trust the government more to do that because of laws, regulations, the Equal Protections Act, things like that. Uh, I had another point, but I forgot, so come back. 
Um, but yeah, to, to, to mention, to like touch on the, uh, the idea that like Amazon using the USPS as an argument for privatization, I would disagree. It's an argument that we need to treat Amazon for, we need to charge Amazon for what they do. And it's perfectly fine to continue giving that work to the existing infrastructure. That's really, really good. Um, I don't have a problem with Amazon using that. They just need to pay their fair share. That's just how it goes. Um, like that's not an argument that doesn't follow that. That's an argument for privatization. But the reason they don't pay more is the re well there's a lot of i mean that's a real complicated question the reason that Our. amazon the reason that amazon doesn't uh doesn't uh pay more is because we have a uh, they are an incredibly are massive private corporation that's able to lobby ruthlessly and in fact they're able to hold entire states hostage on an economic level as they did in my state um and this is well documented public information that they literally threaten to leave states if the states don't don't make laws that are that are in their favor um yeah that's a problem with that's like that's a capital accumulation and lobbying problem it has nothing to and do you with think they could do that with a private company that's absolutely true. Even more so. In fact, you wouldn't even be able to know because it would be happening behind closed doors, where that institution would have no, um, no constant, like no uh, structural necessity to report to anybody but their shareholders. Absolutely, it would be worse. Demon Mama, I've been hearing about some. Oh, you I don't think it would be worse. We've already, yeah. There's examples of privatization of postal services that have been successful. I mean, there you can say there's Just examples of everything, but I mean, I don't, I don't know, like. Like um, you're talking about so just in general, just in general, when we were looking Hello. at privatization just around the world on public services, let's say what uh, water mm. supplies, mailing, things like that, privatization mm. tends to increase efficiency, be better, have like better quality as well as. But the caveat to that is it's going to increase in price. And so a lot of the times when a country is going to be privatizing their, their water, what usually follows are protests because we're like, there's an increase and this is really cutting into my paycheck and my standard of a living. And I can't afford to pay rent because of this increase in water because you gave the water rights to this private company. So that's what usually tends to happen with privatization. And so then the question here is what are the pros and cons to, to which and which one should we should we take? Uh, there seems to be a pros and cons to both. Well, I mean I'm more inclined to I don't think the postal service right now is any is broken. So if it's not broken then why try to fix it? Yeah. I, I agree with that, chap. Yeah. I agree with that. I'm just you saying it, it, it's something that should be kept on the table. That's it. But I, I don't think that I, I, I disagree. Like the reason why, like, I don't think privatization of public infrastructure is a, is, is a good thing. I mean, we have numerous historical examples, but we also have one concurrently going on right now, um, which is um, the example of, of the power company PG&E in California, a company that has now been convicted of multiple deaths like i mean multiple years in a row every single year they are getting sued by the state again and have been locked up in a long battle while they're killing people this year and the, and the, they have by, mind you completely ignored how people in my chat literally start screaming fuck pg and e anybody who lives in california will be fuck able to yeah yeah I um, feel it pg and e is a company right. that has flagrantly ignored attempts at regulation and has ban has um run their model on the fact that they can just delay things in court for seemingly forever and then give golden parachutes to the people at the top and rely on corporate 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 immunity while relying on state sponsored firefighter labor to clean up the messes that their broken infrastructure has has caused it it makes no sense to me it make it's it's it flies in the face of reason that we should make it harder for people to oversee public institutions by putting a private profit driven motive in the way it just simply isn't true now you might have like a short burst in like quality but i've never seen any evidence of this i would love to see any evidence that there's real increase in quality when something is privatized like i simply have not seen examples of that like i, I don't find any evidence that there's actually um widespread systemic evidence of of private institutions improving the quality of service or right. or anything like that but what they what there is absolutely repeated historical evidence of is is um capture of public uh public utilities by private institution that then utilize the fact that are are um that they can delay things in court forever to make incredible amounts of money while avoiding any actual responsibility um for the individuals who made horrific decisions that often kill people 
also in terms of any actual like studies that we do bring up, um, you know, on this matter, especially if they're in support of privatization, we really, really need to look for conflict of interest on those because it would be very easy for somebody who's, you know, who, who had their interest, you know, to, to show it as, as effective to do. Demon Mama, while you, I've got you here, I gotta, I can't miss up this mess. I, I can't lose this opportunity. The U.S. Post um, Office does more stuff than most of us realize. Um, I was surprised to find out that when Steve Bannon was arrested for uh, was it was it uh, voter fraud or was it um, no it, it was, was election for, uh, uh, was election donation fraud right Yeah, I, I think it was. Um, I think he was arrested for. I, and I'm I'm probably going to get the technical term wrong, but he was. Um, it was like a. Uh, charity fraud, so like 501c fraud. Um, he ran a, a charity that was meant to fund the building of a border border wall, um, which he spent on himself and his associates. And yeah, so he was picked up by the Postal Service by inspectors, by Postal Service inspectors um, who were responsible for sort of tracking him down as this was being conducted across state lines, largely using, you know, a lot of his legal, as I understand, a lot of his legal paperwork was going through the Postal Service. So yeah, they are responsible for that. But also the Postal Service does provide... Um, you know, does already provide uh, services like um, like IDs, um, uh, universal access to um, passports, stuff like that. So there's a lot of services that this institution does. And also uh, people grossly exaggerate how unprofitable the US, uh, the USPS is, um, especially when considering that it's a public good that serves every single um, American in the country. People say, oh, it has a billion dollars of debt, which is a laughable number in the face of how much debt our military causes every year while giving, you know, while giving arguably less back to the actual people of the United States. I just don't think a good case can be made for, um, for privatizing this outside of, um, like a, an ideological commitment to believing in a free market. Um, other than that, there's just no real, there's no reason why you would want to complicate the process further. And there's no clear benefit. It only would, uh, you know, the only examples you could think of is it makes it harder for the voters to actually have control over the thing that they have a right to. Yeah. And I mean, we do have to sort of, um, I mean, I guess, I guess we do sort of have to, um, hurry up and, and get to the red mirage thing. So uh, Demon Mama and I uh, introduced this concept earlier. It's basically a, a plan that a lot of people think is on Trump's mind to use the uh, the slowness of the votes, um, you know, being counted through the, the mail as a reason to, um, as a reason to, uh, as a way to, you know, at least maybe give the perception that he's won uh, you know, or, or cause some confusion, or at the very worst, you know, use the uh, United States court system to actually turn True, a massive boycott. loss, yeah. which, you know, all wall. accounts are saying more so than like, you know, the situation with Hillary Clinton, that that, that is what he's headed for in terms of, you know, his own reelection and in terms of the Senate, maybe even um, into a, into some kind of a, a victory and, and a way to retain power uh, on uh you know, unethically, un, uh, illegitimately, uh, but, but maybe legally, right? Because there's a lot of shit that's le legal, but illegitimate. Um, I just want to jump back in on the last um, topic, one second, yeah. just for anec anecdote wise. Um, I think there can be a case made for privatization. I won't bring any studies for it. I think the Royal Mail privatization was successful. I've lived through three privatizations, uh, British Telecom, British Rail, and the Royal Mail. Uh, British Telecom and British Rail absolutely failed. It was absurd. Uh, they should both go back to public ownership, but Royal Mail was successful. So there might be a case in some industries for privatization. You would have to look into the US and whether that applies. Yeah. 66% uh, success or this failure one, rate is pretty bad. Um, the bridge that Kenny was trying to apply earlier is this. This is the bridge. When Trump declares he's the winner, and the fascist regime takes over, is that the time for violence? No. Like, that's your bridge. No, because whoever is going to be declaring the winner, it doesn't matter if they declare it. <laughs> they don't, just because you declare yourself the winner doesn't make you president. There's a process that lasts a month for to determine the presidency. The presidency is not determined on November 3rd. It's determined on December something by uh, some third actor and, and then he declares even, himself winner. And the, okay, and then by that time we would have a pretty good indication of who actually won the election. 
Now we can argue that some votes, especially when it's going going to come it's to possible. mail-in votes, are they're going to be slow, et cetera, et cetera. And I would hope that so long as there is a reasonable reason to extend those deadlines past because we are facing an unprecedented situation, then yeah, awesome. I think the Supreme Court is going to go that way too because even though the divide between the Supreme Court is five to four Republican, I, I for, I'm forgetting his name at the moment, but uh, yeah, right. Ro- I, I think it's Roberts and then somebody else who recently they've been siding on the liberal side. Uh, is my webcam? Yes. Okay. We'll, we'll forget that. Um, and then like, I, I just don't think there's a genuine fear. If you're actually fearing that we are going to be going, if Trump is going to declare victory, even though he's not, he's still going to be in the presidency, and we are actually going to have dictatorship okay. Trump for the next term as well as afterwards, then that means our institutions have failed us. Then, yes, at that point, that is a very good indication that the democratic experiment in the United States has failed. And this is the case for a lot of countries in uh, in particular in the, on the continent of Africa, when they would experiment with democracy for the first time, they, they would have the first election and then afterwards, the, the, the person who was elected would be like, okay, no more elections afterwards. Yeah. That could happen, that could happen, but like, and we could speculate, but yeah, I find that incredibly sure. unlikely because there is no evidence. It's just speculation. Yeah, I do have to push back a little bit. I feel like our institutions are a little bit less durable than than you're making them out to be. To, to me, this sounds a little bit like, you know, sort of a, a preconception, which was, you know, really, you know, like, like, like you know, I mean, there's, there's kind of a, a conception about the United States as being on really solid foundations and that that like our founders like uh, foresaw all the issues that could have happened and they made uh, our government really durable having these checks and balances. They made sure that nothing like this would ever happen. We've already seen in so many ways that Trump defies this uh, perception that a lot of what the United States rested on in terms of stability wasn't actually law, didn't have the force of law behind it, but rather had the force of precedent behind it. And because the precedent had been set and the idea was like, hey, anybody that breaks this precedent, they're going to be in big trouble in the media. Well, now we've got a situation where half of the country doesn't trust the media, where they've got their own media that will say whatever the fuck they want. And, um, you know, I, I do really think there's big concern in this. Um, the 2000, uh, you know, election, I've been looking at it and it really was, I, I believe, a case of the Amer- will of the American people, even in terms of just the electoral college. Like, right? Like, it, it, it's 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 hard to it's hard to make a case that Gore didn't win that election. And I mean, electorally, not just like by obviously by the popular vote, like 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 Hillary did. But like, you know, I, I okay. think there really is a chance and we can't like, I mean, although like Roberts and, you know, Kennedy, I think it is, maybe it's the other one you were talking about, like have been a lot, you know, have been like breaking from the uh, Scalia. I wait, can try. Scalia, yeah. Scalia dead? Scalia might be dead. Um, Scalia's yeah. dead. Scalia's dead. Wow. Um, who, Kavanaugh replaced him. Kavanaugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kavanaugh. And then, um, you know, the rest of the right wingers on the court, right? Like, you know, I don't think we can count on, uh, you know, I mean, just don't forget the right wingers at the end of the day. Like if they have to make a, a choice between, uh, you know, they might not like Trump, but I, 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 yeah, I, wonder I don't know. If they, I do worry about that. Um, you know, would prefer anyway. Um, I, I'm I, not as, I'm not, I don't feel as safe as, as you seem to, uh, you know, you in the, done. In the warm bosom of of our uh, of our um, you know liberal democracy, right? One one, one thing that I, I think that needs to be taken hey, into account there the is with that one so is much. that he has half of his military does not like him, right? Oh, even sure. even committing even even including some high ranking people, right? So you have people who don't like you who are trained in not just to fight but in logistics, et cetera, et cetera, and people who are trained to command those people. Who don't like you? At least yeah. half of these people. And we have millions of vets. Like I, I don't, I don't think that he'll be able to take it. I don't, I don't think he'll be able to take it. If he, if he, if he, if he tried, I don't like. I don't see this. Like I don't see that turning in his favor. I think he'll, he'll cry like a baby, and then he'll eventually have to abdicate 
because other than that, then the fucking then like like what the almost over half of the fucking military faction that does not like him who just depose him. So right. I have read polls that you're talking about, and and, and you're you're right. There, like people think that the military fundamentally supports Trump because that's, that's true, like Wendell the image, B. America, military, whatever. There's a lot of yeah, shit about Trump that, Gina, that, that you know different. You know that that, that hasn't made the military. Uh, very happy with him and yeah you know he it is like you know 50 50 or maybe a little tilted against him uh Mavasai, but like i mean like i mean that's a drastic Bye, situation where the Much military comes night. into play and and then like we're like we got units on the trump side and units on oh my god that's super scary what i'm talking about is just more of a judicial coup than a, than a than a military uh support militarily supported um you know coup or um you know sort of trickery of of the American people, like so, so I'm getting though. So Chow and Mama say you're sort of on the side of we might be making more of this red mirage than than it really is, you know, in terms of our concern about it, right? Is that is that what I'm getting from you too? Well, if you really if you really believe, and as I said before, the red mirage is just a play on the words on a phenomenon that is called the blue wave by political science people because. Yeah. If you really believe that afterwards there's going to be a blue wave of mail-in ballots that are going to lead to Biden to win, then awesome. Right. Biden has a high chance of winning. Great. I just, I, here's here's what I think. Oh, go ahead. Um, yeah, like, okay. So my concern, um, okay, so here are my main concerns. This is a really complicated situation we found ourselves in, and I find um theorizing about it to be really really hard to come to any hard like like to any hard conclusions there's a couple of ways that i that i've there or things that have been on my mind that i think people should think about the first one is the fact that the voter suppression from covid from the cancellation of mail-in ballots from states not communicating when their mail-in ballots are is just outright enough to suppress the to suppress the popular vote in the favor of donald trump and donald trump gets by stealing an election by using tech like semi-legal technically legal um you know putting somebody in charge of the usps who takes drastic action that's pretty obvious at least sabotage but that he can get away by them not being able to technically prove it blah 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 i think that's possible i think donald trump pulls a win out of that that is probably one of the worst case scenarios i can think of and the reason is because we end up with four more years of donald trump with an um with no accountability or need to worry about re-election he can continue to keep making a mess um stuff like that um so i think that's a pretty bad one the other situation that happens is we have the red mirage situation which is where it appears that donald trump is winning on the night of the election somebody like fox news says he's winning and hypes it up really really hard and then the blue wave comes in and proves that he didn't actually win but by then all of Don donald trump's extreme and very violent supporters have already worked themselves into a fury have then convinced themselves that this is the civil war that donald trump is being cooed and an, an enormous enormous amount of stochastic and uh sporadic violence un uh, unfolds all over the united states and who knows where we go from there that is also a really bad outcome i also think that that is it's kind of the one that i feel is like and again this is just my speculation i can only say based on what i've researched with the usps and what it appears to be from my read what the what the donald trump administration is pushing for um, and, and those are, and then of course there's option three, which is just that Joe Biden wins and this, all of this was a failure and he just wins on, on election night and there is no red mirage or they fail to make it happen. Um, like, I think that that's the ideal situation, right? We no longer, like we, we can then begin to engage neoliberal problems. We no longer have to worry about the fashion in office. There's probably going to be some violence from the most extreme, the most extreme Trump supporters, which is terrible. We will have to deal with that. There's no way to predict that besides the fact that they have been talking about the civil war for six months now um i think that that is also a possibility the first two are really concerning to me and it's really hard to say what we actually do about it at this point because what we've seen is that basically all of our institutions have been um if not completely 
disregarded or broken have been gummed up to the point that it will be a long time before they can actually litigate out any of this. Um, in my mind, like the sort of behavior that we saw with Donald Trump just disassembling the Postal Service, um, clearly tampering with votes, going on national television and admitting that, um, you know, that he's he's pushing through legislation to prevent mail in voting in the middle of a pandemic. These, in my mind, are absolutely worthy of Donald Trump being justly removed from office. But that has not happened. They cannot impeach him. So by one reason or another, our institutions have choked up and we have a president who is actively engaging in the um, in the sabotage of democracy. Um, that is really hard. It's really hard to say how you answer that. And uh, I think if we do end up with a red mirage situation, we need to prepare for the fact that there will be undeniably a lot of, of right wing violence. There is a bunch of people who are primed for it. There are a bunch of people who have been like, for example, QAnon is a great example of one. Um, in fact, I believe the Oath Keepers are another example of one where they said if Donald Trump does not do his duty or if the Democrats violate, you know, prevent him from doing his duty, it is their duty to to uphold the Constitution. Um, there are, you know, uh, talks of citizen arrests of militia formation is really, really popular in QAnon right now. So these are things that I think we should really take seriously. Um, and I think what, if that is the, if the red mirage situations happen, I think we can, we are going to have to see a, a number of months of, um, of unpredictable, um, sporadic violence, um, against a lot of people. And I don't think that we have the ability to really predict or counteract that. We just have to be as safe as possible and defend our communities to the best ability that we can. Now, um, I don't know. There are others. There are other potential situations that I think are much more, much less likely. Um, stuff like Donald Trump doesn't win, doesn't give up power. You know, it's like a really close margin or something, and he says this is fraudulent. Holds into office. There's like a bunch of clashes between whether it's protesters and his militias or whatever. That is a really, really hard situation to 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 game plan out. And I don't know that I'm even qualified to give people an answer to exactly what we have to do there besides make sure that you're taking care of your community and uh, doing your best to, you know, protect people from potential violence that goes that, that is going to inevitably follow um, a red mirage situation. It's just very hard to tell, like, when when you have the failure of institutions that are massive of that degree, it's hard to give a, a clear cut answer on how we fix it. Uh, how you how you counter that when it's been so rapid and so blatant and so clearly unethical um, and there's been nothing that anybody can do nobody with political power seems to be able to overcome the uh, the wall that is Mitch McConnell and the wall that is the Trump admin that's a really tough situation to be in especially considering that we are currently dealing with a um, eviction, you know, a, ho a houselessness and an eviction crisis and a pandemic on top of that, which the Republicans seem really interested in downplaying. That's really tough. That is a lot of things, a lot of fronts to be, to be approaching at once. Um, and that's honestly, again, uh, that's really hard to try and say what we should do in that situation, except for try to keep ourselves safe and, uh, and keep on top of it and counter message and try to convince people and, and whatnot. That's what we can do, I think for now absolutely i can't uh, i can't answer all your points uh i also can't even assure you because at the end of the day this is borderline conspiracy theory What's, yeah they think what it's could over. even happen we don't have a magical orb that could show us all the answers we did in the what, what i can't he left yeah what? You're, we did have a magical orb in the beginning but yeah she she had to she had to yeah. <laughs> you're right uh what I can't say on the second scenario that you presented was if Donald Trump loses, and I'm assuming that he's going to lose because I really just don't see any scenario in which he wins. I'm, I'm seeing, I'm looking at uh, what states are solidly blue according to the polling and where the money is actually being devoted to, and what are the strategies between the two parties? It's this is an easy election for Biden. I'm I would I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is and make any bets with any of you guys who uh, think my take is stupid right now or some or like betting that it might change. Uh, anyways, if Donald Trump loses and he is still in the White House on January first, two thousand and one, then protocol is that he's going to be escorted out. And if there's going to be resistance, then the military is going to do it or Capitol Hill officers are going to do it or White House officers are going to do it 
or secret service officers are going to do it. And as Mama said, say, said before, that when you're going to be looking at the polling of the military support for whichever candidate, m- most of it is actually going towards Biden. It's not the military is not an institution that has been overtaken by right wingers and extremists. Uh, the military for a long time within the United States has strongly and traditionally been very apolitical. Uh, same thing goes for the courts, but for the past few decades, it's become yeah. a lot more partisan, but not as partisan as, say, Congress. Um, so, like, the only thing I could tell you, and if it doesn't reassure you, then that's fine. I, I, I think it's impossible to do that. Is to have faith. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> the optimistic, it sounds so dumb, I know, right? Yeah. It doesn't do anything. Um, except, uh, I, I think, like, maybe we could even use something called, um, I think it's called Occam's Razor. Is that, like, usually the, the simplest scenarios or the simplest explanations are the ones that are usually real. real. And so any sort of conspiracy theory of, oh, all of a sudden all of our democratic institutions that have lasted and helped us and persisted for almost 300 years, making the United States the longest living democracy ever in human history. That is a feat. Okay, and all no. of a sudden it's just going to crumble of because history. of orange man. Yeah. It's in the course of human history. It's, it's a breath. It's, it's, it's a very small amount of time, but I, I, I feel what you're saying. Um, no, I, uh, I I've got some into it. Iron. Oh, sure. But I will push back a little bit on the idea that, um, you know, our uh, institutions are going to um, that, that the military, for instance, is uh, uh, is is going to um, is something that we can trust to be apolitical. I don't think that the military is apolitical while they might be neutral on the issue of like Trump Biden or something like that, you know. They're, uh, and they might be, you know, like not wanting to intervene on that, not being wanting to be seen as a force of, of a coup or something like that. They do have, I, I think of the driving force behind the military as being not the organization itself, but rather the corporations that benefit from its existence, the corporations that lobby for in, in huge expense budgets. The, uh, the you know, the, the, what Matt Taibbi, not one of my favorite people, by the way, please don't at me. Um, Matt Taibbi would call this the self-licking ice cream cone of the military industrial complex. And I do worry about what the interest of that, you know, of that, of that complex uh, really is and, and how that might, because everything with Trump, the reason that our, uh, so many of our democratic institutions have not been able to withstand Trump and Trumpism is that um, it, it's um, uh, t- Donald Trump is a master of transactional politics. In other words, like find you know some leverage over somebody, use it, get them to do what you, that you want. Find something that somebody wants, offer to give it to them, and, and and return for favors. Like Donald Trump is very good at corrupting organizations that that might have some rules that like you know d- don't lend themselves to that corruption. Uh, he's made a he's made a goddamn career on it, right? The dude hasn't succeeded in like business in any meaningful way, but he has succeeded in like keeping his shit afloat, keeping his perception up, keeping the money coming in and keeping his lifestyle as fucking exorbitant as as he wants it to be, as exorbitant as he grew up with. Like, I always make this comparison. If you or I were given the money that, that uh, Fred Trump gave Donald Trump, and we just invested it in some basic bitch ass like investments, some really safe investments that are likely to grow over a long time, but don't don't yield a high return. We would all have more money. We would all be in a better financial position than Donald Trump. Like, you know, the perception that he's mm. like a, a genius is, is, is false. But like he has he is a slippery, slippery motherfucker. And yes, I did just call the president of the United States a motherfucker. I think I could do that, right? Twitch yeah, that's your that's within your free speech. Oh, Yes. Oh, Twitch TOS. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I don't know. Well, if we broke TOS, we we're we we're already fucked, right? Like I don't know. If we broke TOS, it wasn't me today, right? I don't. Yeah, I don't think I'm the one with the spicy takes. Um, what was yeah. I, I was going to respond to Chow. So Chow, yeah, Occam's Razor is the simplest answer, right? So the simplest answer is we go with the polls, and Biden wins, and he gets elected, and he's the president. Um, the the. The second bit of that is Trump will continue on his fake news rant and 
tell people that the election was rigged and sell that to the public because he wants to make money from it. And then the third part of that is there will be violence from the the right, the far right um, supporters of Trump. So no, at that point, Not what do we do? That's... Okay, well, if there's actually going to be violence on the scale of challenging the presidency, then we label that as a coup. And what do states do to coups and to rebellions? They get crushed because they are inherently violent and they are endangering society as well as other people, et cetera, et cetera. So, so that's hey. when the revolution comes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, for them. I, I think, <laughs> I, I think... Yeah, for, for them. That, yeah, if, if we're going to be going through if we're going to be agreeing with all the premises that you have just gave me, then yes. Um, and this has sort of happened before. We, we can argue that like the Civil War was something like that of a, a revolution or a secession. Of course, yes, 100%. Um, do I think it's going to be like super large? No, absolutely not. Uh, I think only like the most extreme of people are ever going to take up arms to actually go to Trump's side and abide by his words. We don't even know. Like maybe Trump actually just says, fuck it. I'm so tired of it. These past four years have been the worst four years of my fucking life. I didn't even want this prison in the first place. Of course, that's just speculation. Uh, so, hey, we don't know about that either. Um, unless we're going to be taking your premises as 100% true. Yeah, I mean, dream for sure. Yeah. if we get to if we get to a circumstance where um, Donald Trump like, OK, so again, and and a lot of this is going to be just speculation and and our reads and, and trying to make a case based off our reads of the situation. I don't think that Donald Trump is a warlike type president. Um, he's a, a catty businessman who likes to say mean things about his opponents and get the crowd laughing. Um, which is dangerous in its own way, of course, in the way that we've seen that. But I, I, I personally don't feel like it's a likely outcome that he'll try some sort of like, um, like I am taking power by force. Fifty percent of the military, you are coming with me. The other fifty percent, we're gonna duke it out on the streets. If that's the case, that is beyond the ability of Twitch streamers to address. Um, the United States military splitting in half and and firing at each other with the most powerful weaponry in the world. Um, potentially bringing like calling home our aircraft, our nuclear aircraft carriers, bombing like that would be that is an apocalypse like a genuine apocalypse scenario, which is why I think it's kind of not the most likely. Um, I think, uh, I think a more likely, um, if we're talking about like complete civil unrest, I think a more likely, um, avenue to complete civil unrest is, um, is a red mirage situation where Trump supporters say, no, fuck it. We no longer consider the United States a legitimate government. And Donald Trump sort of like vaguely, um, vaguely gesticulates at them and inspires them until they find the real fascist that they want to rally behind. And then there's like a asymmetrical kind of war where there's you know pockets of right wingers um taking over states or city governments and doing horrible things to people that they disagree with that in the area and whatnot and it's this chaotic mess all across the nation with totally different outcomes in every different place i think that's a more likely like horrific apocalypse scenario than like a military split i just don't feel like donald trump has the uh has the oomph to um to say okay 50 percent of the military come with me and anybody who doesn't we're gonna just start shooting you right away like that just doesn't seem like it, it is certainly something that it could happen i mean it happened in germany right um but i feel like germany is a very different situation than us um both politically and geographically i just don't personally feel like that's like a huge likely situation um but yeah uh i do think that this is a um a an election that is very questionably uh, questionable in its legitimacy. I think a lot of um, I think COVID nineteen has brought forward uh, has uh, acted like a like a barium test that um, that sort of has shown us a lot of blocked arteries and 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 failing institutions. Um, and I think that we need to you know very aggressively pursue uh, fixing those. 
um, and and strongly opposing um, outright violent ones like like say I, like ICE and and many police uh, many of the police forces uh, in this United in in this country who have been on basically a six month riot um, finding any justification to deploy chemical weapons on peaceful protesters at nearly every turn um, that's something that I think that we're going to continue dealing with and that we're going to continue having to resist um, I don't know how much the election is going to um, change that it might change it a lot it might not change it at all um you know if biden take if you know biden wins outright then i think it's just going to be more of like there's going to be a brief reprieve where everybody kind of sighs a big sigh of relief and then we're going to go back immediately into the exact same struggle we've been dealing with since biden's policies on the police are a, a, a half a half measure and that's generous um but yeah i don't know it's really really hard to predict uh, it really is um yeah and i think one of the best things that people can do in this time um, is is uh, look at the material needs of your community, connect with people in your physical area, um, especially important, you know, because in COVID, it's, you know, the world got a bit bigger in COVID in the sense that it's a lot harder to get from state to state, to get from country to country because of all the travel restrictions. Pay attention to your community, connect with your community, and try to address, if you have the means to do so, Try to be in a position where you can address the material needs of your community. There are going to be a lot of hungry people this winter. There are going yeah. to be a lot of people struggling for rent this winter. There are going to be a lot of GoFundMes from desperate people who just don't want to die. There are going to be a lot of houseless people who are cold this winter. And these, this is the best way I think that we can actually make a serious, uh, uh, you know, a serious um, challenge to this status quo that tells us to not give a shit about anybody else. That tells us to not give a shit about people who are houseless it get, tells us not to give a shit about anybody is to say hey let's put together organizations that can meet these people's needs and and also offer potential political solutions going forward yeah. um if there if it comes down to a military conflict i think we're all out of our water here none of us nothing that we say on this website is going to be able to um stave off the horror of a of a 50 50 um military confrontation between the in the biggest and most powerful uh military in the world a, a, a military that can is to race the planet right <laughs> like yeah. Uh, yeah basically you know it's it's um the the thing about um oh my god where the fuck was i gonna go with that mavasa you got something oh, shit no not really. I also, I also don't think I also don't really think that like they're probably gonna set up like toy soldiers, but I I definitely think that like the, like the threat of it and the fact that Trump's is more like just doesn't seem like the guy to try to go for that is not like like it, he's like no like I, I think the other one's probably gonna happen. The true believers are gonna are gonna like freak the fuck out and start attacking some people. And then they'll like deploy the government, deploy like government agencies or whatever to to kind of like put them down. I, and I then guess... they'll, and then we'll leave that extra funding there, and those same government ag agencies will uh you know use some of that same force on black people, because that always happens. I guess what I was gonna say uh um was was that um you know like Dim and Mama was just talking about like taking care of people's needs and i know that you meant this and and like the primary reason to do this is from a human perspective it's from a, a perspective of compassion and empathy is is because you know we because we feel it but organizing in that way is a great way to get people on your side so that if shit ever does really go down and you have no choice um but to you know the, the confrontation becomes physical then you've got the only thing that's going to save us on the left. We don't have the guns. We don't have the the mentality. Um, it, but we do, you know, potentially hey, follow if we over take care of each Appreciate other. It. Welcome to the community. Have a lot of goodwill on our side, and have the ability to for people to see like who you know who who's there when shit goes down. Who's there when somebody that never might have voted Republican all their lives, never thought of like being out of a house and a, and a home is is now hungry and cold in the winter. When they come to their fucking food not bombs. Yeah, one of them did, yeah. And that was a while ago though. Something to eat and get a hot meal there. Like and then maybe have a conversation about what's going on in their country. Like that is, you know, that's fucking praxis. 
And like, I'm not saying that we should do it cynically, like for the reason of, you know, to consolidate power, but that is one of the beneficial side effects to doing the right thing, to being the right people, to being who we really are inside and concentrating on, um, you know, the, the people that are, you know, the, on the margins of society, uh, the, pe the people that are being pushed out. Like that is the power of the left. That yeah. is the way that we win. And, and I can just give a thinking. like a like a very ahead, yeah. real example of this. Um, in my area, there is a uh, a anarchist led mutual aid group that raised three hundred thousand dollars and coordinated a massive grocery buying and grocery delivery, not just buying, but delivery completely through a Google sheet. They did this through Google yeah. sheets. No cost, no overhead, just a, a community organized effort of people with goodwill, with lots of, with lots of in, inter-community, um, you know, accountability, keeping an eye on where the money is, making sure that this is going to the right place and nobody's fucking taking anything. It was really amazing. 300, like close to, I think it's like close to 300,000. Uh, last I checked, it was like 250 was what they had raised. And all of that went to delivering food, like stuff that I participated in. I helped, you know, deliver that food. And that was amazing to see. That is delib that is putting food in the mouths of people who would otherwise be in danger. And and that is incredible. That's just amazing. And and so this is this is part of the thing like a lot of people get hung up on the on the um on again on the Ushanka and Klashnikov kind of stuff and forget that most of life is taking care of people's immediate needs and most of 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 uh like uh, what's the right word? Uh, like revolutionary action. Most of the action that's going to change the world is going to be taking action that can actually put that can actually put food in people's mouths, take care of their needs, and make sure that they're living another day to keep being a human on the planet Earth. So yeah, this is super. Conquest this is of bread. Bread. Conquest of bread. Hell yeah. I, I, I do have to leave, Irene. Um... Yanabo, it's been so awesome having you. We don't have you on here nearly enough. We're gonna have to get you back sometime. I I, okay. I fucking you're a great friend of mine and uh you've been there when i needed you and uh you know we don't always agree on stuff but that's that's actually a benefit uh to me i don't Thanks, see Reddy. that as a liability or a reason to to you know to to, to you know like put a, push us apart but yeah danabo um do you want to uh, promote anything that you've got on the in the works and got a head out uh, i would like to say it was good speaking to you chow do you my, my besides always good um there's one thing i would like to promote um is a charity stream that aiden wood's doing um oh. twitch.tv forward slash aiden wood she's doing a fundraiser for a lgtp uh community center she's about two and a half grand into a free grand uh target so go check her out give her a donation uh she's been going strong for a few days now um, for myself, no, nothing to shout out. Uh, it's just good to come on panels and shout at people. Bye, Danabo. Oh, yeah. All right. Have yeah. a good night, everyone. All, All right. right. Bye, Danabo. Everybody go follow Danabo. Can we get a shout out? I'll, I'll maybe do that. Um, but yeah, I, I, well, I wanted to the, the comment on the thing that they wanted to said. So like, it's super weird. This is, this is like super cute. This is like. It's like a it's like a more explicitly political version of, of discourse on fucking queer Twitter, okay? Like there's so much shit that people like still like dish back and forth about that's been like almost like theoretically settled since a lot before it, even any of us were born. And in this situation, like what you mentioned, like this is what the big the big thing about why clinics and free meals and stuff like that was a were a big part of the Black Panther program. Yes. And the program of any group that was in solidarity with them, right, to was things feeding people, making sure they get their medication, checkups, you know, uh, education, right? Yeah. And to speak to that, right. just real quick, I just want to just add to that to give credence to your point, which is the clinic that the clinic that has literally been responsible for getting me my mental health care taken care of, for getting me my HRT, the best clinic I've ever gone to in my entire life was founded by the Black Panthers. And they proudly display, you know, the portrait and the story of their founding here in my city. That saved my life. So yeah, just wanted to give some credence to what you're saying. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. It's 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 just settled somewhat, I guess, at this point. But I guess, uh, I don't know, I guess it depends on how, how would one get something like that done, right? Mm -hmm. It's hard. Um, it starts with one, yeah, one foot in front of the other. I mean, as 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 um as as like you know, kind of like uh useless as that sounds. Like it starts with like one, you know, 
one one grain of sand it starts with one flap of a butterfly's wing right um it's it's you know it's it's not easy but like demon mama was saying there's people that have put this together like your comrades are out there doing this and that means you can do it too find out what's worked for them get in contact find out what's going on uh demon mama do you if you want to drop like any links in chat like i don't know if they've got like a this organization you're talking about if they got anything going on in california but like it sounds like their model is really i mean is, i would imagine like, there probably is wanna... i tell people pretty frequently just give a search in your area and see if there are any mutual aid groups they usually just call yeah. themselves like x like you know how there's like most major cities have like um you know um buy shop swap whatever it's called groups on facebook oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. how i found this buy one I literally, yeah 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 buy nothing yes buy nothing is a movement that's had like a lot of groups have this they're um literally i found it because uh when i got here um i was just advised like hey search for the local mutual aid groups it was really easy to find most major areas even some smaller cities will have already existent mutual aid groups sometimes as simple as just five people who get together and go take hand sanitizer to a nursing home or something but these are things that are meeting real material needs and if you can find one in your area participation is super easy um it's like you're allowed to discern determine your own involvement and whatever and they have a, a from the from the very basis they have a mentality of like give what you can and just do with what you, do what you can with what you have and, and that is the sort of thing that like, I, I think that, you know, that I try to focus on a lot, which is that, um, I don't know, everybody's life is different. We all have some, we might all have some privileges and some things that we don't have. If we have something we can help with and you have the ability to help with it, help with it. And just try to keep that in mind and keep your eye out for what things you might have that can meet a need. And obviously you don't need to endanger yourself or, you know, put yourself in a place where you're overworking yourself out of, you know, but just if you can give and it will and and if you can build a lot of these things are you know like i mean even the clinics that um that i that i that i go to like the reason why that happened is there's a whole bunch of reasons how the black the the you know seattle black panthers came to get the resources that they needed to do that and they just chose to say hey we have these resources we have these connections we have these doctors who are friendly to our cause let's do it let's just do it you know and so it may be that sometimes we have to search for those opportunities. Other times they might be there and we haven't noticed them yet. And other times we might have to, you know, like be creative. But I do think that if we put our minds to it and actually approach these things strategically, use our very diverse expertise that exists on the left and in our communities, we can build things for sure. Let's bring it back to the heart. And like, that's really the place that we need to be coming from in this. Like, like I said before, hearts and minds, that was a, slogan that the US military, I believe, used in Vietnam. And it was kind of cynical of like, you know, yeah, let's like get our, their hearts and minds behind the idea of overturning their, you know, their, their preferred government in favor of a puppet government of ours. But like, I mean, hearts and minds is what it's about in terms of actual success. The only way that the left wins is with massive numbers. Yep, true. I mean, did that was yeah. that. I don't know. I don't know what else there is to say. Um, we we are approaching kind of like the time where we usually uh, call it quits here on Bird Brains. Um, we are gonna stick around, everybody. The uh, the stream is not over today. Uh, I've got some stuff to go over in terms of debates that I've missed that are like sort of leading up to this whole um, thing. We're watching the A4 Andre uh, debate with Destiny, and uh, also apparently there's a new ContraPoints video, and I'm obliged to cover that when they, when they come out. I got to get it while it's hot. So um, we're stick around for that. Uh, you have some React um, and some debate analysis. But um, I'm a little scared. Is, the... uh, is is it is is it an is it another video that's blowing up Twitter instantly? Am I gonna go back to Twitter and find out that it's like that one GIF from Community where he, where he like walks in and everything's on fire and they're like swinging the flaming coat around and the and he's got the pizza in his hand? You know that fucking GIF? Is that gonna be Wait. me when I go back to Twitter? Wait, sorry, I I missed. Uh... Oh no! I said, is my experience going back to Twitter going to be that gift from uh, from um, Community, where I think it's Don Glover like walks back in the in the building and like the like he go comes in with the pizza and he's like smiling at first, and then he's just like, oh shit, and the whole house is on fire oh, and all. That I know, shit. I know that one. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like thinking, is that going to be my experience on Twitter when I go back? Is are people mad at the new contravid already or? 
Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Like, I I just heard that it was going down and somebody else was covering it. So, yeah, um, it, 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 you're probably, probably that's usually the reaction to Contra vids is like, you know, pretty like extreme, uh, extreme like agreement, ex extreme, extreme uh, disagreement. You know, that's that's generally what you see. Not a, not a lot of nuance, but maybe I'll try to, you know, add, add what I can to that. Um, let's go around uh, the circle and just everybody give yourself a little commercial and, um, you know, tell us about what you got coming up. Um, let's see, uh, Mavasai is talking to chat. So I'll say uh, Senpai Chow. Hey everyone, I'm Senpai Chow. Hope you enjoyed the show. I stream Maple Story and politics. Like to talk about the philosophy, the science, as well as the theory behind all of the politics. That's my background. That's what I studied in undergrad. On Tuesdays, I'm doing something called Theory Tuesdays, in which I read theory for you guys. I give some commentary. On Thursday, I do something similar, but for political science journal articles, I do all the reading and I do all the analysis so you don't have to. So we could all learn and grow our collective brains and starting this uh, this team brains. So anybody who wants to join, uh, the captain's Dario. I, I made him de facto. <laughs> uh, thanks for having me on Burn Brains. It was a pleasure. I, I, I would like to further have this conversation about like, uh platforming because um irene you were talking in the very beginning about like okay you have this line and uh it was for a particular group of people i understand that i i still don't see that i don't think it's consistent with what kenny was doing and uh, i don't know um, it just made you know, me feel uncomfortable you're, you're right you're, if you if you're if your commentary is that we we tend to cut our friends uh more slack than uh maybe we do uh people that we don't know and that like we've all got to do some self-reflection of like you know how appropriate that is you are i'm gonna maul correct. after this uh, but yeah what i was saying is that when it comes to like marginalized groups of people like you know um for all of us like you know a bad time is possible you know if we're talking about any of these like scenario nightmare scenarios of civil war and stuff like we could all be having a really bad time oh yeah people that are having oh, a yes, really bad Black time now real. and by bad time i mean getting fucking murdered in the streets as mabasai uh brought up earlier are, are marginalized people so when it comes to people giving rhetoric that is potentially contributing to the furtherance of the the violence the real uh not uh theoretical violence that's going on to those groups i do draw a really hard line um there were some things that kenny said that that definitely like you know push the line i'm definitely not trying to do tos here and we'll have to review the vod maybe a little bit to make sure that like i don't think we actually veered into that territory but it was a little cl that's closer to the like i was more like uh icarus uh than than usual uh today and, and i that's not a position that i like to be in and in, in a moral sense like you're bringing up um senpai and and i appreciate your and i know that you're coming from a moral perspective with this in terms of you know potentially contributing to harm even if it's not directed against you know uh, marginalized groups even if it's just you know directed towards um taking the tactics of us as the left in a direction that's guaranteed to be unsuccessful for us like kind of you know that's how i uh, interpret um you know Kenny's uh, a lot of Kenny's arguments today is just like that's 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 suicide right there. That's a fucking I, I shouldn't use that metaphor. Uh, suicide's a real thing, people. I'm not trying to make light of that. That is a kicksotic, uh, a kicksotic uh, quest at best, and and like not anything that I want uh, to be a part of. Uh, but yeah, no, thank you for uh, you know providing that moral grounding and uh, and you know being uh, not afraid to speak up to the streamer because you know like i i am something somebody who's responsible or responsive yeah i agree to, uh maybe agree. More, maybe more responsive than yep, i am responsible sure. uh to that and and like I, I feel you i feel you on that i didn't expect to be screaming at somebody and but that was just way out of left field it I seems thought, like it's been it's been dealt with so I thanks for having me a really calm stream honestly like i thought yeah. i was like like there were people that were trying to be like, yo, you got to bring yep. so and so on. Oh my God, so and so in Carpe Pax, that'd be a dynamic, you know, explosive. Yikers. And I was like, yeah, you know what? Like this is uh, this the stakes are pretty high here. And, I love how I many Pepe laughs we have be, in chat I didn't right now. Bring in I'm just anybody I'm that just is gonna have uh, like you know Moam. Oh yeah, we didn't talk about uh, what. <laughs> about uh what's to uh, yeah or, or beetlejuice uh as the case may be today um but yeah i didn't want to have uh, i didn't want to be risk contributing towards that so that that was what i kind of resisted was the you know the the oh um, no they broke 
the, the temptation to load the dice from the very beginning and start off with like a really spicy stream, which apparently people really like. I mean, the numbers were great, but you know, like in terms of uh, in terms of some of the stuff that's been going on, it's it's not anything that like got, you know I feel uh, comfortable with. So um, so, but yeah, th thank you for uh, for the feedback and the concern on that is real and um, it is definitely on my radar. Um, do you have anything else in terms of uh, you know your upcoming? Uh, stuff or is that is that it for your commercial oh uh, no that's it just tackling the issue on politics without much of the drama and the politicking though i'll still be doing debates and panels and yelling at people on as well as coming at it from an academic sense so that it's not just everybody's learning that includes me because yeah, this is this is graduate school prep to be uh, honest nice. <laughs> Oh, you're, you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it, uh, Senpai Chow. No, yeah, I don't. <laughs> no, no, no. You're not already no. Senpai Please Chow. follow. Yeah, definitely follow. Give uh, Senpai Chow a follow, and hopefully we can get some uh, shout outs in chat too. Demon Mama. Uh, yeah, my name's Demon Mama again. I always come with a fistful of spice. You know this. Nice. Um, yeah. You can follow me over at Demon Mama Live. Your Demon Mama on Twitter. Um, lots of stuff to talk about. I will be probably molding a little bit after this stream so if you want to come join my chat uh you can do that you can hear my reaction and some of my thoughts on recent twitter drama before i head out for the night it's probably going to be like an hour of me screaming and stuff so there's that if you want to come by come join my chat otherwise it was wonderful being here um and it was great talking with everyone um you can expect this type of content from me i i engage pretty strongly and and pretty fiercely well, thank you so much, Demon Mama. Uh, everybody, Demon Mama, nice to have you. Uh, yeah, again, thank you so much. Uh, Mama Sai. Yep. I, I'm Mama Sai. I, um, God damn it. That's some good ass weed. I'm, I'm completely, I'm fucked. <laughs> all right, dude. Well, Twitch.tv slash Mama Say, we're going to be going over the fucking the Prime Kai's all black panel. I don't know if, if tonight, if not tomorrow night, but follow and notifications so you, so you know when that happens. Don't worry, I'll I'll put it in the notification email thing, okay? It'll good, it'll be great. Good stuff. Found, good stuff. Yeah, no, these are oh. these are all streamers that I really like. Spicy chat, uh, you know, loves you. It was good to have you here today. Um, I, I felt like we did uh good stuff in spite of uh you know some some real yikes uh early I, on. I I I I have fun, okay? This is the, the you know that what I do. This is what I'm here for, okay? I I got I gotta speak up, you know, on the interest and in, and. In, in, and you know, and inject some of that that you know, some of that some of the spice. Some of that we gotta we gotta get in there. Gotta re remember about some of these groups that we're talking about, right? When we're had talking about very theoretical shit about who who thinks this, who thinks that, what is yeah. society? You know? Yeah, it was great right, talking anyway. with you, Mabase, by the way. Just wanted to let you know before I headed out. All right, thanks. So much love in this room. All right, I love Bye. you, everybody. Um, and we're gonna keep streaming here. We're gonna do some. Uh, we're gonna do some debate analysis, and we're gonna do some contra points. So, yeah, good to have everybody here again. I'm gonna yeet uh, my window. Actually, first, what do I do first? Hey. I guess I have to. I guess I have to exit out of this. So uh, it's gonna look like I go bye bye, but uh, it's okay. I promise. All right. All right. That was a really interesting conversation, wasn't it? I'm going to rename the stream real quick. We are molding together. Mother, what the motherfucking shit was that shit? I was not, I was literally not expecting that to go. That was hands down the most like zero to 60 wild ride i've ever been on like i thought that that one dylan burns podcast was the spiciest podcast i've ever been on no this one was by far the most wildest shit i've ever sat on like this was a crazy panel what like wow okay so let's just talk about like okay that guy, that KFC guy, my God. Oh, oh, I'm doing pretty good right now. Um, like I, I'm actually feeling pretty hype. Like, holy shit. Yeah, that, that, that leftist 
a so-called guy who came out the gate with like this exterminationist uh nonsense like i'm pretty sure that he just destroyed that vod not for me i don't got to worry about it it's not my content i can i can, i was pushing back on it but i mean irene might actually have to worry about that and that guy yeah that was some of the worst takes i've ever heard like not only was it embarrassingly larpy he couldn't back up any of his arguments and all he did was try to smugly condescend the entire time holy shit i would love to i would love to have another conversation with that guy i would grill him all day what a condescending fucking asshole like literally oh yeah Malar yeah he's he windleby the smuckling was beyond belief it was Sargon tear smuggling. Unironically, he was like, <laughs> oh, 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 and literally he had no argument. It was completely dumb. One of the dumbest things I've ever heard. And, and the stupid thing is, is that he tried to make this argument like, well, yeah, the status quo, um, the status quo is a, uh, you know, is, is, is violent. Apparently they are on Twitch. They're like Kentucky fried leftist or something or Kentucky fried comrade or something. Um, bland, but spicy tone police. No, that is not tone policing. That is argument police. Uh, sorry, but I'm gonna fucking call somebody out when they make a dumb shit argument and they make themselves look like a fucking idiot in public while also trying to advocate for like, oh, leftism needs to do better. Oh, well, that's... I shouldn't say that. That doesn't surprise me. Um, they... Uh, Kenny was an embarrassment, failed to make any meaningful arguments, only hurt, in my mind, only hurt uh, his own advocacy, uh, and also engaged in really embarrassing bad faith. And he also, um, he also couldn't, he couldn't even summarize my argument. Even when I gave him plenty of time and repeated it to him multiple times, all he could say was like, I guess you just think we should lay down and do nothing. No, I explicitly said that I don't think that, but I also explicitly said that just because I don't think you should do nothing doesn't mean I think you should do whatever the fuck you want without any consideration of strategy or anything like that. Um, holy shit. No, well, Marinara, don't worry, because if nobody else will, I fucking will. You know I fucking will. I bring the fire every single time, and I'm not gonna let some stupid dumb shit take just fly by just because they're another lefty. I don't give a shit. You know how many fucking people are gonna, you know, do you know how many people are, cons are like, gonna be angry at me unjustly in this future? My job, like, I, I, my job right now is being a streamer. I know people are gonna get mad at me. I'm prepared to, to debate with people. Yeah, I'm gonna fucking spit fire. Of course. If you're gonna come on a public platform and do the most embarrassing, weak LARP that I could possibly imagine while simultaneously talking down to multiple people who aren't cis white males, like, holy motherfucking shit. What an, ar what an arrogant, idiotic position to take. Not to mention his argument sucked and is wrong. No, no, fucking, it, fucking, it, it is, it is a public platform. It's, it's a public platform. It's not publicly owned, but it is a public platform. It's, it's in public. Anybody can walk in and look at it. Kinja Khan. I know you're, I know you're, 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 I know you're trying to like do the thing. Well, it's like technically it's privately owned, but all right. Yeah. Tell us what I really think. You want to know what I really think? You want to know what I really fucking think? I mean, okay, you're kind of right about that. I'll give you that. You're kind of right, yes. Technically, people can be banned off it and blah, blah, blah. But by and large, um, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll bring that up at the end. Thank you for the reminder under the thunder. Um, let me just actually get that open over here. And um, and uh, let me open it up and, and see. It's in uh, practice? No. It's in self-promo? No. Is it in self-promo? No. It's in casual yeah it's in casual okay cool um so yeah um let me tell you what i think i think that type of like irresponsible rhetoric is 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 genuinely genuinely irresponsible i think it's genuinely harmful i think if you're just gonna walk onto a platform now look um i'm open to hearing real like I, the the arguments of people who have um so-called you know like who have violent like explicitly violent ideologies i'm okay with engaging with that but if you're gonna make a statement like that outright you better be able to defend it you better be able to defend it from another lefty like come on what the fuck like no he looked like an idiot he just said something stupid and edgy that that isn't actually 
doesn't actually line up with any lefty values, doesn't actually line up with any uh, prescription for success. It's just, uh, it's edgy. I can say whatever I want, despite the fact that literally just minutes before we had consensus on the fact that a lot of the information is hard to determine, but then you're going to make it a declarative statement that, ah, uh, yeah, this was a good thing. Yeah, I don't even actually believe this. I'll just be able to take it. Oh, I'm going to be wiggly. That's not wiggly, my dude. Take this fucking shit seriously, because again, in his nice, comfortable DX racer chair in his stupid fucking studio, he can be nice and comfortable, but it's not him who's going to pay the price. It's not him who's going to get the blowback uh, for advocating this stupid bullshit, for advocating for that type of, 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 of violence. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I'm talking about Kentucky Fried Comrade, Kenny. Um, yeah. I have nothing, I have no respect. I had no respect for that argument. Maybe he does good stuff other times, but today he made a fool of himself. And he also was a giant asshole because which is just, you know, like butter, you know, butter on the toast. Yeah, he was, he left early. Uh, he apparently had to leave early, but I don't know. You know, if you, if you're expecting that you're going to get blown out all the time, it's always nice to leave yourself a, an out, you know? Nah, that's a little mean, but yeah, he was on the panel for the first hour. Um, oh, uh, I'm not going to repeat. I'm not going to repeat it here. You Okay. Well, I mean, I guess I can. Um, Kentucky Fried, um, uh, Kentucky Fried Comrade um, advocated for extremely violent solutions um, to political disagreement. Yeah, there's the, there's the clip. You can watch the clip right there. He wouldn't own a statement. Yeah, he's a coward, spineless, b walked it back a hundred times, condescended, tried to be like, you don't even have an argument. And I'm like, well, you've just, you've just spent the entire, this entire conversation walking back your extremely bold statement that you cannot actually justify at all. Yeah, it was embarrassing. Um, my favorite was when um, Marinara told me most Antifa aren't violent, and then the Dan then Danabo comes in and instantly disagrees. Well, Danabo is wrong. Like, I'm I'm sorry, he's just wrong on that. He can claim all he wants that that's the case, but that's simply not true. In fact, I would argue that it that for some time most an anti fascist like most groups that follow anti-fascist beliefs, um, are, are like, they just make pamphlets. They just make pamphlets and do mutual aid. That's like 99% of, of Antifa, of, of anti-fascism in the modern day. Um, uh, not really. I mean, you, you missed us do some nice talking. Like we had a nice conversation, but it wasn't super spicy or anything like that. Yeah. He made a pretty bad argument and I disagree with it very strongly. Um, but yeah, you're, you're just, um, you're just wrong if you think that, um, like, but you're, you're just, you're just wrong if you think that anti-fascism is like predominantly violent. You're just objectively incorrect. I'm sorry. Um, that's, that's your own bias speaking. There are hundreds and hundreds of, 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 uh, I mean, Jesus Christ. Do you know how many, do you know how many like, um, like, like Jewish groups are, are anti-fascist groups at their heart? Like, um, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yep. Windleby. It was wild. And you will see, oh, if you want spice, you got to go watch that VOD and watch me grill the shit out of him because I would not let him off on that. You will be impressed. I did pretty goddamn good. I mean, yeah, it could be, it could be maybe. I mean, I don't like to speculate on that without evidence, but it's always possible. Um, that sort of thing is always fucking possible. But again, I don't have any evidence of that. Um, I'd argue very strongly for anti-fascists to carry guns for self-defense and self-defense only. I mean, whatever. Like, the thing is, is like, listen, there are many different types of anti-fascists. Many, many people oppose fascism and they do it in all kinds of different ways. Some of them have ideologies that, that include violence. Others incl have ideologies that don't. And it's just, it's ahistorical and incorrect to try and characterize an entire, um, an entire group, um, you know, as violent when that's simply not the case. Um, no, I don't necessarily either. I believe in, uh, I believe that lefties should be able to self-arm. Um, absolutely. I believe that lefties have a right to, uh, to a gun ownership. Now, as whether I would give advice to an individual to own a gun is totally dependent on your situation. I think there are people who are lefties, um, who perhaps could in some ways benefit from having a gun in their house and who in other ways would not. There are a lot of people who might be at risk for self-harm or suicide. And I don't believe that you should own a gun if you're at high risk for self-harm and suicide. You really shouldn't. And that's okay. 
that is okay. Not everyone needs to be, not everyone needs to be armed. But if it's something that would, that you feel is good, that you feel you can re responsibly do, I do think it's a good thing. I do think it's a good thing because it's a, it is a deterrent in our current society. That's my belief. Um, I, again, I'm, I'm one of those, uh, I'm one of those leftists that's pro second amendment, you know? Um, I think people should, should be able to. Um, even if you think he isn't, well, uh, Kinja Khan, if you go back and watch the VOD, I think you will see that the, the treatment that I gave him was quite firm. I don't think anybody will walk, will be walking out of that panel thinking that many other people agreed with him. Yeah. That's true. You did. But I don't, but I also disagree with your characterization. I just think he's an embarrassing LARPer. That's what I think. Now, mind you, just for the record, Patriot Prayer is an abhorrent, a fucking abhorrent organization. It's it's horrible. Like, and as far as I know, they've been um, linked to actual killings. The group itself has. Now, that doesn't mean that every single person in that group deserves to be harmed or anything, but it does mean that the group should be d directly dismantled. It should be opposed. We should start break trying to get people out of there. We should have uh, people trying to de-radicalize them if possible. And if they are violent, then you have to make, you have to take action against that. Um, I mean, Kobe Bobby, I would, I would believe that. I have never engaged with this guy before, before today, but given by his rhetoric today, it would make it would make complete sense that he would be a, a sympathizer to t tanky types. Maga Weeb, you seem obsessed with Maoists. Also, I'm a very angry person. I have a very serious angry face most of the time. No, 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 snowdrift mood. Don't do this to me. Uh, you're trolling me. You're trolling me. No, um, I'm not in Portland, Joseph Scott Stevens, but yes, Patriot Prayer is far right. They are objectively far right. They, they are. Um, yeah, that's true. I won't disagree with that, Boycott Israel. I won't disagree with that part. I mean, I mean, I, okay. First of all, I have like six different things to address with you on that, Maga Weeb. One, I am a liter literally, I'm a hyper empath. It's, it's literally like I s severely struggle to not empathize with people. I am quite literally a hyper empath. Um, secondly, I don't know what your weird obsession with saying like Ellen and LGBTQ people are fake nice or something. There are just lots of people who aren't super empathetic. It has nothing to do with Ellen or myself or gay people. I am quite literally, no, I am not a Maoist, um, Kobe Bobi. Um, I, I am, I consider myself, uh, generally I describe myself as a leftist, um, but, uh, my sympathies lean much more on the anarchist side of things. Um, you know, I wouldn't like, I don't really try to LARP as any like specific ideology. I just, you know, um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really, uh, I, I am not a Maoist for sure. And I'm, I'm, I wouldn't consider myself a Marxist Leninist either. Um, of course I, I tend to lead towards more towards the anarchy side of things, but again, uh, I just mostly consider myself a leftist. And I, I think that there are arguments for many different tactics. Um, where I draw the line is, um, LARPing, like, like unbelievable sociopathic, violent LARPing, um, advocating for things like gulags and mass imprisonment, stuff like that. I really, really oppose that sort of thing. Oh no, absolutely not. Um, bland, but spicy. No way. A no way. When somebody brings out a topic like that, I am absolutely going to respond very strongly. Uh, Exilix. I really like Cyber Witch Lexi. Cyber Witch Lexi is awesome. Um, yeah. Um, wait, you did invite me to my birthday? Wait. Huh? Um, I mean, wait, you think my response was weak? No, I, I strong, I strongly disagree with you. I think my response is perfect. Yeah, I don't think, I, I, I am very proud of my, of my response to him today. Yeah, of course. I agree with you, Kobe Bobi. If you let people spin off stupid bullshit and you don't challenge it, then they get away and they, they get to do their little dishonest bullshit. Oh, and Ellen Clipper. Oh, okay, okay. I get it. I get it. 
Yeah, I did see that. It's really cool. I'm really happy to see that Lexi's back into streaming. Um, streaming is really high pressure. I know why people take breaks, stuff like that. Um, let me see. What's this? Let me see what this clip is. Happy belated. Uh oh. Uh oh. I, I don't know. Do I want to watch this? Is this cringe? No, look. Uh, later. We'll do the. We'll do the Ellen shit later. Okay. All right. Later. All right. Maga Weeb Destroyer, I understand why you might get banned in other chats. I really hope you won't violate any of my community rules. You're fine to be here. Focus! Whew. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, let's see. Okay, what is this? People are sending me so much stuff. Oh, I, I love that. I saw that stupid thing that the... You've been gnomed! I saw that. That was actually funny. That did make me laugh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. I have a lot of notifications. Why do I have so many no- Oh, uh oh. Aw. Oh, somebody put me in a- Somebody tagged me in a big old post. Uh, uh oh. Hey, thank you, Snowdrift. You tagged me. Thank you. Yay. Um, so that was the, I was scared. I thought there was going to be more controversy over my stuff. Oh, damn. I don't know who that is. I don't even know who that is. Damn. Thank you, Snowdrift. That's so kind of you. You're, you're really awesome. And I, I fucking, oh yeah. I listened to your album or your, um, your demo track. It was so good. I could, I was like, I was like listening to it last night. I listened to the fucking entire thing from beginning to end, which I never do with music. I never like listen to like a whole album album from beginning to end. And I listened to that beginning to end. Good fucking shit, Snowdrift. Good fucking shit. He's a right libertarian who comes on the prime panel. Disabled vet. Hmm. Well, hey, maybe. I mean, I do believe that many vets can be pulled um, to the left because a lot of times they sort of get, uh, they sort of fall into by default this sort of like patriotic right winger thing. And actually there can be quite a lot of, um, quite a lot of left wing arguments that appeal to them very, very well. Um, yeah. So I, I think maybe that's a good goal. Um, I've talked to some vets in the past and made appeals. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to hear the whole thing, Snowdrift. That's going to be amazing. Um, but yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. Yeah, what a mess. I mean, to be honest, the whole, the, the, the whole of the conversation was pretty interesting. I do find it funny. Is it, is it, like, what is it that, like, like, with, what is it? What is it with the Mayo 6 and and being really, really uncharitable and or outright dishonest with my takes? What is it with those Mayo 6ers? The only one who doesn't do that to me is the Synthede. Yeah, Synth. Let me ping her. Watch this. Watch this. Synth. Watch. Synth will come. Yes. The Mayo 6, they are the X mayo I don't know. No, I don't know. Like, I mean, to be fair, I get along with most of them quite well. But why the fuck are they so dis- Why are they so dishonest with my takes? What is it that I say that makes them so mad? The intellectual dark left. <laughs> I am the intellectual dark left. What is a Mayo 6? Oh, um, the, the Mayo 6 is, uh, the Mayo 6 is a mysterious group of, of six people on this website. It's kind of a meme. It has some weird root. I don't even barely remember. Um, yeah, it's like, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah. Wait, what the fuck are you talking about? Maga, Maga, what the fuck are you talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about at this point. What are you talking about? What are you doing? What? No, they're not. That's not true. You're 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 not correct about that. I don't agree with that characterization. I've had this conversation like 20 times and I don't agree. I've been through the argument like 100 times. I've been on like three panels talking about it. Nah. There are a lot of yes, there are a lot of MLs who are tankies. But not all MLs are tankies. You're just that's sorry. They just aren't. They just aren't. Sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah, Maga, Maga, you gotta, you gotta take it easy. You gotta take it easy. All right? It's all good. 
a tanky. A tanky is okay. A tanky is a, is like a slang term for somebody who um like okay. <sighs> I think the original term tanky refers to something that happened in Europe, but a lot of people also use Tiananmen Square, you know, the protester, you know, standing, you know, standing in front of the tanks. And, you know, a tanky is somebody who would support the tanks running over the protester. That's a tanky. A tanky is somebody who justifies a like, a, like justifies violence on behalf of a supposed communist state. I am not a tanky. I oppose tankies. I think most tankies are cringe and embarrassing and don't actually think out their opinions and are just looking for a way to be edgy. Um, yeah, Stalinists are tankies by and large. Yep. Um, I don't even know. I don't even... Now, that might be one. Now, I don't know if it's possible to be a Stalinist and not be a tanky. No, Kenja Khan, but you tried. You tried. No. Um, I don't... I'm not a tanky at all. A libertarian, an ML, and an ANCAP walk into a bar. Oof. Ouch. Oof. Mm -mm. Um, yeah, yeah. They're more... Yeah, tankies like to... I mean, in general, uh, tankies... Um, tankies do tend to stand historical figures quite a lot. It is true. As far as I know, Ace Man has said that he's a landlord. You did say leftist. Wait, wait. Well, I mean... Oh, I would. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I I literally just misread what you said. Um, listen, Kenji Khan, tankies, in my opinion, are not. They like they don't fit my definition for a leftist. Sorry, I I I don't I don't think tankies are leftists. Hot take. If you're a tanky and um and you just think that like uh, it's okay to justify violence like without question. Sorry, I just don't think you're a leftist. I, I just don't agree. I, I really don't. But maybe, I mean, maybe you could make the argument that to some people they would be, they would fit that. But yeah, I do believe that tankies are right wing. I just think that they're, they've painted their right wing ideology with the trappings of, of leftism. But they, but none of their beliefs, like none of tankies beliefs really line up with leftism in my mind. Um, they go against leftist principles. Yep. They also don't tend to, um, they also don't tend to, um, like actually have leftist outcomes either. Um, no leftism is not just, okay. Now listen, there are a lot of ways that you can define leftism because leftism is a massive wing of politics, but by and large, the way that I, the working definition I work with, with leftism is somebody who a leftist in my mind, like for pragmatic purposes, a leftist is someone who has a critique of capital, you know, like a, a cogent critique of capital, not just, uh, you know, capitalists can be bad sometimes, but has a critique of capital, has a critique of capitalism, and also recognizes intersectional access, axes of oppression. That is what I, like, that is what I believe is a good definition, like a working definition of leftist. Somebody who is able to recognize that, um, it is unjust that we discriminate on all kinds of people based on intrinsic values that they have no control over. And also someone who recognizes that our current economic system is grossly individualistic and leads to wealth hoarding that explicitly comes at the cost of other people. That's what I consider a leftist. So... For the horde, Loktar Ogar. I can do a pretty good orc impression if I want to. For the horde, what need doing? That sort of thing. See, yeah. Dabu. Yeah, I fucking, I fucking love orcs. By the way, I used to play an orc in, uh, in WoW. That orc sounds like a plebeian. Yeah, true. I mean, he was, he's literally a peon. No, the war chief voice. I could, I could probably get a, I, I like, look, I like the peons. All right. Work, work. Yeah. What need doing? Stop poking me. Yeah, I can do. I can do the orc voices if I want to. But yeah, no, I can do a war chief voice if you need me to. But it only comes out when I'm really angry. When I actually get the, the bloodlust. Ah. Yep. Wizard, who is the definition of a tanky, was butthurt. I wouldn't donate a lib tax to him, so I donated to Aiden, who he raided into. But I don't know. This sounds like weird personal drama. I am full of many surprises. Look, I could be an orc. If only I had tusks. Ah, the Zerg! 
The Zerg was my faction. They are my... They are like the, the faction that's bound to my soul. Wait, wait, wait. But, but Ace Man, just so you know, a tanky... A, a, like, wanting... Like, claiming a violent... Res like, believing in a violent revolution is not necessarily... Like, doesn't necessarily determine you as a tanky. Um... Yeah, um, yeah, that does, that, that, like, you could, there are some tankies who are like that, but that's not necessarily, um, <laughs> I like that, Kobe Bobby, I like that, tankies do not see themselves as exploited proletariat, but as temporarily, temporarily embarrassed Stalins, you could also say temporarily embarrassed dictators, that would be another good one, um, yeah, that would be another good one, uh, true, true, um, yeah, I think so. I, I think so, Maga Weeb Destroyer. I think that's possible. I think it's possible to reconcile those two beliefs. Um, what? Maga Weeb Destroyer, you're just trolling. Come on, you did not think that. You did not think that. You did not think that. There's no way, my dude. There's no way you thought that anarchist means that you want to vote your way in. You're just trolling. So who on Twitch is a tanky or is it considered a slur? I mean, I don't know. I don't spend a whole lot of time like labeling people tankies. Um, like, uh, I don't know. I don't even know who's, I don't even know if there's many tankies on Twitch. I'll be honest. There's not many tankies on Twitch. Um, like, in fact, like weirdly enough, like, s like, uh, like anarchists have a, a higher propen, like uh, there's more of us in left Twitch than there are um, MLs right now. Um, there's not many yet. Yeah, okay. Like redacted from redacted Mike from PA Mike from PA. As far as I know, like he has a couple of jokes. I mean, he calls himself the central committee and he does have tank emotes, but I think that's more of like a tongue in cheek, cheek LARP. I don't think he actually advocates for like tanky positions. I, at least I've never heard him. I've never heard him advocate for those things. I genuinely have not. Um, think what you think what you want about him. I mean, a lot of people have mixed opinions about about Mike, but to be fair, like, I don't think that, um, I don't think he does that very frequently or at all. Uh, I mean, he might court like a more of a tanky audience, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's really hard. Um, yeah. How do anarchists plan to change the system? If not with the power of majority through democracy? Well, there's a lot of ways to do that, right? Um, one of the ways that many anarchists believe that you can change the system is by, is just by pat, by, by constantly resisting oppressive structures, by building dual power, by um, re by decreasing the reliance on oppressive structures, um, by building structures that fit the need in a better and more ethical way. Um, so, for example, um, like replacing, um, you know, re like like uh, creating alternatives to say, like I don't know, like corporate supermarts by instead organizing like a farm co-op or a a federation of farmers who all work together to provide food for their community there's a number of ways like i mean again you're ta you're asking a very broad question um but there's a number of ways you can do that um i personally am of the opinion that like um my 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 personal opinion is that voting can be a strategy that, that can lead to some reform, but it absolutely cannot be the primary one. Um, another, I mean, for me, one of my strongest beliefs is I believe in teaching people about the theories, in teaching people about better ways to organize our world, about um, about the, the ills of capitalism and the ills of our current status quo. I believe that education is amazing and that, that giving people the tools to start thinking about these things will actually put them on the path to no longer wanting to participate in those structures and as people no longer wish to participate in those structures and start passively resisting them in every part of their life that those structures will grind to a halt over time and i don't think that's the only answer but i think that it's part of it um i mean but but again wait 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 but you're 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 kind of firing all over the place here um there are violent there are violent people there are people who believe in violent answers but you know I don't, I don't advocate for those on this platform. I think that would be incredibly irresponsible to do, to do so. I think it would be very irresponsible for me to spend time on this platform advocating for violent solutions. Um, when I think that violent solutions should be the, uh, minority of the solutions and we need to actually be able to provide for people in the first place. Yeah, that is true, Marinara. That tends to be the case. Um... I do think that, yeah, that's another one. Um, expropriation of goods is something is like a 
a, I wouldn't say that's a violent tactic. I would say that it is a, a direct tactic um, that some people believe is is an is an, a way to approach, uh, like you know, like saying, "Hey, if you're hungry, we we won't we will look the, you know we will look the other way if you steal bread." Something like that. I think that's a position that some anarchists hold. Um, again, uh, I don't use my platform to advocate for violence. I don't. I simply don't think that I need to be a part of that. Hey, trash can thirteen twelve. Good to see you, my friend. Very good to see you today. Um, lot of lot of discussion about anarchy. Lot of discussions about um, violence and nonviolence today. It's been really wild. Yeah, I mean, some do. There are some who do. That would be false for me to say otherwise. There are some who do, but that's not everyone. And many, 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 many anarchists are devoted to peace. Very devoted, myself included. I am someone who uh, I wish, I tend to focus on um, on things like education, on things like, um, like, like mutual aid, like ways that you can actually help. I, I want to encourage us to take care of one another, to look out for one another, to build social structures that allow us to be there when one of, when one another need it. You know what I mean? That's the sort of action that I tend to focus on. Like, I mean, for example, like the, you can't, you can't build a society if you don't have functioning communities. So in my mind, we have to build our communities first. We have to reach out and connect with one another and be there for each other to say, hey, are you hurting? How do I have something that can stop you from hurting? Here's that thing. And someday maybe they will have something or somebody else unrelated will have something in that community that can help me from stop hurting. And if you start there, yes, but, but just because a commune failed um, doesn't mean that they're all failures. And it doesn't mean that the ideals aren't good. Keep in mind that um, communes in the United States are struggling against a system that, op that opposes them. And um, that doesn't mean that they don't have some successes. Keep in mind that many communes, um, keep in mind that many communes um, provided home, shelter, food for people for very long periods of time. Some are Maga Weave Destroyer, but many families are much more like um, dictatorial patriarchies. Um, many, many, many families are not communal at all. Um, and in fact, especially as we've moved on in time, um, uh, families become reliant on the breadwinner and therefore it's no longer a commune. The breadwinner controls everything and they can be extremely stratified, extremely hierarchical. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, trash can. As an anarchist, I don't want to fight. I want to love my friends and neighbors and be free from exploitation. Solidarity, comrade. 100% solidarity. Um, I, I, yeah, I believe what, like, I think there are, like, of course, I believe very much in a diversity of tactics. I think there are some people who make, um, who, like, I, again, I believe there are contexts in which, um, you have no choice but to defend yourself. And sometimes that does involve, like, violence. Like, I mean, for example, I believe that, uh, if you're being attacked by somebody, you have a right to defend yourself. And that is, by definition, violent. But that doesn't mean that I think that violence is the solution. It means I think that we should do what we can to stop those things from happening in the first place. Especially, and again, especially I'm going to use this platform. There is enough violence in the world. There's enough advocacy for violence out in the world. I don't use this platform to advocate for violence. I just, I don't. I'm sorry. Many different types of, uh, of direct action, but yeah. Anyway, again, I'm kind of talking to a lot of different people in chat, so... Um, but yeah, uh, I think some people get it in their mind. They're, they're, they see the world, um, they see the world through violent glasses and that's all that they see. And I don't think that that's a good way to look at the world. Oh no, Gina. Oh no. There's too many of them even to this day. Oh God. That's so cringe. That's so cringe. Um, that's so cringe. Jesus Christ. I, that makes me hurt. That makes my soul hurt. Um, but yeah, um, like again, when it comes to the matter of family, a lot of, um, a lot of like, like super, super nuclear family focused, um, conservatives will present the, the family, the, like the family structure as a communal structure when it really, um, is not. Um, now there are family structures that are communal. Absolutely. They, they can be for sure. Especially, um, when you talk about extended family, when you get into the position of an extended family, no longer is the structure, um, you know, the family is no longer necessarily centered on whoever has 
the money. There might be uncles, there might be aunts, there might be cousins who can help out and help one another and they can look out for one another. But a lot of families are not like that. Uh, my family, for example, was not like that at all. I never lived in a communal setting with my family. There was always inequality baked into our, into our, into my family and authoritarianism, um, sometimes to an extreme degree in my family. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. You you can't you can't. Oh, that's so, what a what a uh, what a waste. What a waste to reach anarchy but then to ultimately stand Russia today. Ah. Oh. My parents were not transactional at all. My mom needed to read read Ayn Rand. Well, that sounds like that would have made her more transactional. I think that would have been a bad thing. I think Ayn Rand is an absolutely dreadful writer um, and also an, a really bad philosopher. Uh, Ayn Rand is, in my opinion, like not worth most people's time, except I will say that it's useful to understand Ayn Rand if you're looking to sort of... Um, understand like the ideology of a lot of like the uh the the tea party republicans um you can you can do that yeah yep true windleby dazzler that's true um but yeah i don't think very highly of ayn rand although at one point i did consider myself an objectivist this was quite a long time ago um uh, many 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 years ago i considered myself an objectivist um and i actually critiqued my way out of objectivism i kept reading and reading and questioning it, and then i was just like wait a minute this shit is bullshit and i deconverted from objectivism so like that's like kind of funny but yeah um like there were, there were aspects of the, there were like libertarian aspects that appealed to me before I realized that they were kind of a sham. Um, objectivism is the ideology, uh, the, the school of philosophy that was created by, um, Ayn Rand and a couple of others. I don't remember their names anymore. Um, it's, uh, it is a, a philosophy that is based around, um, values about defining what you value and about pursuing what you value. That's a very friendly way of describing it. Um, it has a lot of holes in my mind. And most of the time when people say they're an objectivist, they just mean that they're, an, they're a, a laissez-faire libertarian ANCAP. Like, uh, like it is very much like objectivism and, and anarcho-capitalism are like one in the same. And um, if you actually dig into like Ayn Rand's books, they're really silly and fantastical. Like the idea of like John Galt being like a rich guy who goes and sets up a, uh, a, a paradise for other rich people and they all just go live there and live in an anarcho-capitalist paradise, quote unquote. It's just silly fantasy. And, and anyway, so I don't think very highly of objectivism or of Ayn Rand these days. Um, but I understand where the appeal is for some people. Yeah, does he? Yeah, I know. I wish. Does does Ayn Rand talk about selling your kids into slavery if they consent? Um, maybe. I don't remember. Maybe a lot of objectivists would make that argument. A lot of them would make that argument. Yeah, Ayn Rand got way more famous because, um, like in Bioshock One, Andrew Ryan, the main like villain of the um of the game series, was um was a was like they it's not it's not explicitly said this way but their name is andrew ryan ayn rand and they uh they use quotes from ayn rand in the game and they have a anarcho-capitalist objectivist worldview so it's a critique like bioshock one is a critique of like what the actual like results it's not the best critique ever but it is a critique yeah cambrian posadism based in dolphin pilled true um no, I disagree with you, Kinja Khan, uh, strongly. I think that there are many anar um, like anarchist positions that can be um, really, really, really um, valuable to think about. Now, do I think that we can like today establish an anarcho, you know, an anarcho communist society or something like that? Um, I, I like, uh, I no, I don't think, I think that's unrealistic. But I do think that contemplating these types of societal structures allows us to think beyond um what our current system is yeah like anarcho syndicalism is something that i find very interesting personally it's an ideology that i find you know like really interesting but again i don't tie myself to any specific um like identity politically i like like besides being a leftist like i just don't think it's that valuable um 
Yeah, uh, I don't know what you're talking about anymore, Kenji Khan. I don't know. You just seem to have a lot of, uh, you have a lot of, uh, you have a lot, you're very opinionated, which I can respect being opinionated for sure. Um, but yeah. Uh, Ayn Rand hated, it, no, 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 no. Ayn Rand hated slave, slavery, but didn't care about slavery. So that's not entirely true. Ayn Rand was totally fine with wage slavery. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I, yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree by and large. Tr uh, trash can 1312. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, but I think that um, in, in contemplating, um, digesting, and understanding different theoretical const constructs that the world could be set up in is incredibly valuable, especially in breaking yourself out of this sort of like the capitalist realism thing. Um, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Uh, weird, weird champ. I'm getting, I'm going to get, I'm going to get a feels weird man in chat. Yeah. We're getting some Munka S. You're going to get some Munka S vibes in chat right now. Things are getting really strange in the chat. Today has been a strange day. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, what are you talking? Ready? I don't know what you're asking me. You're a very fine person, but come on, let people decide whether blue or red. What? What are you talking about? We're not even talking about like political parties right now. One, one. Um, I do appreciate you saying I'm a fine person. I, I thank you. Do I want Pokemon blue or red? Neither. I want Pokemon Yellow. Yeah, give me the fucking Pikachu. Come on, let's do it. Honestly, um, I really liked Gold. I really liked Gold version. That was my favorite one. I liked it. I didn't have a classic Game Boy, so uh, or I didn't have. I did get a Game Boy Color, but I got it towards the end of the Game Boy Color's life. So when I got a Game Boy Color, the first game, the first Pokemon game I got was Gold. Um, even though I had played Red and Blue, I just never owned it um, until much later. Yeah, the Pikachu walked with you. You know what I also had? I also had the Hey You. What was it? Hey You Pikachu. The 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 little Pikachu Tamagotchi that had the little um, pedometer in it so you could, sh you know, shake it or you could go for a walk and you would generate food and energy for your Pikachu and then you could feed it and, I don't know, do all kinds of uh, kinds of those things. If you believe Anarcho X is feasible, feasible in any instance, please explain. I may not know what you mean by it. Wait, I mean, that's a big question. Uh, like, God, why, why do I, I get these in the... I, 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 post panel, okay, fine, listen. I do believe that if we advance, our, if we are able to build a more sustainable society, as uh, that if we are able to, um, for example, um, uh, reimagine the way that we build our economy, that we can build structures where there is much less, if if not completely, get rid of um, like economic and social hierarchy altogether. I do believe these things are absolutely possible. Um, and actually, I mean, there's some really good fiction that presents very convincing um, versions of, of these types of futures. Uh, for example, there is a... Um, there is a, uh, a, a pseudo-anarchist faction in the, um, in the Commonwealth uh, saga, the really, really good series of sci-fi books that goes really in-depth into the political ideologies of the different factions. One of the factions basically says, like, hey, we are a higher society. You can come join us. You give up. Like, when you join us, you go through this, like, there's, like, a whole process of, like, like, um, like, teaching people and, like, hey, this is how we run our society. It's very different from society outside, um, just because, you know, people on other planets may not want to live like us, but this is the way that we live. And they have, like, a very complicated social credit system. Um, no one is, there is no single leader. Uh, there is, uh, you know, government that's done by people essentially logging in to a giant, um, like, like faster than light co communal, co um, 
conversational political uh, forum and they can discuss things and come to consensus about these ideas. These sorts of things are absolutely imaginable and they are absolutely, they are imaginable even before having that level of technology. I think that we can build anarchistic structures long before then structures that don't put a single leader on top that don't put um le like other humans above one another that give equal power to all people so that you can't, you can't like um, enact domination on others. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let me do that before. Yes. Yes. You're right. You're right. Okay. That's a good idea. Let me just look at this real quick. I want to look at this link. Let's see. This is a museum. Okay. So here we go. Um, I'm going to share this tweet real quick. If everybody could take a look at this, this is something that one of our community members under the thunder um, is really passionate about. Um, there is a it looks like there is a museum. Uh, the District 6 Museum is a, a apartheid history museum that's currently struggling financially um, and could use some help. And there is a... Um, no, anybody can... You can I mean, my name is Demon Mama. You can call me Demon Mommy if you want. Like, you know, I mean, don't over... You know, don't overdo it, but it's fine. I'm totally comfortable with that. I deem myself Demon Mama for a reason, you know? Um... But yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, so this, I've posted this in chat. I'm just going to show it on the screen real quick. This is a, a museum that's attempting to raise some money right now. They're doing a fundraiser. Um, they're, uh, you know, they're doing a fundraiser right now um, to help preserve this history of apartheid in South Africa. Really important. So um, yeah, if anybody, if you have the funds to do so, it's a great way to support a, a good, a, a museum and museums are really important there's problems with the museum format but museums are nonetheless incredibly important and especially when they are preserving and maintaining um pieces of history that would otherwise disappear so just wanted to shout that out real quick before i forgot um yeah yeah so there we go um let me see here maga weeb destroyer anarchism are unstable structures that can survive uh, that can survive for fleeting moments before they're destroyed by stronger capitalist structures. Not true. Simply due to direction, war, action, or because people see the wealth from capitalism and want it. Why do people leave their communal tribes in Africa, New Guinea? I mean, they don't always, though. And also, that's a little bit, like, that's a little bit, like, I know you didn't mean it to be. It's a little, little tiny bit of a, a little racially insensitive there. Um, but I will say that, uh... Yeah, yeah, that's that's fair under the thunder. But but also, um, just so you know, there are all kinds of anarchistic structures that can survive much longer. Yes, I will say that in the presence of of world powers that are um, violent and exploitative, many anarchist um, many anarchist societies are crushed violently. That doesn't necessarily speak poorly of their internal stability. Um, just because you can be bowled over by essentially chance or extreme violence from another, uh, another source doesn't inherently mean your structure is bad. Of course, we should strive to build structures that can, um, stand in resistance, um, to like imperialism basically. Um, but yeah, um, but but yeah, uh, it, that doesn't mean that the, the structures themselves are illegitimate or that they're they're weak. It just means that it's pretty hard. It's it as it turns out, making an an empire a, a highly militarized and indoctrinated and violent empire is a pretty good way to be able to enforce your will on other people. Wait, that's not true though. Wait 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 wait. I didn't say that I had no evidence. You asked me for a hypothetical, so like don't. Uh, don't play that game with me. You asked me for hypotheticals, so I gave you some examples. There are anarchist structures that have existed for a long, for like long periods of time. Um, I mean, fuck, uh, literally, uh, like anarchist, anarchist Rojava or Rojava literally defeated ISIS, and it was only after like years of existing that they were then abandoned by their allies and bowled over by a different power. That doesn't mean that they were, a, that that was a failure. That just means that an un unbelievable power came in and cruelly destroyed them based on imperialistic. Like that's not, that's, that's, it, it's, it's funny. It's funny. If you define success as doing an imperialism, then, then anything, oh yeah, I guess nobody who's not an, imp an empire isn't a success. There's a little bit of a bias in your framing of the question there, isn't there? Yeah, if you, uh, damn, yeah. Uh, I'm not addressing that right now, Ready? Sorry, uh, 
like I I can't go in on that. That is not first of all, that's not my area of expertise. Secondly, I know there's a whole lot of fucking conspiracy theory mongering wrapped up in that conversation. I'm not engaging that right now. Sorry, not at this point. I gotta end stream soon. I'm not fucking going into that, no way. Nope. I will not. Sorry. A robust, a robust anarchist framework can withstand capitalist flare-ups, but most are stamped out because of how history shook out. I mean, but again, m most societies end. Most, all societies end. Like, no society has lasted forever. How you define a success is really important to the question of whether a society was successful or not. Oh, yeah, I'll probably raid into um, feminist critique. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That would probably be good. Um... Yeah, sorry. Another time, maybe. I don't know. Like, that, it's, it's kind of removed from me. Um, yeah. <sighs> yeah. So, well, today was really fucking interesting. I have to get going now. So, unfortunately, we have reached the end of the stream for today. Five and a half wonderful hours. Um... Uh, if anybody, before we go, if anybody would like to bit donate, s donate through Streamlabs to to uh, to contribute. If you'd like to throw me a sub, again, please don't ever, don't do so. Don't feel obligated to do so. I provide this entertainment free, but the money helps me live. So if you got it and you can share it, always appreciated. Likewise, also consider throwing a couple of bucks over to that uh, that donation link that uh, Under the Thunder provided for us. Um, uh, let's see. Capitalism is wildly unstable. Most capitalist countries collapse periodically. Very true. We have a cycle of boom and bust. It's literally re regularly talked about. It's very unstable. Um, tons of people die and those people are, are apparently erased in the name of calling it a success. Um, how does my co-op work or was it mutual aid? It's a mutual aid group. Um, I don't, I am not a part of the administration of that group. I just have participated and helped them with various things. Um, but it's organized really simple, really, they just use, they use like Google Sheets and a giant email uh, network, as well as a number of social media groups to coordinate and, uh, and, re and field requests and field questions. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, you had a hot question about self-defense. Boycott Israel, we can talk about that another time. Right now, we are going to raid out into... Let me see. Let me just see real quick. Yeah, boomer bust is something worth considering, seeing as how, like, even fucking capitalist e okay. economists regularly... Um, regularly go out and, uh, and, and talk about how boom and bust cycles happen all the time in capitalism. Those boom and bust cycles, mind you, that come at the cost of human lives. Is that really a success? Are you really weathering it if a lot of people die in those boomer busts? I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a complicated question, honestly. Let me see here. Uh, yeah, let's, let's raid in. Yeah, you know what? Let's raid into feminist critique. Let's do it. Bam. We are starting the raid. All of you. Thank you so much for being here today. Trash can, it was wonderful to have you come by. Um, thanks for coming by. Everyone who's been here today, I love you all so much. You've given me so much support, so much interesting conversation. We will see each other soon. Um, next week is going to be hella busy, so you can expect a whole bunch of fucking fiery-ass content from this demon mama. Until then, come hang out on my Twitter, come hang out on my Discord, and I will see you soon. Much love. Mwah.